Why, hello. Good morning. It is time for the stream. YouTube chat is less toxic, but ignores you more. <laughs> what do you mean less toxic, dude? You know we ban people on both sides every day, right? It's just faster to ban them on YouTube side. <laughs> you feeling better today? A little bit. A little bit. Getting there. Drinking cranberry juice, dude. I like seeing the animosity that basically just goes one way. Like Twitch chat is like YouTube chat's like, I hate you. Uh, we're so much better. And then Twitch chat is like, wait, you exist. <laughs> uh. There's a YouTube chat. Yeah. <laughs> It's very funny. It's very funny. What is YouTube chat? YouTube chat is to the right of you. And Twitch chat is on the left of YouTube. They're right there, just beyond the veil, dude. YouTube chat doesn't have go golden kappas, that's true. And if you actually type kappa on YouTube, it turns into a moon. Which is weird. It turns into like a strange tiny man moon face. You have to do it with a capital K though. You have to hit, you have to type in capital K like this, and then you hit space. And it turns into a moon face. You have to hit space after it, YouTube. I don't know why. So if you do, if you just do this, it's not the same as this. Isn't that weird? Welcome to YouTube. YouTube has Kappa as well, but it's it's like a weird moon face. I don't understand it. You yeah, know, it's really strange, actually. <laughs> it's like really strange. You have to hit space after the Kappa. Yeah, it's very weird, dude. It's called Full Moon Face. You starting soon? I mean, there is a large piece of text that says that I am. So I feel like... I feel like it's possible. Potentially. How soon is soon, though? I don't know. This is like the pre-show shit talk time, dude. This is where we exist in liminal space. Talking about nothing. You know? Trust you, but I have to verify. Good, good. Proud of you. Good. How soon is now? Now. Well, technically just then. And now even further beyond. to set up a YouTube short for the day. I think I know exactly the one I'm going to set up.
This is a good one. This is this is a good one. This is a good one. All right. The short is being queued for the day. YouTube members, you will get access to, access to it in just a moment. In just a moment, you will get this. It's grim. Oh, is it? Yes. It's called Double Meaning. It's very funny. Dude, the hype train is level 8 right now? Dear God. Mad lads, dude. When is your CEO meeting happening? It has to happen one year after the uh, formation of the company. So nothing currently. Although soon. Try to get YouTube stuff to stop having problems. It's so annoying. I have to go in manually and change it so that every single one of my videos only allows audio remixing. The manu you have to manually do it every time. Every time. Every single time, man. Changed a couple of these. Now I'll show you what I'm talking about because it's really annoying. <laughs> Look, it's me. I exist. I'm alive. I'm alive, chat. I do exist. You know. You know. You know. So, I reached out to my YouTube partner manager because this is like really stupid to deal with, frankly. Um, but basically, this is what we get. We get people that are re-uploading my videos, my shorts, with like shitty filters on them. As you can see here. You see this? They slow down the frame rate. They change the coloring. And if you notice, it like cuts in and out randomly. Yeah, it's ass. It's completely ass, right? They even put like an audio filter on it. If you come down onto this, you'll see that it doesn't really link to anything. There's like nothing on there. But what they're actually doing is they're doing what's called a remix of the content. In order to get them to stop being able to do this, you have to manually go to every one of your shorts, you have to go down here to the bottom, and you have to change it to allow audio remixing only. Why is this an option? Why is this defaulted on? And why can't I default this off for all uploads? 
Like, what the living shit? I have to do this manually for every video I ever upload. Why? It's annoying as hell. Otherwise, when I go to do a copyright claim on this, it fails. And they say, oh, no, you allowed for that. It's really annoying, dude. It's really, really annoying. There's no completely off option. You have allow video and audio remixing, which is defaulted, and there's no way to change the default. And there's allow audio re remixing, which you have to manually change every upload. It's really annoying. And what they're doing is these remixes are just doing that. Uploading a shittier quality video of the same video. Terrific, frankly. It's actually insane. So I talked to my partner manager and he's like, oh yeah, you just have to change it. And I was like, cool. Let me go change that for like 500 videos manually. Like what? Why would anyone want to do that shit? Why? Yeah, let's just regurgitate the same shit onto the internet, but worse quality, and that's totally fine. It's so annoying, dude. You can't even mass change it either. Like, the mass change options are age restriction, copyright description, made for kids, monetization, title, views, and visibility. You have to go into each video individually and change it. No, when I try to edit it all at once, it doesn't give me the option. Is it a YouTube API thing? Because through the interface, it doesn't let me do it. Where's the shorts remixing option? Like, when I go through this, there's no shorts remixing option. Buh? Yeah, because there's title, description, tags, visibility, monetization, ad settings, audience, automatic chapters, caption certificate, category, comments, embedding, license, recording state, sh now there's shorts remixing. There we go. It looks like it doesn't do this for normal videos. All right, here's something that's even more amazing. You ready for this? On each individual video, you only have the options for allow audio and video remixing or allow audio remixing. If you go through the mass change... You get don't allow remixing. That option is not available on the individual videos. What? And I just showed the interface. I understand the implications of this action. Update every video I own. No more remixing. None. None! <sighs> That's going to take 50 years, dude. Yeah, I just let my YouTube partner manage, and I was like, you can apparently fully disable remixing from a mass edit. You cannot do this on an individual basis or default it to be off. This feels very bad and makes no sense. You have to bulk update it. That's the only way to do it. Apparently. Makes no sense. Makes no sense, dude. I'm going to drink this cranberry juice. Gigantic cranberry juice. Yeah, no, remixing is, is awful. Remixing is an awful system. It's Ocean Spray, but it's that original Ocean Spray that doesn't have any added sugar. Yeah. It's 
a lot of green beer. Who is that? Vinny. Hey, how Why you got the feeds? Who gave you feeds? Who gave you feeds? Oh. Max made his ears what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. You okay. just want to go to Shay, don't you? Shay's your favorite human. Yeah. yeah he's mad at me because I Vinny just wants to be with Shay. Vinny imprinted on Shay. Does not give a shit about me. <laughs> oh, the bulk update. The infinite bulk update, dude. What a horrible system, though. Like, legitimately. I um, I hate remixing as an option. Basically, the way that this is happening is this. Like, you upload a video. If you upload a short on YouTube, it defaults to be remixed. In order for you to remove remixing, you cannot default this to off. It is always on. So in order to remove it, you have to manually turn this off. And then remixes are not really regulated well. So what ends up happening is somebody just re-uploads your same video using the remix system. And there's two things that I've seen. They'll take your video that's like this, and they put an expressionless image of themselves in the top left that just is like... And they call this a remix. And then YouTube won't delete it for copyright purposes because they're like, oh, they remixed it. And you go, no, dude. That doesn't add shit to that video. Or they take the entire video and they, they downscale it in some way where they're like, oh, we're going to deep fry the image. We're going to slow down the frame rate. Or we're going to make the audio shit. And they're like, oh, that's a remix. And then YouTube's like, we won't delete that. You allowed remixes. Let me default this shit off. Nobody wants a shitty version of their own video back up on the internet. That's not remixing. It's garbage. It's garbage. You're wasting server space. You're making these brands look bad. And you're giving extra work to creators. Turn this shit off. Let us default it off. Why? Why does that exist? God, it's dumb. Yeah, it should just be opt out. Let me opt out on that shit. They want engagement? That's not engagement. It's like a shitty version of engagement. Makes it look bad, dude. God, it's dumb. What about someone reacting? Reaction videos are completely different. And even then, gross, dude. Just link to the original creator's video. Reaction content sucks. Shit's dumb. Why do you think every time you guys send me something and I think it's cool, I just give you a million links. I'm like, go watch that video. Give them the views. Because that's how that should, that should work, frankly. Awkward. Very strange. Did you hear about the vulnerability in M1 and M2? Yeah, we talked about that. We actually talked about it in the, uh, the Apple chipsets. I think it was M3, actually, as well. It's really weird. I think it's quite interesting. I don't know how exploitable it is. I know the vulnerability exists, but like, how often are you going to see that in the wild? Democracy today? Yes. Later. We will. We will indeed. Oh. But no, it's really annoying. By the way, that bulk update is still happening. Oh, it looks like it's finally happened. Now I'm going to go into the videos. And I'm going to look at them. Right now I'm mad. <laughs> oh, now I'm mad. Now I'm mad. Now I'm mad. I'm mad. I'll show you after after the Bezos. Don't be angry this early in the morning. That's the best time to be angry. I love waking up mad, dude.
All right, now I'm mad at YouTube. <clears throat> yeah, I'm waking up and choosing violence here. This is stupid as shit. So if you go into your shorts editor on YouTube, you go to channel content, you choose shorts. You can actually choose shorts remixing and change it to don't allow remixing as an option. When you bulk edit this on YouTube and you go into your shorts again afterwards and you're like, oh yeah, no, I totally did this. I did my shorts remix to change it so that nobody can do my remixing for this. And then you go into any video that you've already done this for, anyone at all, it keeps it at allow video and audio remixing. It doesn't actually change any settings whatsoever. Because there is no don't allow remixing setting individually. It doesn't do it per page. It doesn't do it on any of your videos. It doesn't change the option. Because there is no third option. It does nothing. YouTube, I'm going to need you to figure it out. All right? I'm just going to... I'm just going to put this on the table. I'm going to tell you this is stupid as hell. I'm going to need you to figure it out. All right? Multi-billion dollar company. Figure it out. Figure it out. Jesus, dude. Now I'm going to have to change this to be only allow audio remixing for all of this shit. That's insane, dude. It's really annoying. Yeah, I honestly, I don't want this to exist at all. Re-upload? There's no option. You have to manually do it per video. Or mass update it to an option that apparently doesn't exist. And then mass update it again. Insane to me, dude. Completely insane to me. Yeah, every one of these videos is still set to the same thing. Yeah, you know what? Now we have to up mass update it to that way. Just dropped in. Just watch what happened. Just watching YouTube shit itself, basically. Terrible. Terrible to watch. Mike is speaky. Thanks, bud. I don't think it is. I think it's probably on your side, to be honest with you. If I'm yelling, this happens as well. It did it adjust to your latest video? No, you didn't do it to that one either. Even the latest video is set incorrectly. Blizzard's new EULA changes... Let's say it includes forced arbitration, stuff against the ability to do class actions, and the notion that users do not truly own purchases. This agreement contains a binding arbitration agreement and class action waiver in the section titled Dispute Resolution. This agreement affects your rights with respect to any dispute between you and Blizzard. I'm going to require you to resolve disputes in binding individual arbitration and not in court. Alright, so here's the big thing. How many of you are going to get mad at Blizzard over this? How many? So you're mad at Blizzard, right? Who owns Blizzard? So who's really changing this, this TOS? Who? It's not Blizzard. It's Microsoft. 100% Microsoft. If you're upset about that, don't get upset at Blizzard. Get upset at Microsoft. Yeah. If you were upset about that, at least make sure that your upset is targeted correctly, frankly. Yeah, it's not even enforceable in most jurisdictions. Correct. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't change Blizzard at all. Who do I follow? Shelly or Sheldon? That's up to you, bud. Totally different experiences. So, I think this is now changed, maybe? I'm going to go down to one of my videos, the management video.
changing it to allow only audio remixing actually worked. So every one of these videos is now correctly set to only allow audio remixing. But disabling remixing does nothing. Which is insane to me. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. All right, cool. Let's get some stuff done. It's time to work on stuff, chat. It's time to make things. And boy, do we have a lot of things to make. One moment. Hiding this. Unhiding this. Okay, we've got George's stuff. This looks good. Alrighty. I think I'm going to be removing a couple of the vendors today. We're probably going to be sealing up... Probably going to be sealing up the wood and stone vendors. I don't think we need those anymore. I think those are done. I think we can get rid of those, and I think we can move all that stuff over to the individual NPCs. And I think Forge can largely be deleted as well. Because we can take pristine wood, stone, and hide. Well, probably wood and stone and remove those. Move those over to the mining ones. So we'll probably only have hide, animated bone, and a couple of other things in there. Although likely we can move that to the hunter as well. Hmm... Rock and stone. Rock and stone. Because, like, amethyst block, lapis, shard, redstone, stone can all get moved. Pristine wood can get moved as well. So I think I'll probably manage that over to that other NPC. I think that'll work as well. Also, I am deeply sad. <laughs> I went, so I went, I went to the new house. The new house something, has something called central vacuum, where you basically set up a vacuum unit in the house and it hooks up to the house. And then after you do this, all of the walls in the house have like a, like a little access point and you hook up a tube to this and you can go and use it as a vacuum because like this is all connected, right? Which is freaking rad. It's actually amazing. So I ordered this thing and I was like, cool, we're going to set this up and I get it. And I'm going to show you this. It's so, so awful. I'm so sad about this. I open up the box, because we drive all the way there, and it's, it's like a while away, and I notice this, and I was like, that's weird. Why is it already full of dust? Why does it have scratches on the inside of this? And then I start really looking at this, and I'm like, why has this got a big gouge in it, and it's clearly already been like somebody has, has used this. Every part of this thing has been annihilated. There's like scratches and shit all over it. And I realize... They have repackaged a vacuum that somebody else has used and sold it as a new product. So I'm shipping that shit back now. Yeah. Yep. It's also missing a ton of pieces. So, like, it's missing all the mounting screws. It was missing, like, um, like some of the tubes had been replaced by shitty PVC pipe. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, this is getting returned. Thankfully, I got it through Amazon, so I can just return it. Like, it's not that big of a deal. But it's like, dude... Like, what are you doing? You know, I'm getting a refund. Absolutely. Is it even legal to sell used products as new? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, no, I, I gave them a one-star review and I said, no, here's all the pictures. Stop it. It's usually a customer repacking it. If the company is going to take a customer repacked thing and then sell it, it better not look like that. And it better have all the damn pieces, frankly. Yeah. 
Uncommon fish don't drop on death like other fish. Uh, Sammy, you're going to need to tell me exactly which fish you're talking about. Not just uncommon fish. Which fish? Specifically. Len, please put it in as a ticket. Or a block game ticket. Yeah. Pretty sure all the uncommons. Again. Ticket. I'm thinking getting increasingly more and more garbage. You really have to be careful who actually sells the items, even items under the official store. Yeah, it was an official store. That was the worst part about it, Crux, is I bought this from an official store on Amazon, and it still came through like this. And I'm like, what the hell, man? It's so weird. Insane to me, to be honest with you. Why y'all love my YouTube shorts? Well, once you engage with one of those posts, I exist in your timeline forever. That's right. Like a fungus, you can't get rid of me. Yeah, official store doesn't mean anything, apparently. I ran into it too. Yeah, it's super weird, dude. It's clearly like a like a refurbished object. The the inside material in it. Like they didn't even clean it out. <laughs> it's like there's like pieces of like tree material in here. I was like, what the hell, dude? I'm super weird. Shit was super weird. Blew me away, dude. I mean, it's not a cheap thing to get a central vacuum unit, so. It's insane to me. Got a vacuum from a druid. Nice, dude. Very nice. With a little bit of low effort, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. Let it begin. Typical underscore cyanide has obtained the cursed quest. Typical cyanide with the cursed quest. Are you ready? Are you ready? Typical cyanide. Oh. What are you working on? Well, first we do the cursed quest, which is how we choose our VAPs over on Twitch side. Is it bad that I got it yesterday? No. I think you got it both times, didn't you? You got it yesterday and another one. Uh, to be honest with you, I think, to be real, it's not a problem you got it twice in a row. I think the rest of the community is having what we call a skill issue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like that's... You get it two days in a row, that's... There's 4,000 people already in the, in the stream, bud. Like... <laughs> All right, do you want art, cooking, or interpretive dance? You have to choose. He was camping. It opens up between 5 and 10 seconds at random. After the stream starts. And then when you get it, it closes. You're going to choose cooking. Typical cyanide. It's cooking. All right, what's your favorite food? What is your favorite food, dude? Do you stream on both Twitch and YouTube simultaneously? Yes, I do. Two curse quests in a row, man. Unheard of. Heard about what happened in Baltimore? Nope. No idea. Although it doesn't sound good when you say it that way. I already submitted Thorgetti, so let's do something else. Ooh. Ooh. Bridge collapse? Damn. Civil architecture is a crazy ass thing, dude. Alright, so let's think about this. Let's think about this. Best type of Wi Fi for a 4,000 square foot house? Anything that allows for Wi Fi 6. You will not regret it. You will not. You want to see something insane while we're thinking about a food? I'm going to run this thing real quick. Yeah, Wi Fi 6 is it, dude. Wait for it. Wait for it. Thank you for the advice yesterday. Anytime, dude. By the way, we got through 260 TTS yesterday. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Still Windows 10? Yes. Yeah. 
Thanks for knowledge, yes. Dude, I read YouTube chat all day. It's funny because I, I think a lot of people don't realize that I do. And they make like wild accusations saying that, oh, he doesn't read YouTube chat or anything like that. I'm always reading YouTube chat. All right, so you may not realize this, but even while I'm streaming, I'm currently on Wi-Fi. My router is 40 feet away from me. It is through two walls and the water heater. I stream on Wi-Fi. <laughs> Wi-Fi 6 is awesome, dude. <laughs> Wi-Fi 6 is incredibly good. It's fiber to the house, and then Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Why Wi-Fi? Because there's no reason not to. It's Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6 is insane. It is insane. Paper walls? Nope. It is a bathroom. It goes through a shower. Then it goes through the water heater and another wall. Then it goes through router. And it goes through a ferret cage as well. There's a ferret cage here now that's solid metal. So. Yeah. Costs $65 a month. And that's it. Flat. Unlimited data. I actually transfer uh, probably about 2.1 probably 2.1 to 2.4 terabytes a month in data. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason that this happened is actually pretty funny. The reason this happened is funny. So near me, we have a gigantic Christian dormitory school, which I like to call Christian Hogwarts. From there, everywhere in my neighborhood was built in the 20s. So because of this, it's super old. and has a lot of old people living in it, right? Old neighborhood, old people. Really common here. So they were like, oh, shit, we put fiber into the Christian Hogwarts. So what do we do? Because nobody wants to get it because they're all old and they don't care. They don't care at all. So like, well, what do old people fear? They fear rates going up. So what if we created this system called Christ for Life? And then we gave them a contract where we could never raise the rates. Ever. They'll buy into that. That'd be great. So I got that rate. And it's $65 a month for one gig up, one gig down fiber the rest of my life <laughs> and the part that's insane about this is they're like oh yeah no we're totally gonna get this they're gonna use what like 60 megs a, a month right you know it's just and then i bust it i'm like oh yeah here i um i need to do two and a half terabytes a month is that cool yeah it's cool right <laughs> <laughs> yeah sounds like they made a mistake just a little bit just a little bit i've been operating this way here for like five years though yeah yeah. Yeah. You're hurting a little bit. It's not my fault. Not 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 my fault, dude. Like if they if they're gonna sign a contract, they're gonna sign a contract. It's, that's up to them. At the new house? No, this is the old house. New house, I've got fiber going in soon. In fact, I have a meeting I have a meeting today for company account shit, and then I have a meeting tomorrow with the ISP where I have to walk them around the property and be like, yo, this is where we're installing shit. All right, so, typical cyanide. I'm a little bit getting my money's worth, yeah. Typical cyanide wanted cooking. Let's think about this. Typical cyanide. Hmm. Hmm. I want a really interesting dish this time. I want an interesting dish this time, Jet. What are we gonna do for an interesting dish? Lasagna is pretty good. Ratatouille is difficult. Oh, you know what? Let's take the better version, all right? And everyone's like, oh, ratatouille, right? Because ratatouille is good. But you know what I find to be better than ratatouille? And it looks really similar? And you could hate me for this, I really don't care. But you know it's true. Potatoes are gratin, dude. Yep. It's the, it's the other thin, thin item food. Thin circular item. But it's cheese and potato. And I find it to be better. 
than Ratatouille. I find it to be better. That's right. It's true. It's true. Still laughing at Christian Hogwarts? I mean, that's what it is. It's ridiculous. They all wear outfits and everything, you know? It's a dormitory school. Send your kids off to learn about Jesus and magic and shit. That's what that is. It all makes sense. Scalloped potatoes? Yeah, it's the same. Potatoes are gratin. You're so Italian, that's fine. Alright, here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. Let me think about this. You need to make potatoes au gratin. And if you've never done this before, they're quite easy. I used to make this... I've made this a few times now in cast iron. It's really nice. Put it in the, put it in the oven. Cast iron, really nice. However, when you make the potatoes au gratin, there's a lot of different seasonings that you can use. Toppings. Different ways of doing things on top, right? And when you make this... Let me show you this. You are going to need... To use whatever topper ingredients you want, such as rosemary, anything like that, anything you want to add to this, and take those and place them in the form of my face. Potatoes of Thornton. That's right. Yes. Yes. Horrible, I know. Deeply, deeply horrible. Deeply horrible. Uh, where did this go? I think this thing crashed. Did it crash? I think it did. Hmm. Hmm. Weird. Very weird. Why are my potatoes looking at me like that? They shouldn't. They shouldn't. A little narcissistic, don't you think? Have you never seen a curse quest? Mr. Greg Rage. Have you never seen one? It's quite good. It's quite good. Are you doing more judging today? Judging what? Are they really good? What exactly is going on here? So, the way the curse quests work is every single day. One person gets one from the community. They have to make something deeply horrifying. First, they choose a category. They've chosen cooking. Typical cyanide did. Then, we come up with a quest. They finish it, and then after they finish it, they put it into the queue, and then we vote on it as a community. If it's cursed enough, then they get a diamond next to their name. That's how we choose our VIPs. We've been doing it forever. Forever. And there's so many of them. They're horrifying, actually. I have a whole folder of these. An entire folder of the most cursed things I've ever seen in my life. Like Thornos. With the Infinity Thors. Amazing, aren't they? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. They're great. They're very good. They're very good. There's so many of these, dude. Here you go. Here's a good one. It's pretty good. There's this one for the Australians. Enjoy that. Is there an archi archive of these? Sometimes. Some people archive them. Some people don't. Here's me as a third grade. It's fantastic. It's very good. This one just looks like pain. That's all that looks like. Looks like pain, doesn't it? Yeah. This one was Mr. Context, printing it out, and then wearing it as a mask. That's even more horrifying, I think. Like, the implications of this are deeply distressing to me. Here was me turned in as a school project, where you have to draw the other side of the image. I was graded. This is me being pinned up on the board. In a school. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I like that. Horrifying. Deeply horrifying. So anyway, Curse Quest is a long-standing and horrifying meme. We love it. We love the Curse Quest. Uh, can't touch see that? I know. That is hopefully the point. Alright, let's see. George is not working yet. We will get George to work now. 
Iraq ATK so. with 500 bits said Yar Cheer 500 Good Morning Goblin Lord, Good I was morning. wondering if you saw the GDC statements made by Josh Harrison about sunsetting live service games, maybe give no. some insider perspective. HTTPS colon slash slash www.videogameschronicle.com slash news slash devs dash closing dash live dash service dash game. Let me see this. Devs closing live service game should make, quote, make a private hosted version, Knockout City Dev says. That's not always appropriate. We know that's not always pro appropriate or feasible. Doing so keeps the game, quote, alive forever. That's not always going to work. It's just not. Make a private hosted version. As... As much as that is like a really interesting way to be like, oh yeah, definitely give the power back to the player. That's not always possible. It's not a possible thing to do all the time. Like a private hosted version is not feasible all of the time. That costs a lot of development time. It costs a lot of, like it's a lot of cost to the studio. And if a game is sunsetting, it's likely because it doesn't have enough interest to keep that to be profitable in the first place. Adding extra costs on top of it isn't going to be a good thing for the studio a lot of the times. Like it's just, that's just not feasible all of the time. I think it's a noble aspiration, but it's not a feasible one all of the time. So, like, the you know, like, I, I, I can agree with this on an emotional setup, but I don't think I can agree with this on a business standard, right? It just doesn't make sense monetarily all of the time. They should regulate it so that feasibility is at... at consider pre pre-development no what what do you mean they should regulate it you mean the government should step and be like if you're going to do a live service game you have to set up all these things if you don't set up all these things you're not allowed to do a live service game yeah let's get the government in the way of innovation some more that's a great idea yeah no that's a that's awful i'm not into that shit at all The moment you start adding regulations to that, you stop any indie from ever being able to make a live service game. Shit like Realm of the Mad God or, would not exist. Shit like Minecraft would not exist. What innovation is in sunsetting a game? There's no innovation there. We're talking about starting a live service game in the first place. If you have to, if you have to account for the one day sunsetting the game, before you're allowed to release a live service game, many live service games today would not exist. Sunsetting means you're no longer updating it. You're shutting down the game. What's a live service game? Stuff like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, Realm of the Mad God. Yeah, I don't think this is good at all. I don't think it's a good thing at all to have the government step in and regulate that. That's insane to me. We're in Bezos. Source code should be public if sunsetting? No, it shouldn't. No. Source code goes public. If you want something to be open source as a company, your direct ownership over that thing, you should choose if it goes open source or not. That is your creation to open source or not. There should be no government process that forces you to do so. There should be no regulation that forces you to do so. I don't want the government touching my shit. And you wouldn't either. No. No. They didn't say government? Who is going to enforce that? When you say, oh, it should be regulated, oh, it should be like this, the only way that happens is through law. That's called the government. Like, what, dude? Who do you think's gonna do that shit? Democracy enforces it. <laughs> Vote with your dollar is this not relevant to what we're talking about at all. Oh my god, dude. No, if you, if you want your game to be open source, you should be choosing if it goes open source. There should not be an automatic process that demands that of you. If you want your game to be, you know, sunset and disappear, you should be able to make it be sunset and disappear. 
And if another company wants to revive your game and you are not willing to sell, then you're not willing to sell the IP. That's how that goes, right? I would love to buy the IP, like the, the IP for Dawngate and revive that game. I would love to do that, but they're never going to sell it. And the reason that I know they're never going to sell it is people actually did like a Kickstarter to try and get that done. And they said no. So like, it's just not going to happen. Do I wish I could still play the game? Absolutely. But guess what? It's their creation. They own it. And there should be no government system in place to take that away from them. Regardless of what I want as a player. It's their creation. That's how that goes. You think that's a good thing? Yes, I do think ownership over the things that you created is a good thing. And I do not think that the government should step in and be able to touch any of that. So absolutely, I think that's a good thing. As a person who creates things, that shit's mine. And there's not a damn thing anyone can do about it. Not at all. Until that shit goes public domain, that shit is mine. Hands down. It does not matter what anyone else thinks. That is mine. And it should be exactly that way. Unless they remix it. God damn it, YouTube. 100% <laughs> agrees a photographer. Yeah, anybody who creates things is going to feel exactly that way. Because we don't get to exist unless we have ownership over the things that we create. That's how that goes. If we don't have ownership over the things we create, we don't get to keep creating things. So no. <laughs> Shit stays with us. Same with music, same with art, same with photography, same with any of that shit. That's how, that's how game studios get to exist. As an artist who doesn't want, who does want their stuff public, I agree with you. Yeah. You should own it until you want it to be public. And at the same time, there are restrictions on how long you can own it already. And let me tell you, the mouse has pushed those into the limit, you know, like as far as it can possibly go. Copyright does expire. Yes, it takes forever. Thank you, Disney. <laughs> copyright is a broken system. That's an easy thing to say, but no, it's not. Like, copyright protects me every day. Our studio wouldn't exist without proper copyright law in place. Our studio wouldn't exist without me being able to file things like DMCAs. I file 50 to 100 of those usually a week, frankly. And I have for years. The reason that I do that all the time is pe people take our content, make it shittier, and then put that out on the internet as if they were the ones who made it. A lot of the times people actually take uh, pixel art from Heartbound, blow it up into a gigantic image that looks like shit, and then put it on stuff and put it on Redbubble. Happens all the time. And that's just a really bad representation of our work. And they monetize that. So they're monetizing the shittiest version of our work, and people believe that we were the original creators of that. So like, no, dude. All of that sucks. Like a DMCA if I cosplay lore? No. What the hell? Yeah, it's not... Here's, here's something that you don't understand, too. If you, if you think copyright is in a bad place with all of this stuff, it's not. It doesn't just protect large corporations. It protects everyone who makes things. Me, you, all of us. Any one of us. That's how that goes. That's why you can do a copyright claim on somebody on YouTube. Whether you're a tiny little creator or a massive network, this is the point of this, is to stop other people from stealing your shit. Always. It allows you to exist as a creator without the endless ties, tides of zombies stealing all of your stuff. It lets you fight back against it. That's the point. I don't know, dude. There's, there's a growing, very strange, like, group of people on the internet that believe that all creation should be fully open source all of the time. And they don't understand that if you do that, there is no way for you to feasibly pay for your own studio to create things. It limits innovation in a way that it becomes impossible to create. If everything is open source, if everything is free to do, if there is no, no copyright whatsoever, if there's no ownership then no one gets to make anything. And if you can't understand that, you've probably never made anything on the internet for money before. Ever. You've never had something that you have to sell as an art form ever in your life. Because it is impossible 
to run a business that centers around content creation in any respect, game development, music, art, any of it, unless you have control over the things that you create. You have to, you have to be able to have control over that. Not impossible, but difficult? No, impossible. Do you know how I know that? Because a long time ago, I had a business where we went 50-50 on it. I made the programming. The other person made the 3D models. And we made a shitload of money. And then they decided they wanted to be 80-20. And I said no, because we were doing it 50-50. So they took all of our work and they open sourced it. Do you know what happened? I went homeless for a year. I had to live out of my car. So until you actually have experience living off of your own creations, you don't know shit about this. And you have absolutely no idea what you're talking about whatsoever. So no, forcing all creators to go open source is not a viable option for business at all whatsoever. And that narrative is idiotic, insanely so, and incredibly misguided. And it shows that those people have no experience in this business whatsoever. None. Troy Tech with 500 bits said do you mind if I share the link for the book? Go for There's it. tons of animated feisty Latina stuff like Baglets and others. I think you might need to adjust your pen testing style because you are getting famous. <laughs> you might be able to be a shiny distraction and distract people from the other members doing the deep penetration. Oh, so that's why you say pen. Have you mm. heard of the new automatic wok cooker? It spins like a dryer. Here is a quick demonstration https colon slash slash w Okay, I'm going to mute my browser, because I think this is going to be a no. One moment. That's not a gnome at all. Dude, what? Look at this. That's amazing. I'm linking this to you all. But look at this. Give them this view. It says commercial automatic walk. I am the manufacturer. That's actually amazing, dude. Like for restaurants? That's huge for restaurants. Like imagine how much more throughput you would have from your employees in situations where you're like doing walk-based cooking like that. Yeah, that's actually that's actually brilliant, frankly. It's really, really smart. Cool. I dig it, man. I really dig that. I don't think I've ever, it's like a, it's like a dryer, dude. <laughs> it's a wok cooking dryer. Oh. Now do the orange chicken. I love orange chicken. Oh, my God. oh, I love it. It's adapted from the smelting process. It kind of reminds me of something like that. Yeah. If I will I get DMCA if I make champions of breakfast rule 34, dude, if I find that I'm just what, what are you going to draw like a toaster with a dick like what? I don't even want to know. Don't even tell me about it. Coolbus with 500 bits <laughs> said, Hey Thor, I know you said you don't drink caffeine or sugar, but there's been some cool advancements in decaf coffee production. No. Would you ever try a well-made decaf? Nope. I hear there are some local roasters in your neck of the woods who make Blech. some great ones. Blech. I'm going to be real with you. I don't want to have coffee anyway, because I think the flavor is gross. Um, when I first tried coffee the first time, I was like, wow, this tastes nasty. And people were like, you'll get used to it. And I was like, Dude, if I have to get used to it, I probably shouldn't be having it, right? Like, if it tastes gross, and then they're like, oh, you'll get used to it. Why do I want to? Why would I want to do that? <laughs> like, why do I want to force myself to have this thing that tastes like shit until I enjoy it? But not really. Where it's like, oh, it's kind of gross, but you'll, you'll like it eventually. You'll get used to it. Like, no. <laughs> no, dude. Yeah, I don't want an acquired taste, you know? It's gross, dude. Game Overloads with 500 bits said, So I had my talk with students. One was into marketing and had made her own LLC already. Another was into the functional side of programming. And one was going into aeronautics. Dot odd mixture. But I talked with all of them and gave them as much advice as I could. And your information and advice helped. On a side awesome. note, I will be making potato pancakes with fried eggs tomorrow morning. Potato Figured pancakes. you'd like the idea. Potato pancakes. Oh, man. I love potato pancakes. I super approve of that. 
I super approve. Potato pancakes are king, dude. Okay, that one's out of there. I guess Hyde is the only one that's on this, dude. Um, We're slowly starting to get rid of Forge. We won't need him anymore. Interesting. Interesting. What are we going to do with Forge when we're done, dude? Because it's not going to be necessary. He just won't, he won't be necessary anymore, this uh, NPC. I don't really know what to do with it. Oh, the bit goal was raged. We'll have to do that in a little bit. Something the wise with 500 bits said I like trying new foods a lot, but I'm sad to report Vegemite tastes a little too funky for me, haha. -ha. Makes sense. How do I knock the flavor back down to just taste a little like salt so I can safely consume this strange jar of paste? So, if you, if you don't like the overwhelming flavor of, of Vegemite, you probably won't like it, you know, in mass. But... If you take a little bit of butter and you mix it with Vegemite, that's something that some people do. If you use like a cheddar, a sharp cheese of some kind, with that, they usually call that tiger toast. That also works as well. And if you don't like it, then you just don't like it, right? You know? I, I do think Vegemite is very much so a specific kind of flavor. It is. And it's, it's one that not a lot of people enjoy. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, Vegemite and Cheddar is really good. Yeah. I wouldn't use less, personally. I like more. Is it an acquired taste? No. If you don't like Vegemite, you probably were never going to like Vegemite, right? I love Vegemite. I love the shit out of it. Tiger Toast is pretty good, yeah. So, like, cilantro? Cilantro tastes like soap for me. Yeah, I have the gene, dude. Ever tried Marmite? Yeah, it's not as good. It's not as good. Vegemite is better. Is this? What is this? I'm right, fixing some things. All right, we've done it. Bovril sounds awful, dude. I actually really want to try Bovril. I really, really want to try Bovril, like a lot. Oh man. What day is it today? All right. Today is the healthcare meeting. Ooh. Healthcare meeting today. What is Vegemite and Marmite? So, this is basically how it goes. Vegemite is a black paste that is yeast extract. And Marmite, well, Marmite is garbage. So, that's, that's it. That's what it is. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Healthcare meeting. Yeah, so today I'm meeting with a uh, money manager lady. She's very cool, and she helps me run all of the stuff. And we're going to be meeting to start a, a monetary fund for the employees of the company, so the moderators and myself, that give us healthcare. So the moderators who are based in the United States, who are full-time employees, are going to be getting healthcare. Hey, so that's the idea. But I have to get it all set up today. It's a whole process. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Bovril is the meat version of Vegemite. I want to try it. I've never had it before. So I'm waiting to see what it tastes like. And you can't really ship it to the U.S. There's all these weird restrictions on it. Yeah. So today is that. And then the second of the month next month is company accounts. And the 15th is CPA. Because we're getting on a, an accountant to manage everything. 
And then my brain turns off. And then everything is done. Then everything is done. And I can finally just go back to thinking about nothing. Which is great. <laughs> uh, sugar and salt sandwich? That actually tastes really good, and I know that because of kettle corn. Kettle corn and sugar and salt together, and it's very good. Yeah. Go back to ferret mode? Dude, I, I can't wait. I can't wait, dude. I just want to, I just want to hang out with the ferrets and turn into a slug human. I just want to hang out with the ferrets and turn into a slug. Can you trade Natto? I don't know what Natto is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Ronnie Rhodes with 35 South African Rand said morning Thor. Good I morning. want to make an isometric game in Godot with controls and views similar to Dota 2. Should I do Ooh. it in 3D, 2D or 777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777
What is this sitting at? It's 82% positive. That's wild. Throw a run for the CIA. Dude, I, I, do, I do logistics and spycraft in these games. I, I really enjoy that. Really enjoy that. Okay. It's sitting there now. I'm stuck in it. I'm going to go link this in chat. How many people are playing this game right now? Because everyone says this is good, dude. Is 82% positive good? Yes. For a for a social sandbox MMO, 82% is incredibly good. Social sandbox MMOs are some of the most brutal games that exist. They largely have a massive fall off of players. So like, something like this having an 82% positive, that's very compelling. Incredibly so. Yeah. You make a unit, maybe. Every time you say mines, now I hear Sea Dog at the top of his voice screaming, The Mines, Thor! <laughs> the Mines. The Mines. What do the negatives say? Great game except for the fact that devs need to hard lock team balancing instead of letting wardens have three times the population of every, every single war. At the start of the most recent war, we had 13 colonials in queue for lock more and 106 wardens in the queue. Balance the teams, for Christ's sake. Game balance make it not fun to play either faction. Play Wardens and just steamroll the Colonials. If you want to have fun, join the Warden side, otherwise don't play. So it seems like there's ba imbalance between Wardens and Colonials? Logistic players once formed a union and went on a 49 day strike? That's amazing. I mean, due to that point, we kind of have to go colonial, don't we? <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no real, there's no way around that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Underdogs done. Is that ship taking on water? Oh my god. Oh, well, goodbye, ship. Sunk. Yeah, I mean, it feels like that at, a point, you, at that point, you need to do it, right? Have you played squad? No. An injection of 6,000 colonials? What if we just tip the scales in the other direction, and then suddenly all of the negative reviews are like, if you want to win, play colonials. Blah. Like, we just we change it to the other side where people are bitching in the other direction. That's the way to do it, dude. That's how you fix it. You imbalance it in the other direction, right? And then every month, we just switch sides. <laughs> Oh, that's the best, dude. That is the best. Sponsored by democracy. Yeah. We thought that was a strybot problem. God damn it, dude. Yo collab duck tea with 500 bits said, Hi Thor, can you tell me the best way to get a freedom bird to catch a domesticated canine that has dual personality disorder that recently unalived a person? What? Oh, sorry, I forgot. You cannot provide eagle, beagle, smeagle legal advice. Yo collab duck tea with 500 bits said hi Thor, do you have any tips on how I can stay motivated in my single player Minecraft world while I build a mega base? It will be a 190 diameter torus which is 50 blocks thick I want to build it really fast but every time I load the game up I get distracted with other things to do. I mean to be real with you, if you want to make a gigantic single player Minecraft world, crank the music, turn your brain off and do it man, I mean like that's... <laughs> Uh, you know what you could do that might actually keep you motivated? Uh, set up a second account and set it up as a camera. Because you can do camera stuff like that. And then just videotape yourself doing it. There's a ton of tools to be able to do this where you can actually set it up and you can record yourself doing this. And then turn it into like a YouTube uh, time lapse. Those are a lot more fun to do. Yeah. Do YouTube time lapse of yourself building that stuff. <clears throat> Wait, what? If you do stream Foxhole, you must block the map or people will report you till ban because of info leak? Well, I mean, yeah. It's a social sandbox MMO, of course. You think I'm going to leak shit? You think I'm going to stream that? <laughs> Please. Don't play Foxhole, it'll ruin you? Nah. 
I'll be alright. Yeah, I'm not new to this kind of game. Not at all. If Thor reduces the streams to six hours, we're gonna know why. Maybe. I do have, um, we actually have a short stream tomorrow. There's gonna be a short stream tomorrow. The reason why is because I have to go to the new house and I have to do a walk around with the internet company to determine how we're building the infrastructure. So that's gonna be at 10.30 a.m., which means I have to end the stream very early, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the way that I would honestly do that, um, I don't know what their anti cheat is like, but I would likely, there's two ways I can do it. Do a fake overlay on stream that injects incorrect fake map data onto the video, or inject that directly into the game to make it look like it's like that as well. Like, there's so many different ways to hide this kind of stuff, and injecting fake data into the broadcast is the right way to go with that. Hey. Yep. Why would you just cover it up when you can use it as a source of misinformation for your enemies? This is not my first rodeo with this kind of game, dude. Not at all. Nope. Other streamers just cover the map? Short-sighted. <laughs> yeah, never, never interrupt your enemy when they're making a mistake. Bingo. Like, that's how you do that shit. Just to be reported, though? Probably. It'll be worth it, though. Yeah, build a small map that does or a small app that does a fake map. All I would have to do is I'd have to get it to overlay onto Twitch. It wouldn't be hard at all. We used to in RTS games to piss off and leash people with fake info. It works really, really well. Yeah. YouTuber gets to snipe? No. The broadcast goes to both Twitch and YouTube, dude. It all goes through OBS. And what is this? Water bongos from Ferret Dreams. Oh my god. Oh my god, digging. They're so cute. How do you stream both YouTube and Twitch at the same time? Using a plugin for OBS, which is a splitter. Yeah, it's really, really useful. Did we lose Oshan? I don't know. Let me look. Oshaun, whatever it's called. Helldivers.io. Yes? Yeah, we did. We did lose it. But we're getting it back, I guess. It's already at 63%. Yeah, it was it was kind of weird. Um we we doubled the amount of players on the server and it lost percentage, which was was very odd feeling. What are your thoughts on Dragon's Dogma 2? I won't be playing it. Yeah, those are my thoughts. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. Are we getting Arc Thrower anytime soon? They said it was going to be early this week, so everybody was saying it was going to be Tuesday. But they have not made another official announcement still. Yeah, their last announcement was on the 21st. Sucks. Are ferrets albino often? Yeah. Yeah, we, there's a lot of albino ferrets. Like the Automaton forces, I think they want people over there for some reason. I mean, Mantis, we're going to take it, so. That's going in the right direction. We win that in eight hours. Oshan, we win in 18 hours, so that's a thing. Um, if we look at Mantis, yeah, 
if we look at Ashan, 2.89%. So yeah, I don't... I don't know. Maybe they do want us over in the robots for some reason? I mean, these four planets right here, the bugs can never go to. Because of Termicide. That is if, you know, Super Earth was right. Right? Yeah, all the automatons are at point zero point zero zero percent per hour, which is weird, right? It's like really weird, actually. Is that Joel game? Yes. So yeah, this is uh, the major order. We're gonna win it. I don't know when the major order ends, though. Five hours to end? Okay. Four hours, 22 minutes? Yeah. Oh, it's bottom of the map? Oh, there it is. Yeah. We're going to get 35 medals for that. So we're getting the major order. The major order of these are these four. We've done it. I think the, the one thing that's a little bit weird about this is I, I kind of don't like the new progression method. So they changed the progression method. And I thought this was brilliant. I actually thought it was a good idea. Because if we look at planets, you can see, you see this implicit multiplier. See this red right here? And you see the blue? The blue is actually the amount of players. So the more players there are, the less effective each player is. They were trying to make it so that every player mattered. So even in the low periods, when there was less players on the server, your progress still made sense. It was still valuable to play. Because people at low low like time period, when there was too few people in the community, they basically just were losing all the time. And it felt negative. So they're like, let's set in a modifier, and it makes it so that if there's less players, it feels better. And if there's more players, then it's it's less effective. The problem with this is, it kind of defeated the purpose of doing a rush. So you don't want to like call in your friends. You're like, oh, everybody get in here. Get everybody get in here. And you're like, well, you don't need to. Because no matter how many people there are, we always push the same speed. So a little bit weird. Like the, the end effect of that was like less interesting sort of call to arms. While allowing people at, at low peak, like low dip to have be more effective. So I don't know if I like it, if that makes sense. I think it was a really good idea. I think it was a really good idea, but it, it now feels like, why would I do a call to arms, right? Why would I be like, everybody go take this planet? And it's like, well, don't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many Helldivers there are. We just need one, you know? So that's, I think that was the weirdest thing. I think it's the weird thing for me is I, I don't think it feels good. It was a good first attempt. I think it needs to be reworked. I agree. Interesting tweak. Kind of defeats the fun in it. It does. Uh, I think it was a good idea. It was a good test. It just doesn't pan out the way that I would have hoped as a player, you know? Yeah, one dude versus Joel. 100%. I don't know, it's weird. Abandoned weird underscore dreams with 500 bits said sold a kidney to buy a Gen 5 PCI NVMe. Oh. Now maybe I can load this demo I paid for. What's the matter with you? I swear Tyro to God. Tyro underscore Thunderdrone with 500 bits said so for those who are new here, what's the deal with the 777s? I don't know what you're talking about. The what? Yeah, never heard of that before in my life. Yeah, never heard of that. Don't know what that is. Dannyman 2K with 500 bits said, Hey, Thor, thanks Hi. for the attention less than three. How do you deal with creativity blocks? I'm having a hard time with the ideational process, and I can't seem to generate meaningful new ideas for myself. I loved Heartbound so much that I want to make something like it. In fact, I've had a pet idea in my head for years, that's already so similar to it and now like. All those ideas just end up manifesting themselves as something too close to Heartbound. I don't want to copy you, but I love its depth. I'm going to be real with you. Make a game that Heartbound inspired you to make. There's nothing wrong with it at all. There are always going to be people that are compa compare you to anything else. But I will tell you right now, it is absolutely fine to make a game that you were inspired to make because you played Heartbound. There's nothing wrong with that at all. When you say it's too close to it, like, the only thing that would be too close to it is if you guys were using our assets. That's all. If you want to make a game that you know reminds you of our game if you want to make a game that you are inspired to make because of our game do that because heartman exists because i'm doing that and the games that i was inspired by were secret of mana secret of evermore and warioware 
So like, and Earthbound, frankly. Like, Heartbound wouldn't exist without Earthbound. That's the whole point. That's the entire point. So do this. Don't use our assets, and that's it. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Yeah, WarioWare. WarioWare is why we have our combat system. It's based on WarioWare. It's quite funny, actually. <laughs> uh. I don't know where I want to put this one. Let me think about this. Yeah, we'll end up putting that over there, I think. Put those all the way at the end. Is there a way on the Discord to get involved in Ashes of Creation? Yeah, dude. So if you want to play Ashes of Creation with us, um, here is a secondary Discord. This is a separate Discord, specifically set up for Ashes of Creation, and a sign-up link for that. We're going to play the shit out of the game. There's already 6,000 people in there. Second Discord. Made for that specifically. All right. Aggressive underscore pair with 500 bits said I have a kilogram of steel. Yeah. You have a kilogram of feathers. <clears throat> Which weighs more? That's right, the feathers. Because not only do you have a kilogram, you also have the weight of what you did to those poor birds. <laughs> Dannyman 2 k with 500 bits said also, uh, I challenge you to a rematch on that staring contest that I so gloriously lost. Yesterday less than three, we should play chess 2 OMG. Playing chess on stream might be a lot of fun. I think that might be fun, to be honest with you. Yeah. I don't think I've ever played chess on stream before, especially not with people in the, in the community. I might enjoy that. It'd be a lot of fun. Foxhole rule soon? Dude, I might do it. Oh, God. Maybe I'll set up a section of the Discord for Foxhole. Maybe I'll do that. Tyler 1 arc? Dude, Tyler 1 is incredibly entertaining to watch play chess. That dude is that dude is ridiculous, frankly. Wait, you're really playing Foxhole? I might, yeah. I might actually do that. So the next one of this... We have to do redstone and lapis. Maybe we'll put that in top right corner. So we'll do, let me think. It'll be eight, what, 17? And then, actually we'll probably do seven and 16. Little beans, beans is woken up. And then after that, we're going to do 8, 17 for those two. And then we have to do a pristine stone. Where am I going to put that? Maybe all the way at the bottom. 52. Save that out. Reload this. Excuse me. Is it not working? Oh, that would be why. Is Beans good? Yeah, he's just waking up. Hey. That's looking good to me. I like that. Alright, nice. Uh-oh. Damn it. Alright. Let's go back to Paul over here. We're going to go over to this one. We're going to look at layouts for Paul. And then 44 and 53 is going to be a little bit different here. We're going to change this one out. And we'll do that as 52. 
Save that one. Reload this. Pop that in there. No, come on. There we go. Nice, that works. This one doesn't need to be updated. That's fine. This one doesn't need to be updated. That's also fine. And now this one does need to be updated, I believe. Let me think about this. No, no it doesn't. I think we're good. <sighs> making an MMO using Minecraft? No, it's actually just making an MMO. There's no no quotations around it. It's um it's a massively multiplayer online game. It's kind of what it is. It's a social sandbox MMO specifically. And it looks like we're in a really good spot now. So all these are finished. Forge has to be updated. He's the last one. And that's hide an animated bone on him, and that's it? I feel like we could put that on something else. What would we put that on instead? I don't have an NPC that deals with pristine hide. Maybe we should put that in the leather worker. That's got to go in the leather worker. We'll do that. Yeah, old Seymour out there, dude. Oh, but wait, the leather worker does everything else. No. Because the leather worker has set up stuff for armors. Okay. We can do it for this. We can do pristine hide. And then to the left of it, we can do... Probably, or above it, we can do the repair powder for it. And I think that'll work just fine. And then we can move these over there as well. So we can do leather saddle and satchels. Yeah. That'll be fine. Okay, so we're going to go do that now. Whoop. Where is this? Layouts. Leatherworking. So this one you've got 53. And then you'll need to make that 44. And this is going to be 52 and 43. Save both of those. Pop that into here. Reload it. Jesus. And there we go. So now the final recipe is the animated bone turning into repair powder. I feel like we should probably just remove that. I feel like we should remove that. Yeah, I think that should probably go on the hunter. Put zombie leather on the hunter and put that on the hunter. What? Where's your outfit? There we go. Yeah, think of what I'm going to do. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those over here, I think. Is this live updates to a server? Yes, it is. Just won't have any updates on this guy. Forge just won't have anything. Is there any reason for YAML and not a different language? YAML's just config, dude. It's just config. It's like having JSON. It's exactly the same. It's just a human-readable JSON. Makes it simple. You're just a config. You're a config. You're five configs. Yeah. Did you know that? Lounge you know you're actually two dollars said milk being fruit juice ice cream is sherbet happy. Cows are actually just processed cereal. Processed cereal extract is milk. Yeah. Yeah. 
somewhat underscore eccentric with 500 bits said ya cheer 500 hello, Mr. Software. Today I'm going to help you out with acronyms. WWW stands for Wiggle Wiggle Wiggle. CBT means closed beta test. No, it doesn't. TTS is talk to streamer. Oh. ASMR spells out as Asgardian streamer's motivational raffle. Thor no. will read out motivational quotes to the winner in the most buttery voice. No. Type exclamation mark ASMR in chat to participate. Anyway, this wave way? a nice stream. Who made you this way? I swear to God, dude. Silas Ridiculous. underscore man with 500 bits said hello Thor. No. Was hoping to hear your take on this as it has been confusing me. Sure. I was thinking of trying Bitcraft on release so I checked out the Bitcraft channel on your Discord and saw that there was some controversy surrounding it. The main confusion comes from the fact that apparently the game was originally supposed to be a crypto no. game, not no. talking about the recent crypto confusion, and that the no. devs have tried to scrub that info from the internet. No. Not sure if it is true or not though. That is not true. No, it is not true. Let me show you. God, it's terrible. <sighs> Let me grab this. Yeah, no, it's not true, and I'll show you why. Number one, there's no scrubbing things from the internet. That's not how that goes. Literally at all, right? That's it's not a possibility in, their, in these days. On top of that, this is their public statement, which is there is no crypto, no Web3, no blockchain, no NFTs, no drops, etc. in Bitcraft Online. Bitcraft is an upcoming open world sandbox MMORPG that we hope you and your friends will enjoy. If you showed up expecting crypto or similar, there is none. We hope you will still stick around to enjoy the awesome community and our game once it is out and ready to play. We've talked to the developers. We've talked to the creators of the game. They have been basically inundated entirely by the crypto community that believes that any of this has something to do with crypto because it's called Bitcraft. Like Bitcoin. And they just cannot handle themselves. And if we go to the actual Bitcraft website, if I go there to actually go to their launch hub and I log into this, let me go check my email real fast so I can do a full login for this. Boop a doop, boop a doop. We'll go log into this. You can see very quickly on the leaderboard, we were ranked like six or something ridiculous. We're down to rank 38. And the reason that we're down to rank 38, if we look at this, is because the grand majority of accounts that are on there are crypto bullshit accounts. Name things like Crypto Lugu. And FDHDF, and they're just using Telegram to get infinite amounts of logins and signups that are not actually real. It's all crypto bros. Look at this shit. Elon Musk, you crypto. Like, it's crypto idiots, frankly. Yeah, the game has nothing to do with crypto. It's never had anything to do with crypto. And we're going to play the shit out of it, frankly. So, like, no. It's, it's really sad. It's sad to see that shit happen to devs, man. It's really sad to see that shit. Yeah. Yeah, even shit like this. It's it's insane to me. Absolutely insane to me. There, there are even places that were trying to claim that it was. It's insane. Awful. Yeah, so if you look at this, even with this one, these guys tried to report on this back in April of 2019, saying that it was crypto in some way. And they've always said, no, this has nothing to do with crypto. And if you look at this, it's like, oh, claiming to be the world's first crypto MMORPG. There's none of this shit in the game. It's never had this shit in the game. We've talked to the devs about it. It's, no. It's ridiculous. What's Bitcraft? It's a, it's a survival crafting game. Let me go pull this up. Yeah, no, it's, it's bad, dude. It's bad and it's sad, is what it is. There. This is their game. It is a hex grid based survival crafting game. Hex grid based survival craft. Why not change the name? Why would you change the name because outside sources are trying to say that your shit is something it isn't? People try to say that Heartbound is an Undertale ripoff all the time. Why would I change the name of the game? They can eat my entire ass. No. Like, nah. The game looks cool. The game is really cool. You can sign up on this. We're trying to build a big community in there because the game looks very compelling. 
Uh, they're not, you know, we're not sponsored in any way. That's not like a monetized link in some way. It does add you to the community stuff. So then we go up the leaderboard. So maybe I can give you guys keys. That's it. That's all that it is. So like, I'm, I'm interested in the game. I think it looks cool as shit. I like this. I like the general style of it. It looks fun, right? Looks fun and interesting. And I like all the cosmetic changes. And I like the hex grids. I think that a a survival world where we can modify hex grids like this with terraforming looks really fun to me. Yeah. So like, dude, that shit sucks. It's really sad to see. It's really sad to see that the entire like crypto community just sunk its teeth into it. Sad. Yeah, I'm going to play it. Don't care. How do you switch your brain off from work? Wait, we can do that? When did that happen? Also, Wookie Legend. Thank you for the rating party of 212. I saw you come in, but I was I was in the middle of a rant. How you guys doing? Thank you for the ride. Hope you're having a good day. Bleh. I'm barely awake today. It's great. It's a good day. You go to bed, dude? All right, man. Thank you for the raid. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And you sleep well, man. I'm finally slowly getting over my cold. It's great. Is that a shaking ass emote? Oh, no. Oh, no. You posted somebody's dumpy emote, dude. You know this channel is where animated dumpies go to die, right? Like, the moment you post it in here, some Twitch staff is going to kill it. It's yours? Not for long, dude. Not for long. They killed ours, too. If you have an animated ass emote on Twitch, they kill them. They kill all of them. They even got rid of ours. Yeah, they killed it. F. I know we got the big goal. I'm going to do it today. We'll do it. Don't worry. <clears throat> it's already back from the dead once. Wait, what do you mean, no yours is back? They allowed you to have it back? Is that what you're saying? What do you... What do you mean they allowed you to? Did you just re-upload it? Or did they give you like an email that said this is allowed? We don't talk about it? God damn it, dude. Because I've wanted our Dumpy emote back forever. Dumpy was our favorite emote. No, they changed the rules, so I took advantage of it, and then it went through. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. When the, you mean when they changed the rules for, like, emotes and shit for, for art on, on platform? I actually had the Dumpy back for, like, a day. And then they changed the rules back. Yeah, then they changed the rules back two days later, and I took our emote back down. Because now it's, like, against TOS or whatever the hell. Yeah, if you look at that emote, too, you see that Rulika emote? That one from Admiral Baru, they actually originally deleted that one because it left uh, saliva on the screen. And they said that it was bodily fluids. So he had to re-upload it without the saliva. And they're like, yeah, now it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Some of this shit is really weird, dude. Like highly restrictive for no reason kind of stuff, you know? It's very weird. Yeah, I don't know, dude. And about tears? Bodily fluids, dude. No crying. No crying aloud. Yeah, no, this is... I, I think it's created, like, a really weird sort of animosity with Twitch. I think it's very odd, because the first thing that people do is they're like, why do you get rid of animated ferret ads? But also, go look at the fitness category. Right? Like, that's usually the first thing that people say. Or go look at the hot tub category. Or whatever it's going to be. So, like, it immediately just turns into, like, a big negative for Twitch. So, I don't understand the business reason for dying on this hill. Like, I don't understand it. Right? It's not, it's not scaring advertisers in any way if it's a PG ass. As long as it's PG. Right? So, like, I don't... 
I don't know why they die on this hill. It's a strange one to me. I really do. I think it's a I think it's a weird thing for the platform to do. Does Twitch know that eyes are moist? Well, you it has to be animated. So non-animated ass emotes like that one, they don't matter. It's animated ass. And the reason that I know that is because that's what they said when they got rid of our emote. Let me go pull this up. I'll show you the exact thing that they sent us. From Pirate Software. Dumpy. Because I, I complain about this so hard. Let me find this. The reason why I complain about this is check this shit out. You know how everybody thinks this is from like the, uh, the Among Us? They're like, oh, it's the Among Us thing, right? They're like, it's an Among Us. That's why they have this emote. No, it's not. It's actually from a PG movie in 2006 called open season this is where it's from that's where the dumpy is from it's a children's movie not pg-13 pg it's a pg movie and that's where we got this emote it's exa- it's just it's a draw over all of it is a draw over it always has been but they deleted our emote and the the exact thing they said is here reason disallowed content imagery of sexual content or nudity i.e gasm style emotes which contain sexualized torsos or bodily fluids, animated images of buttocks. You cannot have an animated ass. You can have a static image ass, but you can't have an animated ass. There's not even a butthole on it. It doesn't even have a little X butthole. It's got nothing. It's just flat. It's a cartoon. Do you remember Cow and Chicken? The devil had his ass out all the time. Dude, I remember that. Not only did the devil have his ass out all the time, but they would do things like put a credit card in it. They do all kinds of shit, dude. He always had something like hanging out of his ass in that cartoon. It wasn't just an ass. The ass was like a prop for other stuff going on. Every time. The devil's ass was everywhere in Cow and Chicken. But yeah, so every animated ass emote you guys just posted, all those are going to get deleted. Like legitimately, it's not even a joke. They delete them all the time when they show up in the channel. It's wild, dude. It's completely wild. It's not, it's not even a joke, dude. You've, oh, you've murdered every one of these dumpies. And it, it's funny, too, because if you look at this, if we go to, like, um, God, what is it called? Um, ah, what is his name? What is his name? Commander Root. Commander Root Emote Lookup. Let's just use his Commander Root Twitch Emote Search system, right? And we'll just say contains dumpy. Case insensitive. Any type of email. There are 1,107 dumpy emotes. And the grand majority, like 90% are animated. Like 90% are animated. Just even named dumpy. <laughs> There's so many of them, dude. And the most of them are this. They're actually just a draw over of the, uh, the open season movie. Yeah, Bezos is here, dude. Commander Root isn't harmful? No, Commander Root is great. You've got two people in your chat when you first start streaming, alright? You've got your mom, and you've got Commander Root. It's true. Oh, petition to bring back animated emote dumpy on Twitch? Hey, wait a minute. I got you. You ready for this? We're going to wait for Bezos, then I'm going to show you this. <clears throat> you want Dumpy's back? Vote on this shit. Hypertube. Hypertube Henry. He's hypertubing, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to force him to turn right, which is good for him. Good good video. So if you want something to change on Twitch, you engage with it on user voice. 
this category in software and game development exists because we put it on user voice, became one of the top voted things of all time, and it works. So leave them a comment of why you think this should be a thing, of why you want this to be here, right? And don't meme it. This is a real thing, right? So you have to do this. The FCC has deemed this type of thing PG, so what makes anyone at Twitch better at determining what should be at a higher rating and ban it? Good comment. Smart. And the reason why is because if you read in this, the context that I put, a dumpy emote is an emote with a shaking butt in a circle that does not contain nudity or sexually explicit content of any kind. There are over 900 of them on Twitch as of this writing. Now there's over 1,100. Dumpy emotes are incredibly popular among a wide number of communities on Twitch. However, they've been removed by Twitch moderation at seemingly random for violating community guidelines. Context here. We actually had ours for over a year before they removed it. As these emotes are based on a drawover of the PG movie open season from 2006, it seems absurd to ban them from the platform. And I put the context for that as well. My whole thing with this is to try and put as much information as possible to be like, this is why this doesn't make sense. And then people vote on it. Maybe Twitch figures it out, right? So we're at 2,700 votes on this now. And now we're at 2,800. So hopefully Twitch eventually pays attention to this because I think it's important. Link? Here, I'll link it to chat. You do exclamation point vote at any time for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Where should you find that link? Right here, bud. So, like, this this is one of the things that I've been like, why are you doing this? Because all it's doing is it's creating community animosity. So if there's a business reason, it'd be great if they could actually explain that to the community, give the community context, because all it's doing is pissing people off. It, it makes individual communities upset every time. Yeah. Can you vote without commenting? Yes, you can. It's a, it's a Twitch link, so you just, you just click on it. Yeah, that's it. What do you mean, rip link? Works fine. Yeah, but streaming gameplay on your butt is literally allowed? No, I think that's going to get banned soon. So, like, think about it this way. Twitch always has these things called metas. And all a meta is on Twitch is people trying to push the barrier between what is allowable and what is sexual content. So what they'll do is they like they did that black bar meta where someone's completely naked and then they put a black bar over their boobs, right? This is this is what they do. That one got banned. They removed that. Yeah, they're limit testing. And then the next one after this is you wear booty shorts, but the booty shorts are green screened. And then you your gameplay is displayed on the ass of the person. Like they actually green screen it and they put their computer like their screen through the ass. Which is just like it was, it's hilarious, brilliant, frankly, but holy shit, like what, what is wrong with you? Like blows me away. My favorite comment on that is, is the comments below that are, why would I watch this? The gameplay is ass. Proud of you. Proud of you for that. Wonderful. The link is dead. It shouldn't be. That's working. I can click on that. There's no problems there. Yeah, there's no problems with that at all. Link is working just fine. You guys may have actually killed user voice, which is even funnier. Yeah, it works fine for me. Yeah, no, that this is this is how Twitch metas work. And basically what happens is people go and find it a new innovative way to be dipshits. And then Twitch goes, God damn it, and then they ban it, right? You're technically within guidelines, but like stop it. You know, like they they always do this. They always do this. Yeah. Innovation, right? But no, this is this is one that I think is weird because it creates animosity in the community because it immediately goes like, oh, well, I saw a person playing video games on an ass. Why can't I have an animated PG emote of a butt, right? Very common. And I don't think it, it buys Twitch any, any positivity. It comes down to a perception issue. It's not an actual issue, not really, but it is a perception issue. And I think if Twitch communicated a little bit better about this stuff, we'd probably have less issues. Because social media platforms like this, they live or die on that kind of perception, frankly. We're literally accidentally DDoSing user voice. Nice. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, I saw someone describe you as the bomb process of programming. I totally see what they mean. Well, thank you. That's very nice. Yeah, no, it's it's super weird. It's super weird. Right? Green screen booty shorts, heartbound gameplay stream. God damn it, dude. It's the worst. That's I know that they go and they, they just go after it and they'll ban it afterwards. They will. They'll go after it and they'll ban it afterwards. There's a couple other things we actually have on user voice, too. Um, other things that I think are, like, more or less important. So, like, one of them is analytics. How many of you guys were here for... Remember when Twitch gave out all those, those like, ad offers? And everybody was pissed off. They're like, my ad offer is shitty. My ad offer is good. You remember that? 
Remember how awful that was? And everybody's like hating on Twitch. And they also like people were putting up their streams with like F you Twitch and all kinds of shit, even though they were like partners for a long time. It was awful, dude. It was horrible. And the reason why is because some ad offers would be like a small amount of money. And some ad, ad offers would be like an enormous amount of money. And like w this streamer over here was like a larger streamer. And this streamer was a smaller streamer. And people were like, what the hell is going on? Like, why are you doing this? Well, I found out why they were doing it. Would you like to know more? Because it's really interesting. It's really interesting. And it had nothing to do with Twitch being a piece of shit at all. It actually had nothing to do with it at all. It was analytics. It was 100% analytics. Different categories pay out different rates. They have different CPMs. They just don't tell you that. And we know that because I've tested it. And then I took my numbers and I brought them to the head of monetization, who's Mike Minton at Twitch. And guess what? He confirmed it. Hey, so... What I want Twitch to do is add better analytics for ad revenue on the platform so that you guys can actually make determinations about your content as content creators and know what you're going to be making. YouTube already does this. Twitch does not. So in this case, what we found is that the Ferret Software channel, which is our, our Ferret Rescue channel that runs 24-7, was making double the ad revenue of this channel on a per-viewer, per-minute basis. Double. And we're like, that's really weird. Why? And this was even back when it was affiliate. So it made no sense. So you're like, what the hell is going on? So we started looking into it. I did all the math. I actually showed the math off publicly. So this was a, a while ago, but these are all the, the actual numbers, the public numbers for this. I, I released everything. And I, I talked to Mike Minton. And his his determination after looking at this was, well, that cat, that one's in the animals category. And the animal category is more ad friendly. That's it. That's all it came down to. There are more ads to deliver at a higher rate. Because there's more ads to deliver, more people get ads every ad break. That's why some of you guys during our ad breaks, when we have this thing pop up, you say, oh, I didn't get any ads. I'm not subbed. What's going on? It's because nobody, no, like there are people who just don't get ads based on where you are in the world, what time of day it is for you, and what your browsing habits are, and what category you're in. If there's not enough ads to go around, then there's not enough ads to go around. So the Ferret Software channel is over in the animals category. The animals category is more ad friendly, and more advertisers want to advertise in that category. So because of this, it makes more money. That's that's it. It wasn't it wasn't platform bias at all. But Twitch couldn't describe this to anyone because they didn't have proper analytics to show you this. Hell, up until recently, people didn't even realize that they were making money off of Twitch Turbo. They had no idea. And one of the first changes that they made was they actually made a change that shows how much ad revenue you're making off of Turbo users. People didn't know. They had no idea. So that was the first piece of this, changing something on Twitch, which is to make sure that you now know that Turbo makes you money as a creator. People didn't know before. So yeah, this, this shit's super important. This shit is super important. Stop being a shill. Oh yeah, dude, yeah, let, let me sit here and be a shill for all of the content creators in here that are trying to make a buck and literally have no tooling to do so. Wow. What a, what a take you have there, bud. Yeah, real. we're all very impressed. <laughs> Dumbass. Jesus. Holy moly. Goose with a 22 raid. And then Innocent Elixir with a 450 raid. Thank you very much. How you doing, man? Hope you're having a wonderful day. What were you streaming? Tell me about it. Tell me about it. I know. <laughs> 450 viewers, and the first thing you get to hear is a dude giving a bad take. It's very funny. Not the new pool meta? Nice. She was streaming her butt. It was Pog. <laughs> no. Please don't tell me you were doing the booty shorts meta, dude. We were just talking about that shit. That's so funny. Please, no. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. We were literally just talking about it because we're like, that shit's ridiculous, dude. Is anybody here not seeing that? Yeah, what were you actually streaming? What was it? Honestly, I like to stream dev stuff, but it's not great for views. Here. Let's fix that. Hey, chat. Go follow them. Do it. Do it. Do it. If you're streaming dev stuff, 100%, dude. This category exists because we put it on user voice. We led the charge on this and fought for it for eight months. 
If you see other creators inside of this category, inside of software and development, 100%, 100% go check their shit out. And if you want to stream software or game development, link, it's at the top of your stream, right there. It's a shout out. You just click on it. It's done. You don't need a link. It's right there. <laughs> I'll do a link too. Uh, pull this up. Yeah, legitimately, man. Like, it's... It's super important to understand that this category is for that, and it's not just programming. It's game development, it's programming, it's all kinds of different stuff. It's all kinds of different stuff. Also, hilariously, I think your stream is still running. You raided, but I think your stream is still on. <laughs> oh, no! Do you know how I know? Because your chat is exploding, dude. <laughs> it's the last song. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny, dude. Your chat has exploded. Your stream elements has gone wild. There's a billion follows. But yeah, to be real with you, dude, you, you should stream software and game development. You should. This category is actually pretty awesome. There's a lot of really cool people, and it's a smaller community, so everybody kind of supports each other and does stuff, which is really awesome shit. So if you're doing development stuff, definitely do it in this category, 100%. You'll find that there's a lot of people that are really willing to try and like work together and help each other in here. And that's that's sort of the whole point, man. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're trying to do dev stuff and you just can't, that sucks. That's really rough, honestly. It really is. It's a difficult thing. Really difficult thing. But you should. Stream and dev stuff, man. Do it. Yeah, if she's trying to stream dev stuff, that's cool. Not a dev. I took boot camp a long time ago. But I'm not a booboo streamer. Have you ever actually tried to stream dev stuff on Twitch? You're now a booby streamer, booby streamer, but you'd rather do dev stuff is what you're talking about, right? Because you're doing booby streamer stuff is what you said, right? I took boot camp a long time ago, but I'm now a booby, booby streamer. Basically not at all. Yeah. No, I totally understand that. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is if you're doing stuff on Twitch, a lot of the times people will drive for things that get the most amount of views. And if you're going that direction for doing booby streamer stuff, I totally get it. I super understand. Because like, yes, that will get views. 100%. That being said, if you do dev stuff, you should do that. Even if you do that like once a week, right? It's not going to impact, you know, your community super negatively. Diversifying your content in different areas is not a bad thing. Trying a whole bunch of different stuff. You can, if you want to keep doing booba streamer stuff, do what you like, right? But at the same time, if you want to do dev, do that too. There's no reason not to. There's different types of people out there. There's different types of communities. And you can absolutely do both. Or one. Or either, right? Whatever, whatever you want it to be. Dev in a bikini? Screw it. Done. You could be the first booba dev. Untapped. Untapped market. <laughs> but to be real with you, man, like it's 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 one of those things that I think a lot of people don't realize is that software and game dev is kind of on the map now. It's something that's actually really, really cool. And if you want to diversify your content on the platform, you should. And uh, I think the worst thing, the worst thing that I have seen is creators that feel locked in to whatever it is that they're doing. Like you can only do booba streams or you can only do one video game you're only a fortnite streamer you are only an apex streamer you are only a whatever it is right if and a lot of streamers hate to be locked in like that because they're like what if this goes out of meta what if people don't like this game anymore what if this gets banned on the platform it feels shitty so like diversifying your content is the best thing to do and it's a hard thing to do you just got to start doing it frankly so like yeah if you if you want to stream dev stream dev i know you can do it it's tough but you can do it and there's a lot of people in here that want to support that kind of stuff, man. Like 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Seriously. Yeah, diversity diversity in your content is a tough thing to do. But it's fun. It ends up being a lot of fun. I do a lot of shit. I, I make video games. I you know stream ferrets. I help people make content. I do all kinds of stuff, man. Make stuff. Do things. It's whatever. It's like a variety. Variety time. I just stream all the time is the difference. I stream 12 hours a day. Can I stream my school dev? So think about it this way. What do you guys think that software and game development is for? It's not just for programmers. It's for writing. It's for voice acting. It's for music. It's for art. Are you working 
on software? Are you working on games? That could be in any capacity. It could be any capacity for either of those things. Like, so that's an important part of that, right? Part of the reasons I stream in software and game development is while I'm working on something in the background, I'll be building something like block game, right? I'm helping other people to make things as well. It's all related to this. Tabletop games? Absolutely. Tabletop games are games. Game dev, right? You can make a card game on here. You can do any of that stuff. Absolutely do that. Could it be learning to code software? Yes. That's software development, right? That's, that's the whole point for the category. It's, it's a broad category purposely so that people can do these things. I want to do game shows, but I put it off to do casual stuff. It's hard to prioritize the things that take less time. Yeah, no, I understand. Game shows are tough, too. Game shows are always tough to do. Um, like, I've seen the amount of effort that, like, Ludwig puts into, like, crazy game show stuff. And, dude, that's... The amount of setup required is immense. And then the event is, like, maybe a day. <laughs> so it's like, oh... You know, like, when you're building that kind of stuff, it's it's so... It's a lot of stress. Yeah. There's a guy building a game engine right now? Oh, yeah, no, the category is awesome as shit, dude. Feels like less, but it's not. Yeah, no, it's it's less to the community. It's it, it's kind of one of the things I talk about with game dev, right? I'll sit down and I'll make something for weeks. It'll take me weeks or months to make something, right? And then the amount of time in game that is spent on that is maybe like thirty seconds, <laughs> maybe a minute if I'm lucky, right? So like, dude, I get it. I super get it. It shit sucks. Welcome to content creation, right? Well, learning AI also be software dev. Yeah, I mean, if you're building stuff, yes. I mean that's that's sort of the whole that's sort of the whole thing with this category. And like I, I think I think the biggest thing is anytime you feel trapped as a creator, you gotta break out of that mold. You gotta. Because it is very hard to make things when you feel like you're trapped. It bleeds over into everything else that you're doing. Yeah. Blew out the follower goal. Because of Thor, love to see it. Yeah, no, dude. I'm always, I'm always down for supporting people who want to get into this stuff, especially when they're like, you know, you you feel like you're railroaded into one type of content. That's a that's a rough ass thing. It is. It's a very difficult thing, frankly. And I I think a lot of people don't realize that, especially on a platform like this, where you're like, oh man, that's that's the this kind of streamer. You know, that is that. But in reality, that's a person on the other side. <laughs> you know, and if they're only known for Fortnite and Fortnite dies, what happens? They don't get, to, like, they get fired. Like, imagine a video game dying, and you get fired as a streamer as a result. Oh. Like, that's horrifying, dude. That's a scary-ass thing, you know? And that happens. That happens a lot. So, diversifying content is a big deal. You are in a program? No, I'm not a program. I'm a real human being. I know you guys want to come in here every day. Look, all right, it's not weird. It happens to everybody. You get it when you're older, okay? So, like, don't don't make fun of me. It'll happen to you. Don't. Don't. It's not fair. It's not nice. It's rude. It's rude. Actually rude. Not a VTuber. No. <laughs> oh, man. I don't have any cranberry juice left, dude. I drank it all. I drank it all. Banaruku. It's funny. Yeah, no, to, to be real with you, it's, um... It's always something you just have to keep in mind. Is content creators on the other side are a person. And... If somebody wants to change content, they're going to lose some of their audience, but gain a new kind of audience. And it's usually not a bad thing. Usually not, you know. It is usually a very beneficial thing because you curate the audience around what you like to do. And more different avenues for that is, is a better thing as a creator. And it makes your stream more resilient, frankly. More resilient to change from the platform, you know. Next TTS? No, I don't think I will. I think every time someone calls for TTS, I wait another minute. Usually I don't say anything. Usually I just do it. So that the salt builds in them. Slowly but surely. And then eventually I siphon the salt out of them. And then I power myself with that. 
Because salt is vitamins for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I used to play League of Legends. That's the reason. It is. It is. <laughs> ah! Alright, what was I working on, dude? I don't even remember. Oh yeah, the animated bone. I need, like, zombie leather and animated bones. In probably not leatherworking? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'd want it to be. I don't know what I'd want it to be. It is going to be pristine hide into repair butter. That's new. Could you start over with yesterday's CTS? No. There was no yesterday's CTS. I rused every one of you. I got that shit to zero. I did over 260 TTSs yesterday. Got them. And I got it to zero. Look at the debt. Did you see the debt? God, I felt great about it. I felt so good about it. I was like, guys, I'm never going to be able to finish the TTS, but I was already at zero. It was a ruse. It was a ruse. Zero dollars to the debt. Zero. 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 260 TTS. Zero. Defeated, Chet. Defeated. Dannyman 2K with 500 bits said one more question less than three. Can you give some advice on how to create a better sleeping schedule? I'm a night owl by habit, and every time I try to stay up until my next bedtime would be, I end up catching a second wind, and I end up being up for 36 uh... plus hours. It sucks lol I actually want to try and emulate your schedule, somewhat for the lols, but I think it's cool ASF. <laughs> I'm trying to deal with having major ADHD without meds as I don't like being dependent on them, good. but it do be hard sometimes. Uh, do not copy my schedule. My schedule is like that because I'm a mutant, dude. Like, I, for those who don't know, I work 16 hours a day. 12 of that is usually on stream, except for on Thursdays. On Thursdays, I just work 16 hours straight on other shit. Um, I have three hours of free time. That three hours of free time, usually about half of that is used on the ferret rescue. And then I do five hours of sleep. You don't want to be like me. The reason this happens is we've actually done sleep studies for me. I just drop into REM sleep really fast. I get more done in the day because I sleep less hours. I don't need more than this. This is correct for me. This is probably not correct for you. So, like, don't do this. <laughs> do not emulate my schedule. You will probably have issues, right? Yeah, you don't want this. You, d you don't want this. Yeah, if you sleep five hours and you feel like shit, that's, that's how that goes. I didn't, like train my body for this. This is just how I am. It's just been this way forever. Do you ever exercise? I walk around and I play... It's funny, I play Monster Hunter now. That's my... My exercise is playing Monster Hunter now in my neighborhood. <laughs> Although I can't do it very often because there's a lot of crime here. So, that sucks. But yeah, I play Monster Hunter now. Yeah... It's dependent on how much one weighs? I don't know. I'm not sure about that, to be honest with you. What weapon? I do Sword and Shield. I want to play um, Insect Glaive, but it's not out yet. If they release it, I'm going to play Insect Glaive. 100%. What is today's quest? Longsword? Done. Doing my daily quest real fast. But no, I, I, would, rather, I would rather play Insect Glaive. But I, it's not in the game yet. Eventually, when they do add it, I will be switching. Yeah, I'm doing Sword and Shield right now. I do Aerial Sword and Shield. So if you don't know how to do the Aerial combo, uh, if you hold down to block, then do a back jump, and then hold down, you can charge up twice, and then release. And then as you spam the button, you actually climb up the enemy, and then do a falling shield bash on them from the sky. Let's you dodge a lot of shit, but if you do it wrong, you're going to die. <laughs> what game? Monster Hunter Now. It's the phone version of Monster Hunter which is a uh, built by a Niantic. It's actually like Monster Hunter Pokemon Go. Are you just flipping your food? That's very rude. Rude animal. You go with Gunlance? Gunlance? It's not even the game yet. Yeah, it's like Ingress. Ingress is, is basically the same thing. I don't know if I can kill an 8-star Rathian yet. I might be able to kill an 8-star Rathian. I might be able to. How's Beans? He's doing good. Beans is doing really well. Uh, the problem with Beans right now is that he won't calm the hell down. 
It was like a huge problem. Like he, he refuses to calm down. And because of this, he's going to... We're trying to stop him from injuring himself, basically. Because he's just like, I want to do things! And we're like, dude, you're healing. He's like, no! I'm going to try and kill this monster. But yeah, he won't stop. He's just, he's gone completely wild. Which I guess is a good thing, right? It means that he's healing, he's healthy. But it's also like, he's so insanely wild that we're worried he's going to hurt himself. Because he's just constantly trying to break out of the cage, he's constantly going nuts. Shit. I almost had the fight. I think I just I just whiffed it, dude. Nope. Damn it. He killed me at the last second. <laughs> I played the entire thing perfectly. I was fighting the Rathian, eight star Rathian solo perfectly. I got him to 5% HP and then he killed me. Mad. Mad. Completely dead. Yeah, I can't kill them yet. Or her. Yeah, I guess Rathian is her. Rathalos is the he. Yeah. She killed my ass. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah, no, it's, um... It's very skill-based. It's very fun. I got two perfect counters on that. I did a whole bunch of, like, aerial combos. It's just... I just don't have enough damage yet. Eventually, I will. But that day is not today. So. Soon. Soon. I need more into my, my lightning weapon. Lightning Weapon's just not strong enough yet. Not strong enough. Uh, Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield's pretty tough against Rathian and Rathalos, and the reason why is because during their flying combo, you just don't do very much damage. So, like, you try and get them out of flying very quickly. So what I'll do is, as they're getting ready to do their animation to go fly, I do my aerial combo to break a wing. And then they're like, well, shit. And they're screwed, right? <clears throat> Have you played other Monster Hunter games? Monster Hunter Now is the, the like one that I'm super into, but Monster Hunter World was the game that I got into originally. That's That was my first Monster Hunter game. World is just so fun, dude. It's an awesome, awesome game. I love Monster Hunter World. Love the hell out of it, frankly. Do you have a referral code? Yeah, if you want to come play with me. There you go. Mon Hun. There you go. I play it all the time, dude. I play the game every single day. I'm like Hunter rank 110 or some shit. There you go, dude. I think that gives us potions or whatever if you sign up for it. My friends are full? They are. Yeah. I keep removing people that have, like, quit the game. You can only have, like, 200 friends. So, like, it just, I just keep deleting people. Yeah. Our school has a problem with leak Instagram accounts. They're sharing private stuff. Any ideas beyond reporting them? Report them and stop putting naked pictures of yourself on the internet. You know, there's nothing to leak if you stop doing that shit. Right? Oh, oh shit, my nudes. Oh. Oh god, I leaked them. Oh, that sucks. My tasteful nudes, dude. Oh, Bezos has seen them too. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, get an eyeful chat. There they are. I know. My nudes. I know. They're very tasteful, aren't they? They are, aren't they? Yeah, they are. <laughs> it's so stupid, dude. <laughs> Oh, by the way, we've had to perform a moderation action, and I'll explain what it is after the Bezos.
All right. Our video game Heartbound has socks as pick up items. Socks have been a long-standing meme in the community because I hate wearing socks. So I would throw them all over the floor anytime I would come into the office. I would take them off, put them on the floor, and ignore them. That became a joke so heavy that they entered the video game. Then we made a sock posting channel on Discord, and people would post ridiculous socks. Then the Cambridge explosion for the community happened, and we went from 5,000 people in the Discord to 100,000. Now that channel has devolved into people horny posting themselves in thigh highs. I have deleted all of these now. Stop doing that. Stop it. That's not what that channel's for. That is not what it's for. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. No. Moderators have also been told to stop people from doing that. Stop doing that. <laughs> it was just a... It was a whole lot of people posting themselves in thigh highs and showing off their rifles. I don't know where this started, but it's just a bunch of, like, striped thigh highs and guns. And I'm like, why are you why are you doing this? Stop doing this. Stop posting this in the Discord. No. 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 It's a very specific fetish, I know. But it doesn't belong there. Cut it out. So I've, I've actually put on a pinned comment and it says, This channel is for socks, not horny baiting thigh highs. That's the pin comment for the channel. My god. Bunch of freaking goblins. I swear to god, dude. Goblins, every one of you. So we can't have nice things? No, this is why we can have nice things. <laughs> the gods have sm smited our entertainment good. Good. Thigh high channel win? Never. 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 This is the same reason we don't have a not safe for work channel. You know what? You know what I might do? I might make a not safe for work channel that when you enter it, you can't post in it. It just says no. In like all caps, like a gigantic word. Like just a huge image that says no. I might do that. That seems that seems really on brand. We should do that. Yeah. We actually have another one. So if you look up if you look up Pirate Software Discord, it actually shows up as the first result on Google. Which means that everybody who's trying to like like steal Adobe products or anything like that, they inevitably show up in our Discord. So we set up a bait channel for this. We set up a channel called Piracy Requests. And every time anybody enters the Discord and they're like, Hey, hey, I'm looking for, I'm looking for Adobe stuff. We're like, Hell yeah, you go to the Piracy Request channel and it, it's bait. That's what it is. Bait. <laughs> and there's two things that come out of this. They come back and they say, F you guys, and they get banned. Or they're like, well, what is this Discord for? And then they join the community and they stop doing that shit. Which is really funny to me. <laughs> Either way, we win. Either way. What if I want to hire someone to loot my enemy ships? Unfortunate. Unfortunate. OG, OG Booty Snatcher. Claims that the Apex, Apex devs suck as. You had one shot, bud. You had a single shot. You couldn't even spell ass correctly. Couldn't do it. It's your first message, too. Everybody knows you by this now. Every single person is going to remember you as the guy who said suck ass. It's sad. Actually, I'm lying. No one's going to remember you. Banned. Yep. Infinitely banned. Just banned. No, the Apex devs are doing a really good job. Uh, Respawn is actually doing everything that they need to. I've talked to some of the people in the security team. They're, you know, they're doing a good job. They're doing everything they should. And that's coming from someone who's been doing this for 20 years. So, like, just got to wait. Got to wait for them to give an official response out. You guys, you know, I, I know it's it's hard to see that as players. It's hard to see a little bit beyond the veil, which is why I went and, you know, did all the videos that I had to talk about this kind of stuff. But it's important. It's important to understand that the devs are on your side when it comes to these things. 100%. Yeah. Yep. But also still banned. This is funny. Ketooth with 500 bits said Yarchir 500 Hey Thor. I just found this Reddit post how someone noticed that Stormine Castle is fake. You guys at Blizzard ever noticed that? What mysteries have else have you kept from us? What's next? <laughs> 
Ogrimmer isn't made out of wood and stones. Link no. incoming. HTTPS colon slash. We were tricked. Stormwind Castle is fake. Oh, they finally figured out that the windows aren't the same. Is that... Is that what this is? Yeah, they finally figured it out. That's very funny. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, four, and three. <laughs> you know... You know, maybe it was made by mages, dude. Maybe it's just different on the inside, you know? Maybe it's just different. You don't know. You don't know. There are four windows. Yeah, there are four windows, Chet. Yeah, it might be a TARDIS. You don't know. You know what it is. I'm going to be real with you anyway, though. Um, like, to be honest, I don't know why we have such a fancy castle for all of these honorable kills. You could just put them in the field. That's it. Just put them outside. I'll go get them. You don't need a castle for, to hold honorable kills. You don't. So I don't. I don't even know why that exists. Frankly, that's. I think that's the. That's the biggest strange oddity that I see here. It's just that, you know. It just seems excessive. Seems excessive. Yeah, honorable kills. Honorable kills. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of luck, tar. I agree. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. To get dishonorable kills, I never had that. Taffy, what are you trying to talk about? I don't know what the hell you're trying to say, dude. Keeps the true king safe? Oh, you mean you mean that guy that I killed to get him out? Yeah, I remember that. Oh, you you thought that guy was special? Oh. Yeah, no. No, there was an achievement for that. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are getting error if you get error two thousand, restart the stream. See, this is the content sock posting was made for. People posting their really creepy toe socks. And socks and sandals. Good. Good. Nature is healing. Nature is healing. That's how it should be. No more thigh-high horny posting in my Discord. Ketuf with 500 bits said Yar cheer 500 also, I know you are for the Horde, and I know your opinion on the Alliance or, Free Honor, how you call them, but what about the rather neutral Pandaren chilling on Pandaria? Which faction do they choose when they leave? Do they choose Horde? Or do they choose Honorable Kill? They have to make a choice eventually. If they don't make a choice, I don't give a shit. They can stay over there. What if they don't leave? Eh, let them sit there. That's fine. Dom Origato 137 with 500 bits said I recently started to owl use my new pressure cooker and have made some owl good stuff. I'm currently hmm. COO owl cooking with it. At least it hasn't exploded. Yeah, not letting it explode is probably for the best, to be honest with you. Uh, it's always a really scary thing with pressure cookers, as I, I'm afraid of them, generally, but I, I use them all the time, and the reason why I use it all the time is because they're, they're just good. They're so good for stuff, frankly. Let me pull this up. So we've got... Where's our hunter? There we go. So Hanzo... Our hunter is now going to be over here. We've got corrupted essences on these. I think we need to do essence corrupted for this. Instead of making it go through repair powder. I think it should be essence corrupted. Yeah. So the real question is this. For block game players out there, I don't know how much corrupted essence I want to release for animated bones. I actually don't know. 
I'm not sure how much is appropriate because animated bones are kind of a rare drop. But I don't think it should be more than a dungeon material. So I might do it where it's like one animated bone to one corrupted essence. Maybe. I'm not sure yet. Because right now... Right now, if you're doing this... Essence Corrupted for Lobster Soul is 1 to 4. We should probably change this 5 to 20. That way it costs less currency overall. 1 bone, 3 essence? No, that's too much. Because Lobster Souls, which only drop out of Sunken Cell's bosses, that's 1 to 4 on those. So that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. <sighs> yeah, I heard about the Baltimore Bridge Collapse. I haven't looked into it. Thank you very much for those gifted subs, by the way. The Varian. Ten gifted subs is wild, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, it looks like a cargo ship ran into it. What the hell, man? How did that even happen? They normally have, like, traffic control for all that shit. DNB Panda with 11 gifted subs. Thank you very much, dude. That's incredibly nice of you. Holy crap. Like, this is really surprising. Lost power mid-turn. No way. If that's actually the thing, they... <laughs> I'd be interested to know what comes up in research, but if that's actually the thing, that's awful. Yeah, I don't know how many people died yet either, they don't know. They're still doing research. They're still doing research. I think the other thing that's really scary this week is the United States government actually opened a criminal probe into the Boeing 737 MAX mid-flight blowout. So when that door blew outwards, they opened a criminal probe into it. Which is like... Like, what do they know? What's going on there? Yeah. That's a that's a crazy one, dude. Yeah, the CEO stepped down as well. Yep. Criminal negligence, exactly. So I'm I'm waiting to see what happens there, dude. Yeah. So the CEO stepped down. There was a there's a criminal negligence probe now. I'm I'm really interested to see what happens here. Yeah. Sad. Really sad about this in Baltimore, though. I don't know what time of day this happened. I'm hoping it was at a time of day where the bridge wasn't packed, you know? That's the biggest concern that I have. Is like, I don't know how many people were on the bridge at the time. Happened at 1.30 a.m. Hopefully it wasn't packed, dude. That's not really like a good transit time, so... Oh, they actually have a video of it happening. Jesus, dude. Oh, it wasn't just a piece of the bridge either. It's the entire thing. Holy shit, dude. I've only seen the still images of that. I had no idea. The whole thing just fell apart, man. No, it's a, it's a crazy civil engineering accident. That's insane. That's insane. I'm not going to show the video. I think that's disrespectful, to be honest with you. If you want to go find it on the internet, you can do so. Um, people died in that video, dude. 100%. Like, there's no way around that. Yeah. I, I think that's incredibly tragic. Honestly. I know there's going to be an investigation. They're going to try and assign blame. But, like, no matter who is blamed, no matter what comes out of that, people lost their family members to that shit. And that's really goddamn sad. Yeah, I know there's a giant ship that hits it in the video. But, like, damn, dude. Like, damn. I didn't realize it was the entire bridge. That's not even a small bridge, either. That's a massive one. So, like, I thought, I thought that was, like, a portion of the bridge went down because there's a bunch of pictures that are still images that show, like, a piece of it. I didn't realize it was, like, the whole bridge. Yeah. I'm also interested, like, what is the way around? So, like, 
in many cases, a major bridge like that is the only throughport for people who are, are driving. So like, yeah, 1.2 miles of bridge. So there's, is there any, is there any like way around? I believe there's a tunnel. Okay. You know, it's crazy. It's actually crazy. It was closed currently for construction. Wait, the bridge was closed? Is that what you're saying? Because if that's true, that's a very good thing. Was the bridge closed? It was partially closed, so not fully closed. Bridge was not closed. You can see cars. I didn't look at it closely enough. Fake? Shut up. You're dumb. Workmen were on it. Yeah, I'll look into it more and find out. I know we're going to find out numbers and stuff, but it's just sad. It's really sad overall. Three civilian cars and seven construction workers are missing. Damn, dude. Uh, Al Jazeera? I actually, I don't know how Al Jazeera is doing in terms of news reporting. They used to be pretty unbiased, but that was a long time ago. And I haven't looked into it. I haven't looked into their news in a while. So I, used to, I used to read Al Jazeera all the time. It was great. It used to be like a really unbiased news source. They're definitely are not. Yeah, they used to be. The reason why I used to like them a lot, Al Jazeera specifically, is because if I go and read a report in Al Jazeera, it would be like, here is what has happened. Here are the numbers. Goodbye. <laughs> like, And that's all it was. And uh, it, once they start getting into things like opinion pieces, it just kind of goes to shit, frankly. I hate opinion piece. I just want to know the numbers. I want to know the math. I want to know the, what happened and then walk away. Yeah. I, I usually hit a lot of different a lot of different news sources. So I'll hit stuff in like uh, French news. I'll hit US news. I'll hit um, British news. I'll hit you know Al Jazeera. All kinds of different things. Because if you get a wide range of different news sources, you can start to form more of a complete picture, I find, many times. Because if you just hit one source, you're usually just getting one kind of bias. And if you hit all of them, you get all kinds of different kinds of bias, which starts to give you a better idea, generally. Yeah. Philip DeFranco is really good. He does the same thing. He pulls a lot of different stuff. The U.S. has Al Jazeera. Yeah, I can access Al Jazeera. There's nothing restricted for me. I used to read it all the time. It, it's I haven't seen it in a while. I, I try to stay away from news sources most of the time now. I try to look at videos that individuals take, posting on YouTube, content that is generated from people that are actually there, and then form opinions based on what is provable in that respect, instead of kind of a weird doctored spin from whatever news source it actually is because it ends up being a lot of opinion which sucks i don't like that shit i'm not really interested in in a talking head's opinion i'm interested in actually what's happening there there is an objective reality in there you know how do you value the videos are real that used to be a lot easier than it is today it used to be usually it's like different angles different camera angles the wide source of information if you can only find one copy of that video from one source ever and they're just all repeating the exact same one source video even though it's a mass event, it's probably bullshit, generally. Like, if you're having a mass event in a major city with all kinds of different things going on, hundreds and hundreds of people involved, you're going to have more than one video, right? That's just kind of how that goes. People are saying that Al Jazeera has bias now. I haven't read it in a long time, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of it, dude. Yep. Does objective journalism exist? Yeah, but it's boring, is the problem. So the reason why there's so much bias in the news is because it's more interesting. It gets people worked up. They want to engage with it. So because of that, it generates more ad revenue. Because it generates more ad revenue, it's more profitable. Since it's more profitable, they do it more. It's the bias makes people engage more. Clickbait makes people engage more. So objective journalism ends up just being, hey, here's what happened. Goodbye. And people are like, ah, it's boring. It, sensationalism drives it. It's kind of how it works, man. It's how it's always worked. It's been that way for a long time. And it's it's sad because it slowly moves towards more and more sensationalist viewpoints. It like leans more and more towards opinion piece mattering over objective reality. And I'm just not into it. I've never been into it. I think it sucks. Business model shit, dude. Yep. This went dark? Nah. Necessary boring is good. I like boring. Yeah, I'm into boring and stuff. How's O'Shawn doing? I think I think we're winning it. Let me go look. 
Yeah, we're winning it in the next 14 hours. So it's a hell of a long liberation for sure. Definitely sign on and hit it if you if you want to help. Yeah. Yep. All right. Ugh. I'm trying to think of what we're going to do with this. I think I want to increase the amount of Essence Corrupted from Lobster Souls. We're going to make that 8. And then we're going to make this down here probably 1 Animated Bone to 2 Essence. Sock Channel successfully devolved? Into what? Did it devolve or evolve? No, this is evolved. Yeah, this is fully evolved. Yeah, no, this is good. This is good. It's people posting images of their cup noodle socks. And stinky socks. And weird toe socks. Yeah, it's terrifying. I love it. It's perfect. It's exactly what it should be. No longer horny baiting thigh highs in that channel. Channel is fixed. Fixed. Sounds like a weird fetish channel now? You sound like a weird fetish channel. Now what are you gonna do? Ivy's off the annihilator with 500 bits said yard cheer 100 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 hey Thor, Ivy again. Writing to say oh. I haven't gone to sleep since the start of your last stream. Oh, Loving heartbound and being an absolute goblin. That's that's 24 hours, my dude. Go to bed. Jesus. Holy shit. Alessandro Belli with 20 euros said hey Thor. Excited about your game jam? I promised my team, artist plus musician, 300 euros each plus shares. Wow. A virus stopped me for a month. Couldn't pay or participate, causing guilt. Oh. One artist doesn't talk to me. How to overcome this? I mean, the only thing you could do is tell them, like, hey, this is what's going on. Um, I'm sorry. You know, and if they don't if they don't like you after that, if they can't get over it, then they can't get over it. You know? That's kind of all that that is. And it's it sucks. I'm sorry that that's happening, but that is... That's all that you can do. Is communicate with them. And if they don't like it, then they don't like it. You know? Helldivers 2 just patched. Fixes game no longer freezes. Oh god, wait. Game no longer freezes when firing arcs from the following arc thrower, arc shotgun, and Tesla tower. We love to see it. We, lo we love to see it, Jeff. We love to see it. We love to see it. I'm happy with that. This is democracy time? It will be. It will be soon. It will be soon. We are definitely going to play this today. Most definitely. Democracy. We use arc weapons now? I mean, yes. Those are the weapons I was using until they broke the video game. You, used, you learned yesterday to move sprites with Python. You're using Pygame. That's awesome, dude. Hell yeah. I've almost, I've almost got my voice back, by the way. Almost. It's still a little bit scraggly. A little bit weird. But it's getting there. I'm happy about that. Almost there. Just a little bit scraggly. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's like 95% there. They ever fix armor? Yeah, but it's not good. Just use light armor. Because I can't sound like I want to all of the time. Just sometimes. Which sucks. So. Hell Upline with the 10 gifted subs. Thank you very much, dude. All right, let's see. I keep hitting this. Taunts with 500 bits said, Yard cheer 500 to be fair. I have no choice than to watch your streams via YouTube because Twitch is blacklisted in my office network. That's kind of interesting. I wonder why. Weird.
material. Zombie. Zombie leather. Zombie leather. Animated bone. Zombie leather. Also, I may change something today. I may change something. I think I'm going to. Where's my consumables? So I was thinking about changing something in this. Um, the time on these for the furnace is 400 right now for cooking bread. The smoker is 200 and the campfire is 600. I may reduce the timing for cooking stuff. I might. I don't know yet if I want to, but I might. And I've been thinking about this a lot. And it's mostly because it's like a single bucket of lava comes out to 50 foods. Yeah, the campfire is really good, but it makes a different kind of food. For bread, it makes the same kind of bread. But for different things, it does that. My bread factory is slow. Use campfires. Campfire bread factory is great. The intention was you guys use fuel, but people just use lava buckets anyway. <laughs> leather is made by the tanning process. That means zombies need to be British for leather to drop because they drink tons of tea with tannins. Who made you this way? Why are you like this? Yeah, I know. Helldivers got pashed. I'm really excited about it, actually. Go play the shit out of it. Go play the shit out of it. Also, the ferrets crashed, which is also good. Asazi's already tanned all year round. That's because you guys have the sun. We don't have the sun here. I might make whole wort bread better. And I might make a new thing called a bread bowl. That might be fun. Hmm. Hmm. Is Washington, D.C. in Washington? No, that's the other side of the country. You put soup in the bread bowl? Yes, that'd be the idea. I might do that. I'm waiting for the ads to be over. Give us heartbound on Android? Not not planned right now. Doesn't feel good on mobile. That's the problem. <laughs> Thor trying to open a Panera bread? Maybe I will. Watch me. Ads are not over yet. They're over for you. Now they're over. See? Ostrich the Odd with 500 bits said good evening Goblin King Thor. Good evening. I was hoping to get some advice. In a job interview, what is a good response when asked how much money you want to make? It always feels like such a loaded question. It's because it is. If, if anybody ever says how much money do you want to make, my response is how much are you willing to give me? Because they know it's a dumb shit question. 
So I give a dumb shit answer. That's how that goes every time. Every single time. I hate that question. I think that question is useless. So, I give a useless answer. I always have and I always will. Because it's dumb. Yeah, ask a, good, a dumb question, get a dumb answer. I hate that question. I think that if you if you were hiring anyone out there and you say, how much money do you want to make? No. Don't ask that question. That question is a waste of yours and the candidate's time. You're not learning about anything about them as a candidate at all. There are general standards or pay for every one of these positions. You make an offer to them and they accept it or they counter it. You don't ask them what they're willing to be paid. Dumb. Yeah. What they're trying to do is trick you into saying that you're worth less than you are. With a lack of understanding of the general cost of your position in the market. It's a shit question. Hate that question. Deviant Cal with 500 bits said, Thor, I love what you're doing for the gaming community. Much love. Thank you very much. It's very nice of you. You're awesome. Candy underscore husband with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, have you Hi. heard of Snake Discovery on YouTube? They no. do animal conservation and rehabilitation in a similar vein to what you're doing with the ferrets, but they finally go the facility snake, up. Snake discovery. Let me go look this up. That sounds awesome. Oh, wow. They have a whole website up for this and everything? Whoa, dude, look at this. Holy shit, that's so cool. They have an entire facility for this, and look how nice it looks. Look at this. Look at that. That looks awesome, dude. That is really neat. That is really neat. I'm going to link you guys to this website. Yeah, the website might be going down because there's so many of you, but like, check this out. This is really cool. This is actually really cool. What we're trying to do is we're building a... Oh, no. I just wanted to show you the cool snakes. I just wanted to show you the cool snakes, chat. I just, I just wanted to show you the cool snakes. They're so cool. The website was so cool. Oh, man. Well. Guess it's dead. Yeah, no, it's super dead. Well, anyway, let me go find their YouTube. I found their YouTube. Ah, I can't bring this one down, nerds. There you go. I think this is actually really neat. I think this is awesome as hell. Um, they've got a ton of videos for like their snakes and like interacting with them and uh, talking about different types of snakes, all kinds of things. Saving, saving different snakes as well. So it looks like they have a surgery here for removing a sticky trap off of a snake. That's awesome as hell. These are great. These videos are fantastic. Good for them. Really good for them. Sites back up, not surprised. So like this is this is awesome as hell to me. Because there's definitely a real and present need to help snakes and like rescue snakes, just like there's a real and present need to help ferrets and rescue ferrets. What they have going on right now is where I want us to be in a year. Like our ferret rescue, this is what I want it to be in a year is to have all these types of videos, have all this kind of stuff going on, being able to build all this stuff out and like have have people being really interested in having, having the rescue fully built. So like, that's awesome as hell. I love to see this. This is great. Yeah, I want my website to be dead in a year. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's very cool though. Thank you for showing me that. Seriously. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. You should play Bitburner. Bitburner is not really a game about hacking. It's more about automation. I'd rather play Greyhack, personally. Yeah. Bitburner's cool. There's nothing wrong with it, but I, it's just an automation game for me, frankly. Yeah, I know the Arc Weapon patch is live, dude. I'm going to play it later. We're going to play the shit out of it. I'm super excited for it. Golden Diamond 17 with 500 bits said, Yar, cheer 500, hey Thor. Have hey. you heard of a game called Killer Frequency? 
It's a game where you play the role of a late night radio talk show host who has to act as a 911 operator to try and save callers from a serial killer. That sounds awesome. I think awesome. it would be a great game to see you play at some point if you're interested. Killer Frequency is a first person horror puzzle game set in 1987. That's when I was born. That puts you in the role of a late night radio talk show host in a small town in America whose callers are being stalked by a mysterious killer. That's cool as shit. Well, you're old, thanks, bud. It'll happen to you. Okay, that's really, really cool. The interfaces kind of remind me of... Have you ever heard of... Uh, what is that game called? Not for Broadcast. Has anyone ever heard of Not for Broadcast? Yeah, I'm going to link this in chat. Is Team 17 overcooked? I think it might be. Let me look it up. Not for Broadcast is amazing. Let me see what else they did. Undead Inc. Yeah, they're overcooked. The team that did Overcooked is doing this. Wild, dude. Awesome job. Came out in June. Or it's coming out in June. Oh, no, it came out in June 2023. Oh, God, I thought it was still 2023. Oh. You're a worm, little ham. You're five worms. You know that? Yeah. Yeah. But no, this is cool, man. This is actually really awesome. This is awesome as shit. I love this art style, too. The art style does remind me of Not For Broadcast. I love this kind of, like... <laughs> that font is... I want to believe. I want to believe. I want to believe. Yo, this cool one with 500 bits said, man. I wish my schedule aligned better with your stream. Oh. I can always tell I've stayed up too late when you go live, haha. -ha. I really hope you'll play Deep Rock Galactic on stream one of these days. I will. No, I I'd will love be. to join you. Well, I need to be going to bed now, so I'll be asleep when you get to this TTS, but I'll be back in the morning. Well, good night, Got very dude. little else going on today. Until good then, night. have a great stream. Yarchir500. Thank, Thank you very, very much. That's very nice of you. You're awesome, dude. Alright, let me think about this. I kind of want to do this in, like, higher packs on this. Because we've got 64 Cursed Sand that comes out to 16 Essence. But we've got Lobster Souls that are 1 to 8, which is a little bit shit. So, if we did 32 for 4, that might make more sense. Let me think about this. Let's do 16 for 2. That might be better. And in this one, we want this to be 16 essence and 16 essence. So it's going to be 8 and 8. Because that way it cuts down the amount of currency, like coin, that they have to spend per transaction. Which is the important part here, because it's just too much. That's the big concern that I was having, is that they were spending too much coin. This doesn't feel good otherwise, you know? It won't feel good to, to use that, if that's the case. Where's our hunter? 50 burger? You're a burger, dude. 10 burgers. At least. Alright, let's see here. We'll do this. Pop that down there. What is the actual animation going to be? Maybe we'll put it up there and there? Maybe we'll just put them down here? Maybe here and here? So this will be... What is Corrupted Essence on this one? That's 30. So this is going to be 39, 48. So do 48 and 50. That should work. These are both saved. There we go. Zombie leather and animated bone. Done. Ugh, one sec.
Sorry about that. It blew my nose, dude. It's getting grim. All right, let's see. Zombie leather and animated bone and a corrupted essence. We're we using model engine? No. Why is the code green? Uh, it's easier for me to read. <laughs> it's literally the reason. Yeah. Yeah. Spare time underscore gamer with 500 bits said ya cheer 500 good morning Thor. Multiple questions for you over two to three cheers. Oh God. First off, as you maybe remember him leaving the company, they yes. are trying to stir trouble. I'm yes. doing all I can that my lawyer advised me to, but they try yep. to give me work I can't handle and then blame me. Any tips on how to say no without sounding him refusing work, which would also be grounds for trouble. You need to discuss that with your lawyer. You are currently under legal like constraints with that stuff. You need to go to your lawyer and say, hey, this is what they're doing. This is what they're trying to do to put me into this situation. All of this is down to your lawyer at this point. It is all legal. Everything is legal at this point. You've already retained your lawyer. You're in a situation in which your business is trying to put you into legal, a legally bad position. And your lawyer is going to help you out with that. So, like, legitimately, best thing you can do is reference your lawyer with all of this. Anytime you feel any of this stuff, anytime you think any of this stuff is going in the bad direction, anytime you think that your business is, the business is trying to trap you, you need to talk to your lawyer. 100%. A bunch of tree with 500 bits said apology submitting yeah. TTS now and planning to catch response later. Log As a friend of too. Hotel California, without sarcasm, a goal of mine is to create the opportunity to karaoke the title track with you. Notwithstanding, are you a fan of Steely Dan? The yeah. Caves of Altamira is an amazing call to creativity I appreciate. Peace. Chat. Don't look up why the name. You will learn too much. That's true. Thanks again don't look for it up. everything. Don't look it up, but yes. That's cool as hell, man. Thank Spare you. time underscore gamer with 500 bits said ya cheer 500 second question is, in planning to get another PC. You often use another PC to keep your network private. Could you share how to set up a 2% streaming setup with focus on stability? I think I might put out a guide for that. Like some portion of the website to be like, this is how you set up a 2 streaming setup. Because I have a section of develop.games that's going to be there for streamers. So I might, I might end up doing that. I mean, like, here's how to set up 2 streaming setup. Like 2 PC setup, right? Because, like, it's definitely something that's really useful. It's really, really useful to do. It's not for everybody. It is expensive to do, comparatively, because you have two machines, but it is definitely worth it. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll do it that way to save, let's Spare save the trouble Spare time underscore everybody. gamer with 500 bits said ya cheer 500 and last question. A penny for you thoughts on the whole Sweet Baby Inc. Gamergate drama. So everything that I've been seeing with the Sweet Baby Inc. stuff, I, I kind of looked into it cursorily. There may be more evidence and information out there, but what it seems that, like, is there's a company that is for hire, and that company for hire goes and adds a lot of diversity stuff to games. And people don't like those diversity quotas a lot of the times. They get upset because it gets added to the game, which is fine, right? You can like it or dislike it. It's kind of irrelevant to the situation. The biggest part that I care about this, this doesn't even matter, is that the companies that are involved with Sweet Baby Inc. are hiring Sweet Baby Inc. It's not that Sweet Baby Inc. is showing up and saying like, hey, you have to do this. The company is hiring them. They want this. They want that added to their games and their media. They're hiring them. It's a choice. So, like, with that being the case, I kind of don't care about this. Right? So, I don't know why, I don't know why Sweet Baby Inc. is getting all this weird hate. Because, to be honest with you, they are a company for hire. They are being hired to do this. Like. Buh. So, like, what's the problem there? I'm not seeing any issues in this. because they're openly racist, then those companies should stop hiring them. Like, I'm, I'm going to be real with you, dude. Like, if if a, if a, there's a company out there that's doing a service and all these other companies are hiring them to do that service and you don't like it, then stop getting stuff from the companies that are hiring them. Like, this, is, this, this isn't like a hard equation, right? I don't understand why we need all these, like, social media banter and wars and shit over stuff like just just don't buy stuff from those companies if you don't like them don't buy that shit it's not this isn't difficult i, I don't understand why everything turns into like a i have to you have to do this on twitter or i hate you like who gives a shit it doesn't matter just don't buy their stuff if you don't like it just don't buy it you're not for it's a video game
Like, who gives a shit? Right? <laughs> I just, I, I'm so sick of this, like, weird, weird movement in social media of, like, you have to do this. And if you don't do this, then we're not friends anymore. Cool, then we're not friends. And then they're like, wait, wait, what, what, what do you mean? I was like, oh, no, I, just, I don't give a shit. If you're going to take a hard stance like that, we're not going to be friends anymore. That's how that works. I just don't care. I don't care at all. Right? Like, this... Play stupid games. Like, that's that's how that goes for me. Because, like, dude, it, it is it is irrelevant to your life. Don't get caught up in the TMZ bullshit of life. Focus on doing cool shit. Focus on doing cool shit. Like learning something and making things. Not on having banter on social media. What? Who wins there? You? No? You just wasted a shitload of time. Wasted a shitload of time and you're not getting that back. Who gives a shit about this? It doesn't matter. You don't like it? Stop buying it. It's weird. It's a waste of time. Play Tech Games with 500 bits said as oh. one who works graveyard. I greatly appreciate you, YouTube Thank streaming. You. Thank you. 777. Thank you yeah, I like to be real with you. So they worked on Helldivers? Did they actually work on Helldivers? Do you see anything in that game that is a problem for you? Really? See how little I give a shit about this? <laughs> like, like, I literally don't even care. I literally don't care. There's always going to be people that get, like, up in arms about all kinds of shit, man. They get all up in arms and like, oh, no. Oh, no, this, this game was made by people in a part of the world that I don't like. This game was made by people that, that have a, you know, a sexual identity that I don't like. I don't give a shit, dude. Is the game fun? I don't, I don't give a shit who made it. Is the game fun? That's what I care about. Iron Mouse, with a raiding party of 6,903. What is up? Oh my god, the raid. Chat, bongos. Bongos. The bongos, chat. It's the only way. You have to save us. Save us with bongos. Oh god, there's so many of them. There we go. There we go, the bongos are coming through now. Iron Mouse, thank you very much. It's incredibly nice of you. I'm almost over being sick. My voice is almost back. It's getting there. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. But thank you, Mouse. Thank you very much. Hope you're having a wonderful day. By the way, Mouse, did you see? They did it. They updated the Helldivers. They fixed the arc weapons. They're fixed now. Yes. Very excited about it. They finally fixed the arc weapons, dude. It's good. It's a good day. They said, support incoming. We've issued a patch for players that addresses the freezing caused by arc weapons. Hey, hey, hey. Game no longer freezes when firing arcs from the falling. Arc thrower, arc shotgun, and Tesla tower. Hey, hey. We can go back to shooting lightning at each other. I'm excited for it. But seriously, thank you very much. You guys are awesome. Thank you for the raid. Cool as hell. Awesome W community, dude. It is time for democracy. Not yet, though. Soon. Soon. Soon I get to go back to being a lightning lad. Very excited for it. Although I will tell you, I'm probably going to keep using the the Laz scythe. Is it the scythe or is it the other one? Whatever it is. The machine gun light, uh, the machine gun heat weapon. Sickle. That's what it is. Laz sickle as my main weapon. I'm probably going to keep using that. It just rips apart hunters so easily, dude. There's no reason not to use it. So, like, yeah. Would you raid Doig and Swift sometime? Yeah. I like Doig and Swift a lot. They're good buddies of mine. Two hours left in the executive order? We're going to win it. No problems there. N next major order is something I'm interested in. We'll probably get on once the next major order goes through, because they'll likely do it today. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. This is actually a known issue. Stratagem Beam may attach itself to an enemy, but it will deploy to its original location. Yes! I'm so glad that's a known issue. Because it felt so bad. It felt so bad. Yes. Yes! Oh, it happens all the time. Drowning in deep water with a Vitality Booster equipped puts Helldiver in a broken state. 
What? <laughs> exosuits sometimes will be delivered in a damaged or broken state. You know what my favorite exosuit drop-in was so far? The exosuit ship comes in and drops the exosuit on a bile titan and kills it. And then also the exosuit exploded. It was great. It was wonderful. I think we have a clip for it as well. It was so goddamn funny to watch. I was like, well, guess it's delivered. <laughs> Did its job, you know? Like, that's it. It's pretty good. Oh, happened to me. It's like, you dropped in water, but you're dead, but you're not. That actually happened to me before as well. I didn't know what caused that. I had to have an ally shoot me. Yeah, let me find this. There we go. Is this the one? There we go. Here's the walker. <laughs> Just look at it go, dude. Just like, here it goes. It's coming in, dude. Blap. <laughs> I guess it did its job, right? You know, like, that's fine. That seems fine. Yeah. Central, please fly into the Bile Titan. Thank you. Thanks for doing that. It was much more powerful than a 500 kilogram bomb, too. That is true. Exploded when it landed, yeah. It's just so funny, dude. Oh, uh, it's such a good game. It's such a good game, dude. Oh, man. Car it's underscore Sobin with 500 bits said, Hi, you Thor. Quick Hello. question that I thought of after seeing your short on using places other than Patreon due to how large of a cut Patreon takes. Yes. Between Patreon, Patreon alternatives, bits, subs, donation, or whatever, which is the best way to support a streamer when limited on funds or having too many streamers to watch at a time? I just wonder due to fees and other things on the side how much of my money is actually going to the people who I want to support. So Have a great stream. Generally the way that it works is like this. So uh, if it is a larger streamer, we will likely have the, uh, what is it? It's not Partner Plus anymore. It's called the Plus Program, which means 70% of your sub goes to the streamer. But it's not actually 70%. So, like, usually when somebody gets a 50-50, they're not actually getting 50-50. They're usually getting about 40% because there's payment processing fees that get taken out of this. So it's more like 60% on average. Usually it's about 60%, right? So that's kind of the way that it goes for a sub. In terms of bits, bits is 71% at the minimum and 82% of your donation at the top end. The way that this works is as you buy more bits, if you get 25,000 bits, you get a better cut on them, so 82% of your donation goes through to the streamer. It's kind of interesting. It's still called Partner Plus for a few days. Oh, is it actually? Well, I mean, it's going for Partner Plus to Plus Program, which means it's still the PP Program, no matter what. There's no, there's no getting rid of the acronym of PP for it, which is great. It's very funny. So this is kind of how it goes for bits. That being said, the best thing you can do to support a streamer, especially if you're limited on funds... Don't worry about it. Just watch them. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but there's two reasons for this. One, if you watch a streamer, it helps them push up higher in the category that they're in. And number two, the ad revenue from that stream is actually not small at all. The best thing you can do is watch them. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Seriously. And if you watch a lot of different streamers on the platform, get turbo. And the reason why is you will never have ads again but the streamers still get money as if you watched the ads. Which is huge, dude. And we can actually see how much that's worth, too. We can actually see how much it is on our on our you know, our stuff, like on our on our earnings page. I can see how much I'm making off of Turbo specifically, which is not a small amount. It's a lot, actually. It's quite good. It's like five percent of my income is turbo. That's not tiny. That's big. It's really big. So like, yeah. Seriously, keep in mind this stuff. What is Turbo? Turbo is like YouTube Premium. So YouTube Premium is the same as Turbo. You basically don't get ads anywhere on the platform, but the streamers still get money as if you watched ads. It's a big deal. So like here, I'll go to, like if we go to my channel, right? And I'll hide this stuff. I'll hide the chat and everything. See up at the top right corner of the screen? Let me pull this up. Oh God, there's a million of me. Oh God, I gotta pause it. Stop it. No. Oh. You see this right here? This is Manage Turbo. Yours will say something like, go ad free or some shit. I don't know why they made this button so tiny and stupid. It is, it is completely ignorable the way that it is. That's turbo. 
if you get that, it's a sub to all of Twitch, and you will never have ads again on any channel. Ever. They should make it purple. They should make it purple and glow or some shit, dude. I don't know why it's so, like, muted and tiny and weird. They, like, hide it in the armpit of the website. Like, give it some pizzazz, man. Like, do something with it. <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't, I don't get it. But no, it, it literally makes the entire platform ad-free, and the streamers still get money as if you watch the ads, which is not small. Where is it on mobile? I have no idea on mobile. Sorry to say. Oh, here's another thing, too. Don't buy bits and subs on mobile. Use the web browser on your phone. Don't buy it through the mobile app. And the reason why is because the platform, not, not Twitch itself, but the platform for that mobile platform, adds another 30% surcharge on top of it. It makes it dramatically more expensive. And you're not paying Twitch with that. You're not paying the streamer with that. You're paying that platform with that. Like Apple and Google. Yeah. So, like, these are the kind of things. But, like, to be real with you, just watch, dude. You don't have to worry about that shit. Don't ever worry about that shit. Just be there. But up, Prime Subs? Prime Subs always get 50-50. Uh, they are not affected by the Plus program. And they also are subject to payment processing fees. So, they are the lowest earner out of everything. Which is interesting, but also they get you ad-free, so like, use them, you know? In Android, you can process payment by yourself? What? You are not a payment processor, what are you talking about? You don't get emotes with Turbo? True. That is the one thing, if, like, here's, here's the big one, if you want emotes, then sub. If you want emotes, then sub. If you want... Is Prime not ad-free? No, Prime is ad-free, yeah. If you have Prime, definitely. But if you, if you want emotes, sub or use Prime, 100%. Absolutely. Usually the way I feel about it is like for subscribing, I do it if I want the emotes for the channel. I do if I want to show support for that person, right? But in reality, the best way you can support is just watch them. Just watch that streamer, man. Can we just send cash? No. No. Don't worry about that. Is having someone sub or watch through Turbo more beneficial for the streamer? It depends. I stream a lot of hours. So, like, ad revenue is a lot on this channel. But, like, to be real with you, I wouldn't worry about it too much. As long as you're here, it's cool. And look, it's it's ads time. It's Bezos. There he is. Yeah, Bezos himself. How good are gifted subs? They're the same as normal subs. So, if you gift a sub, it's the same. So, like, uh, with the Partner Plus program or whatever it is, it's 70%. It's crazy. Little ham nom nom. With the five dollars to the moderators, thank you very much. To be honest with you, if you if you really want to support what I'm doing, two things you can do. If you really want to throw money, throw it to the mods instead through the Pally GG system. None of that goes to me; it goes to the moderators. Awesome thing to do. Number two, just be here. Watching the channel is all you need to do. So thank you. VTubers claim they can't come to your house? Mm, I don't know, dude. Let me see. <laughs> Wait a minute. Guys, the flesh tubers fear us as they should. God damn it, dude. <laughs> One sec. We'll play this after the ad break. That's funny as hell, dude. in a second it's very good I actually got an ad thank you Bezos yeah Lord Bezos Lord Bezos don't fear Iron Mouse she can't approach your location she'd send drones I feel like she'd send drones they're probably already on their way <laughs> she'd send monkey nice return to monkey should send Connor. Oh, I just have mines. That'd be fine. I have I have a defense against Connor. That's fine. Just mines. Mines everywhere. It's perfect. Should send Germa. Don't say that. That's rough. How dare you? Oh, so this is very funny. 
Realize something horrifying is that if you piss off a VTuber, they can both be on stream and running directly at your house at maximum speed at the same time, and you would never know. That terrifies me. It's true. a superpower we don't have in the rest of the streaming world, and that scares the shit out of me. Hey, yeah, uh, Thor. Buddy. I forgot one thing, though. No VTuber has ever touched grass. That's what we call an alibi. It's not true. The VTubers touch grass. Don't believe them. Don't believe it. Don't believe it at all. So, don't worry. You're safe. No, you're not. For now. Yeah, for now, no. That's not true. That's not true. It's an alibi. It's an alibi. Just throwing you off the scent, dude. Throwing you off the scent. I'm linking this to you. Go watch this person. Do it. Go watch them so that they don't rapidly approach my house. Horrifying. Truly horrifying. Don't believe it. Yeah, he said that while running towards my house. Exactly. Yeah, they do touch grass. It's a lie. It's all a ruse. It's all a ruse. VTubers are a myth. I don't think they're a myth, dude. I think they exist. Oh. What's this Twitch? I have no idea. I only know that that clip. It's a very funny clip, though. It is. You moved? Not yet. I'm in between homes. I'm in that weird interim part where you're like, I want to move into the new house, but the new house isn't ready yet. But it's gross. It's sad. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so much shit to do. And it's a nightmare. So much shit to do, chat. VTuber, yes. Aren't you a VTuber? No. No. How big is the new place? Quite big. So the house itself is very small in the new place. I'm actually reducing the house size. So house size is smaller. But the land size is much bigger. And the reason why is because on the new land, we're going to build a ferret rescue. And that ferret rescue is going to allow us to have up to 100 ferrets in the rescue instead of the 35 that we have right now. And it'll be a dedicated space for it, which means we can hire people to do round-the-clock care, which would be awesome. I'm very excited for this. Really, really excited for it. So, yeah. It's going to be good. Tomorrow, I actually have a meeting with the ISP for hooking up new internet. Uh, they have to build infrastructure for it, so it's going to take a while, you know. Why not demolish the house and build tiny homes for more land? N no. <laughs> yes, let me just throw away this asset that is already there and built and finished so that I can spend more money to build the same thing but tinier. N no. What? No. Thank you for the five dollars to the moderators, by the way. You kick ass. Why only ferrets? I like them. That's the reason. How big does the house have to be? So it's not going to be a house thing. It's going to be a facility. So we're we're doing multiple rooms specifically set up for the ferrets. There's going to be a medical room. There's going to be a quarantine room. There's going to be all kinds of stuff in this. And I think it's I think it's something that's really important with that. You know, is setting it up in a way that is sustainable and is good for the ferrets. Is it true that ferrets are stinky little fellows? Usually not. If you give them a raw food diet, you're not going to have a lot of problems with that, frankly. You really won't. Yeah. Starcrossed with 500 bits said good morning, Thor. I like to create 3D animation characters from start to finish, both game and movie-wise. Do you think this is something looked for in the current game industry? Yes. If so, could you recommend any good studios where you can apply to practice in for school or work? Also, what is this? Explain mm. yourself. Worm regards again to you and love to chat. HTTPS colon slash slash www. Let me see what this is. It's a clip of me. Oh, the banana! It's peeling your hot dog. Yeah. That was me much younger. Look at that. Watch. There's no audio for you. Look at that. Look at it. You guys have never seen a raw hot dog before, have you? You never have. Unfortunate. Unfortunate! Cynical with $5 said recently transitioned from day shift to graveyard at my security oh, wait, job where the I'm the question. only one on site. Thanks for keeping me company. Aww. Much love. You're awesome as hell, dude. But yeah, so for the 3D animation characters from start to finish, both game and movie-wise, you think it's a good idea if... Do you think this is something looked for in current game industry? Yeah. Like, all the time, frankly. 3D animation, when you're talking about that, you're really talking about rigging. 
rigging artists, anybody, anytime you can find somebody who's good at rigging that enjoys it, holy shit, dude. Pay them everything. Because to be real with you, they're rare. They're incredibly rare. And if you don't realize how like beneficial that is, if you don't realize how like few people really enjoy it, you'll get into that kind of industry and you're like, oh yeah, we need somebody to do rigging. And you'll be like, wow, there's none of them. They're none of them. How hard can it be? It is incredibly tedious. It is incredibly tedious. There's actually two really interesting directions for this, right? It's very hard. And it's very tedious. So what ends up happening is if you do rigging, 3D model rigging, there are places for you in the gaming industry, but you want to know a better one right now? Go make VTubing avatars. Go be a rigging artist for hire for VTubers. That shit is so in demand right now, it is ridiculous. It is crazy in demand right now. Yeah, way ahead of you? Bingo. It is crazy, crazy in demand right now. And like, I think a lot of people who are doing rigging don't realize how big of a deal that is. Yeah, 10k for some VTuber models. Bingo. It's insane how expensive that shit is. And to be real with you, the more people that are doing it, the less those prices are going to be that high. <laughs> Maybe. Unless they unionize. Oh god. Oh god, all the rigging artists. All of them unionizing. The horror. The true horror. Or AI does it? AI doesn't do that shit good at all. You know it doesn't. That's why rigging exists. That's why people who do this exist. Yeah. Some go for 20k or more. That's true. They do. Some of them are insane. Like the cost of... Because you have to think about it this way, right? If you have a really popular VTuber, that really popular VTuber is going to be able to overcome that cost. And in some cases, major companies that are like these multi-channel networks but for VTubers actually pay for that. So they pay quite a bit of money. It's like buying a car, dude. It's like buying a new car, frankly. It's not a small amount at all. The prices are rigged. That's very funny. No, rigging artists are crazy, dude. So is rigging the making of the model? It's the animating of it, to be honest with you. So it's the, it's the animating of the models, and it is um, it is doing like the bones, it's doing the weight painting, it's doing all that kind of stuff on top of it. And it's just, it's very difficult, and it's very tedious, and not a lot of people like to do it. So if you really want to have a good job in that, go for it, right? Do that. And if you enjoy doing that kind of work, there is definitely work for you. It really is. Isn't rigging getting ready for animation? Yeah. You do rigging and animation most of the time when you're doing this stuff. Because animation is largely controlled by um, like real, real world tech stuff. So like face tracking and things like that. So rigging is just building up all of the bones and everything to make sure that it works with that. And it's like, it's a whole thing, right? Yeah, just ask Mouse about her models. Yeah, 100%. That shit is incredibly complicated. Insanely so. Yeah. Wild stuff. Yep. I love rigging, but weight painting is the most tedious part. Pay that person. Pay them a billion dollars. Do it now. Do it. Chris Jones? No, I've never seen them. I'm not I'm not into that community very much. I just realize how difficult it is. Because I've been in the games industry for so long, right? What's your opinion on Path of Exile? Good game. It's fun. Weight painting sucks. Yeah, it does. Wintry YY with 500 bits said hi. Used to be hesitant of your criticism about TikTok, but I recently got scammed out of $100 from an artist there and got videos I made removed about how they were scamming for bullying and harassment. Yep. Meanwhile, their account is doing fine. Anyways, did you know the word lich is spelled without a T because the word is borrowed from Middle English when the trigraph TCH wasn't common spelling yet? Really? The word comes from Old English word for corpse. That's kind of cool. I dig that, actually. I didn't know that at all. I dig that a lot. VTubers are just 2D furries? Sometimes. Not always. Let me pull something up. This is actually kind of kind of rough. So, Shay, Shay does a lot of art on the internet and does uh, commissions, right? Usually 2D art. And I got to see a new scam today. One that I haven't seen ever. There he is on Twitter. Shay will actually put up a thing and say, hey, this is the thing. Um, you know, please, please contact me or whatever. They're going to do like a, an auction for a character or anything like that. They go sell a, a character... The auction bids up for this thing. And then they say, hey, go and, go and contact this, right? Go and contact me here. We'll go and work out the next portion of this. There is another account that has the exact same name as Shay, except it has an underscore at the end of it. And that other account has blocked Shay, so Shay can't hide their comments because Shay can't see them. 
and they go into that thread and they say, or you can contact me at this email instead. It's a scam account. It's a scam account that's trying to get that person who bought the auction to instead give the money to them while impersonating them. And since they've blocked Shay, Shay can't see them to remove it. That shit's insane. No, it's not Elon Musk. This shit's been on Twitter since the beginning of time. It's not new. It has nothing to do with Elon. It's the platform. The platform's controls are doing this. It's really bad. It's a really, really bad one. So I can see it, but Shay can't see it. And Shay's friends had to report the damn thing. And it's not good. It's really not good. Yeah, it's a mechanic. It's an exploit with the platform's controls. So this is pretty wild to me. I feel like if you've blocked a person, you shouldn't be able to comment on their threads, right? That's That shouldn't be able to be... It shouldn't be hidden from the thread owner. Because then this shit happens. Like, that's not okay. This is forcing you to have friends or a second account. It's forcing you to have a second account. Because you can't even see it. You can't even see the message. And that's really not good. That's very not good. Yeah, it shouldn't be possible. Exactly. So, like, this is this is a pretty wild one because you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know that this was going on, frankly. And it's like, all right, well, cool scam. And it's clearly working because they go through and they make these accounts. So, like, if we go to... Let me go to Twitter real fast. Yeah, this right here. So they even took our photos of the ferrets and they made this separate account. It's just River Makes with an underscore on the end. Isn't that nuts? Isn't that shit wild, dude? Yeah. So they steal the whole account. They, they do absolutely everything on it. And then Shay had to post this. He said, hey, this isn't me. Please report this account in their post. Or else you can send me the amount to PayPal at Callisto Creamland at Gmail. We can, we can as well communicate via email. Thank you. Totally fake. It's just a scam. And it's all automated scam shit, dude. But they have to make an account to impersonate the content creator. Isn't that shit insane? It's 100% targeted. It has to be. They target it 100%. Yeah, what a weird name, right? Callisto Creamland, dude. Like, what the hell is that shit? Yeah. So what I did was I took all their information. I took everything that I possibly could. Anything that I could glean from that. And then I sent it to PayPal and I said, hey, shut down this account. <laughs> it's being used in scams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get shit on get shit on dude yeah it's pretty gross dude it's really gross watermark your photos they just steal that dude they just do the same shit doesn't even matter it's not even them stealing content it's them impersonating you watermarking doesn't change that yep Is the Twitter bot problem difficult to fix? Yeah. In fact, I think Twitter's done a really good job at, at fixing a lot of the bot issues. Um, the problem that you're seeing isn't even usually bots, right? It's not even usually bots for all this kind of stuff. They've done a lot of stuff to try and de-incentivize botting. They've done a lot of stuff to try and de-incentivize hate speech. One of the things that I thought was really interesting when Twitter first got taken over by Elon Musk is they reduced the amount of visible hate speech on the platform pretty dramatically. Because you can't get rid of it on social media. There's no way to do that. You can't get rid of people saying like the N-word or anything like that. Because they'll always find a way to do it. They'll do it through an image or they do it through Unicode or anything that they can possibly do with that. Cyclonic, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. It's very nice of you. You're awesome as hell. So they found a, a more interesting way to do this. And I think it's, I think it's actually brilliant. What they did was they said, if we identify that someone's used hate speech, we don't remove it. We just make it not so show up. It doesn't show up in timelines. So what happened was it immediately suppressed the shit out of this because it's always going to be there. People are always going to do it. But it, yeah, it's effectively like a, a limited shadow ban. So that post doesn't show up, right? So what they've done is they actually reduced the visibility of these by like 90%. And they showed a bunch of graphs for this. And I was like, that's actually a good move because you can't get rid of it. It's not possible to get rid of it. But the funny part is a lot of new sites ended up using search to search for hate speech terms. And they're like, oh, the amount of hate speech on the platform has gone up. It's clearly being used more. Because if you search it, it's still going to show up there. You can actually still find hate speech words anytime with searching. It's still, it's still going to be indexed no matter what. But by reducing the visibility of this in timelines, it goes away. And I think that's, that's a good move. That's a really good move. There's absolutely if not. There's way, way more since. If you are searching for it, yes. If you are not, then it is not. It doesn't show up in timelines. You know what my timeline is? Do you know how I've curated my own timeline? 
very easily. Let me show you something. If you go to my Twitter and I go to my timeline, all it is, the whole thing, is people talking about video games and animals. There's none of that shit in there. Do you know why? Anytime you see something like that, there's three dots. Click those. Click on the three dots on that post. Well, after you click that, you just have to sit and say, where is it? You can mute or block them. That's all you have to do. You just mute or block the person. You don't have to, you don't have to report anything. You just block it. The moment you block that shit, you're curating the timeline. Every single time. It's the same thing on YouTube. On YouTube, you can actually go to your YouTube stuff. Let me go to actually YouTube's front page. Yeah, you just block that shit. It goes away. If you go to the YouTube's front page and you click on something like this, like, let's grab a short, right? There should be... Where's the button for this? I'm going to find the button first so I can show it to you. I think you have to do it inside the thing. Yeah, here we go. You find, like, a video you don't like or something like that? Be like, oh, I don't like this video. You click on this and you click on don't recommend this channel. You train the algorithm to not show you content that is available for this. If it's stuff that's like that, you're telling the algorithm, do not show me this stuff. And it goes away. Like, I literally don't have it. You say that does not work? Then why is my timeline entirely video games and animals? Why have I not seen any of that shit in months? And I am a terminally online human being. It 100% works. That's how the algorithm works. If you are searching and engaging with that other content, if you're clicking on it and saying, I hate this, if you're putting yes or no, if you're putting upvote or downvote, you are training the algorithm to feed you more of that shit. And if you are saying, no, I actually don't want this at all, block it, or say, I, I want to de-incentivize this on my channel, it stops showing up. Do you know how we know that this works for the downvote too? Because of my Mr. Robot short. My Mr. Robot short, I shit on Mr. Robot in that. And you know what ended up happening? A shitload of people downvoted it. It's got like a 60% like ratio. But every time someone downvotes it, it spreads it to more people that like Mr. Robot because it's hashtag Mr. Robot in it. So when you downvote it, it gives it to another person who downvotes it, who gives it to another person that downvotes it. Over and over and over again. Any, any interaction on the internet, positive or negative, counts as engagement. The only thing you can do to curate your timeline is to block things you don't want to see or say... I don't want to see this. Stop showing me this kind of thing. Instantly done. Instantly done. Gone. No more problems. And I've been doing that for months. I've curated my timeline to an extent that I don't have to give a shit. The only time I ever have anything that I have to block on top of this is I have to go into any of the major tweets that I have that actually have large, you know, large amounts of viewers or anything like that. Anybody that wants to go and look at that stuff with like a huge amount of likes or anything like that. And I go to the bottom and I go, oh, look, there's a hidden section. What's in the hidden section? Nudes in bio. Every time. And it's always on, under a section. It'll be like, oh, this is hidden. Are you sure you want to see these? And I go, yeah, I would love to see pornography and racism. And I click on the, yes, I would like to see pornography and racism, and then I block them. Because that's all that's down there. It's not in the rest of it. It's only in that area that's already hidden. So yeah, they do a good job of hiding that stuff. And they give you the option to go look at it. And if you click on that shit, wow, you'll find it, just like on the rest of the entire internet. Curate your timeline, dude. I do this regularly on YouTube. Sometimes it just doesn't work for me. You just got to keep doing it. You train the algorithm over time. It takes time. It took like, I think maybe like three weeks of me doing it originally. And I'm always on the internet. I'm on there every day, right? You just join what's going on? I'm talking about curating timelines on social media. What are your muted words in Twitter? I have none. I don't have any muted words at all. <laughs> do you want to know do you want to know the most effective one you can do on Twitter, actually? Here's the most effective one. If we go to my profile, you go to the right side. You know that whole thing with like trends that are over there? Breaking news, right? All that shit. See so if I can pull this up. These ones right here. See this? Just click you're not interested in this. If you click not interested in this, that shit doesn't enter your timeline anymore. I removed everything with politics. Anything that's politics, I remove that shit. Every time it pops up, I'm like, nope, not interested in this. And everyone's like, ah, ah, my Biden, my Trump. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. It's gone. And it literally just goes away. Like anytime anything pops up, and it's like trending. I'm like, nope, nope, it's gone. And this stuff, this stuff helps curate what's in your timeline as well. 
trending feeds the timeline. So if you're sitting there removing these trends by sitting, I'm not interested in this, it removes that shit. Curate your timeline. Curate your timeline. Do it. Do it. That's how this shit works. How'd you block YouTube shorts? What do you mean, how'd I block them? What? <laughs> Barrett's in bio, dude. That shouldn't be our job? Yes, it should. Do you know why it should be your job? How is the platform going to remove that? Think about it this way. How is a platform going to proactively remove everything that offends specifically you? Oh, wait. They can't. Incredible, right? So, yes, it's your job. It is actually possible? No, it's not actually possible. Let me give you a good example. Let's say that you want to remove a racial slur. You want to remove the N-word from the internet. Well, what if I use Unicode? What if I use an image? What if I use an emote on Twitch that equates to it? There are a million different ways to, ex to express that negative thing into the internet. How does a platform possibly, like, possibly compensate for all of those different ways of doing it? We ban people doing that shit every day. There are billions of different ways of doing this. AI? AI is not going to catch all of those. You could do ASCII art for it. You could do someone alluding to it. You could do imagery for it. You could use nuance. There are so many different ways of doing this, dude. And because of that, it is not possible for a platform to do this. What you have to do is you work with the platform. The platform says, this is the basics. This is what we ban for. And you go, this is what I want to see. This is what I don't want to see. And by saying, I'm not interested in this trend, I'm not interested in this post, I want to block this kind of person, you are curating your own experience. You are creating the type of place you want to have on the internet. It is a street corner. And anyone can yell any kind of shit. It doesn't mean you have to listen to them. That's the point for that. That's how it's always been. It's the same thing here on Twitch. People got up in arms at Twitch because people were getting hate raids. I was getting hate raids on the platform. Happens all the time. Randomly a bunch of bots pile in, they say a bunch of stupid shit, right? You know what we have? This. That makes it so that you actually have to be verified on Twitch. Not a single one of the bot accounts can post anything. We can hit that in one button. And it just goes away. There's a million different tools on this platform to stop these types of things from taking place. Yep. I can click this right off. Twitch gives you all the tools to curate your experience on the platform. Even in communities where we have tens of thousands of people watching, we can control that in our own chats. Platforms give you the tools. That's what they do. What'd you click? A button on my stream deck? You can't see it. That's the point. I've turned it off now. Every time we get a bot wave, you ever seen like a bot wave come through on here and then I hit one button and then suddenly it all disappears and then all the mods ban everybody? That's the shield mode button. That's all it is. It's a feature of Twitch. You can click it in one button. It's done. So, like, to be real with you, you have the tools to make your experience on these platforms better or worse. To blame the platform for seeing a bad thing on the internet is the same as blaming some random person nearby when someone yells something at you in person. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. So, you have to curate your own experience. You have to. That is, it goes for every platform. It goes for Twitch, goes for YouTube, goes for Twitter, goes for anywhere. Anywhere at all. Anywhere. Whatsoever. So, curate your shit. Oh. Totally off topic. Do you play Half Played MTG? Oh, dude, I love Magic the Gathering. I am a, I am a, <laughs> you're gonna hate it. Blue Magic, my dude. Always Blue Magic. I don't even have to win. I just have to stop you from playing the game. <laughs> oh, God, I love it, dude. Love the shit out of it. Troy Tech with 500 bits said woodchucks chuck as much wood as a woodchuck would chuck already in spite of how much they could chuck. Mm. It's possible they aren't living up to their full chucking potential. That is Some true. Some goblins HAV been recording your food eating sounds making no, full ASMR tracks with it. No. Save tool is a powder actuated cutter, meaning blank 0.223 rounds let you cut the roof off of a car. 
What? Gave me an idea for a suit that uses a powder actuation HTTPS colon slash slash WW. What? <laughs> I'm so confused. UND3AD with $2 said opinion of Apex Finals being done off stream. I don't think Apex Finals should be done off stream. Um, I think that, to be honest with you, the way that you fix a lot of these hacking issues, the way that you fix all these things, stop doing them on public servers. Stop doing that. There's no reason for that whatsoever. If you, if you want to do a tournament, do it on a, on a LAN. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think they should honestly do that shit on LAN. Always. Yeah, I know they were. I know they were done offline, but like to be... I, I know they were done off stream, but like to be real with you, do it on LAN. There's no... There's no reason to do this on live servers. You're always going to run into problems. Whether it's offensive security related problems or whether it's it's network related problems, like do it on LAN. Seriously. Yeah. International Dota 2 is on LAN every time. That's why. Yeah. It's, it's a smart thing to do. It's a really smart thing to do. I know that it's not financially feasible sometimes because you have to fly everyone in, but it is the best way to do it, frankly. Yeah. Nice, Mox. Hell yeah. Sunglasses, dude. Yep. Gaiatrix Games with 510 bits said replace a single semicolon with a Greek question mark and watch your friend lose their mind over the syntax error. It's a pretty good one. That is the same, yeah. Semicolon and the Greek question mark are exactly the same symbol. Well, they look the same, Rad but they're Thor different Dax with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, Dax from Helldivers here. I have some huh? limericks to inflict upon your psyche. Here oh. goes. There once was a pirate named Thor, who was a game dev, a hacker, and more. Then goblins found him, and declared him their king. His insight and knowledge they adore. <laughs> Thank you for the limerick. It's very nice of you. <laughs> Rad Thor Dax with 500 oh. bits said, Hey Thor. Dax here again with another cursed limerick. Here we go, Gobbos. There once was a pirate named Thor, who returned to the place he was before. There was never a doubt that he could check out, but then he could not leave evermore. No, 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 no. God damn it. Oh. Diamond Arrow 01 with 500 bits said hello Thor. Yesterday I asked what your favorite pancrustacea was. As a biologist who knows how big pancrustacea is, I say you took the easy way out by saying there were too many. That's true. I clearly set you up to show off a bunch of weird and wonderful species. That is true. I guess I will go first as a herpetologist with the clade Sauria. Globally, the Brookesia genus is my favorite, specifically Brookesia stumpfi. In the States, it's Thamnophis sertalis tetratinia. Now, what are your favorite shrimps and bugs? Let me pull them up. We've got ads, by the way. We're going to wait for Bezos. I did, I did take the easy way out. You did set me up for a lot of really cool things, but I was like, dude, this is super wide. Yeah, there we go. Let me pull up the... Cephalodes. One sec. I'll show you my favorite. I'll show you my favorite. These dudes are rad. These dudes are rad. Cephalodes is one of my favorite things. Super weird creature. All right, I'm ready. Oh, look, it's a bot. I noticed something on your channel that I think needs to be amended. I'd love to chat with you more about it on Discord. That's a bot that's trying to get me to contact them so that they can give me view bots. That's what that is. That's a view bot bot. And they're banned now. I love seeing that. That's the funniest thing on the planet. Yeah. Those are great, dude. What bot? Deleted, dude. What if you want to viewbot someone? Uh, no, they want they want me to buy viewbotting services. So that's what that shit is. But it's, it's never beneficial. If you do something like that, you are honestly just going to get owned. There's no point to it whatsoever. You're always going to lose. Uh, engaged community is the only thing that matters. Views don't count. Views don't matter. A engaged community matters. 100%. I know there's 108 TTS messages. We've gotten through some of them. I've gotten through 44 of them. All right, so with that in mind, my favorite insect is the Cephalodes, otherwise known as the turtle ant. 
The turtle ant is weird as shit. They have a door on their head. And the way that they use this is they shield the colony away from invaders by using it like this. It's the Hodor ant, dude. They're so weird. They're so weird. Yeah, the hat boy. So some of them will actually get the shield head, and some of them won't. But they use their heads as uh, as defense. Yeah, it's like a hive guard. Exactly. Isn't that neat? They're super weird, dude. Yeah, they're super weird. Ant valve. Yeah, it's actually the... If you look at this, they'll scratch all the nearby wood so that their head is a perfect seal. It is such a tight seal it won't let air or water through. It's an airtight seal. Isn't that wild? It's crazy, honestly. And they just sit there and they're like, nope, no one's getting in. Nothing's getting in. And they can open their head, like they can just push up just a little bit to allow air and water through. It's crazy, dude. Literal five head, yeah. And like, look at it. It's just pure chitin, dude. It's an actual shield head. Love the hell out of them. They're so weird. So weird. Oh, man. Somebody's awake. What are you doing? Blah. Is that lucky? I think it might be lucky. He's chonky. Look at him. Dig, 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 dig. Dig, 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 dig. Dig, 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 dig. Want to destroy. Wish to destroy. Yeah, he's big. It's, I think it's lucky. Might be like It's hard to tell because it's in night vision mode. I have no idea. I don't know. Anyway, if you haven't seen the Ferret Software channel, here you go. go watch the Ferrets, dude. Go watch the Ferrets, dude. They're the best. Right. Biela Star 95 with 500 bits said Yar cheer 100 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 Would you ever consider looking into getting the game Foxhole by Siege Camp? Yes. We were actually talking about it earlier today. Um, I am actually going to play Foxhole. And I say that knowing full well that it's going to ruin my life now. Yep. Yep. That's it. It's ruining me. It's too late. It's too late for me now, chat. Let me think about this. Hmm. I have to play it. I have to play it, to be honest with you. It just looks so good. Polymori with $10 said, Hey Thor, for the last year I've been trying to learn to program to make my own game, but no matter what I do, I'm unable to grasp the fundamentals. Okay. Doesn't help I have poor short-term memory. Advice. Let me see. I'm trying to learn to program to make my own game, and no matter what I do, I'm unable to grasp the fundamentals. Doesn't help I have poor short-term memory. Hmm. I'm trying to learn to program to make my own game. Well, here's the thing. You don't have to learn to program to make your own game. What you have to learn is how to make games. And I know this may be a kind of an odd thing to say. Don't worry about the programming. Don't. What you should worry about is opening up the engine of your choice based on the kind of game you want to make, and then making a box move. It's not really about learning the programming itself, it's about learning something to do. I want the box to move. I want the box to jump. I want the box to shoot a bullet. And with that, you don't really have to learn programming. You just learn based on the objective you have. Objective-based learning, bingo. Because when you start doing these types of things, when you do this stuff, you realize that programming isn't really the thing you learn you learn how to do things with programming so like i think you should focus on that at first until you start doing things until you start like going and running with it and then you start learning deeper programming knowledge stuff you start learning more efficiency based stuff or physics system based stuff or anything like that but it's really about objectives first it's about simple objectives because when you really think about a video game what sets it apart from other media user input User input sets it apart from other media. That's the whole idea with that. So moving, that's 50% of a game, man. You're right there. Easy. Done. So work on that first. And it should help you with the rest of it, to be honest with you. 
And I wouldn't put yourself down and be like, oh, you know, my short-term memory sucks. That's okay. Doesn't matter. You'll find a way to adapt around it, right? Everybody does. We've all got different shit. <clears throat> Radthor Dax with 500 bits said Sup Thor. Dax Hello. back again with yet one more cursed limerick. Suffer oh. now or forever be subject to Aruku's vibro hugs. There was oh. once a pirate named Thor, who pondered the mystery of centaurs. Do they have double lungs? Between which legs are they hung? These vital questions weigh heavy in pirate lore. I hate it all. I hate everything you've just said to me. I hate every bit of it. Hate every bit of it. Hate it all. Dislikes heavily, yes. Okay, I have to add Paul. There we go. And this is going to be oak bark, I think. How many oak bark? Eight of it. Oak, spruce, birch, jungle, acacia, blah, 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 blah. I think there's eight of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, there might be seven. There may be seven of these. There are. Spruce, birch, and mangrove. Spruce, birch, mangrove. And then, what is the next one? Jungle, acacia, and dark oak. Jungle, Acacia, Dark Oak. What's with those ferrets? What's with them? Bleh. Yeah, Mangrove, dude. Sammy underscore buns with 500 bits said at Parade Software uncommon fish don't drop on death like other fish. What does that even mean? You said this in chat earlier. What uncommon fish? Put in a ticket for block game, you goblin. Put in a ticket for block it. Block it. Put in a ticket. There's a ticket for that. Ticket for that. Zero siphon zero with 500 bits said what's a curious quest? Uh, cursed quest is basically they get a quest to do something cursed. Usually involving my face and art in some way. And then after they get this, then they do it. And then chat votes on it. And if chat votes that it's cursed enough, well... Then they get a diamond. That's how we choose our VIPs. It's very funny. Alright. I think this works. I think this is going to work. I think this is going to work. Let's think about this. Hmm. The last thing we have to do now is this. Hello, Stonebeard. Do you know why I have to do this? It's going to be really interesting. The last thing that we do now is I'm going to take this right here, the rune carver. Why is that guy broken too? For some reason, skins just aren't showing up randomly. The Rune Carver actually is the one that has all of this stuff. All of that is going over to that other NPC. Artificer is staying the way that he is. So all the Rune Carver stuff is moving over to Stonebeard. And then I'm going to put armor on the Rune Carver. Which I'm excited for. Because we don't have any armor set up at all for Rune Carving right now. So today, we're going to make a whole set of gear, my dude. Whole set of gear. Very excited for it. Yeah. You're a rune? Thanks, bud. Hey, Social Lord, shouldn't you be migrating servers right now? Isn't that what your job is, dude? What she should be doing? It's a Tuesday, right? Oh, wait, no, that'll be on Friday. End of day Friday? Yeah, we'll start the migration then. You can handle it over the weekend, right? 
Yeah, good. I'll do the big goal later. I will be. BJPW93 with 7 Australian dollars and 99 cents said when doing offensive security, is there a risk that other hackers can find you working in a system that you have accessed? Yes. It's rare, but it can happen, yeah. Really interesting. I don't want more Spy Kids, no! Is Block Game a Minecraft MMO? Yes. Yes. Tuck Fard McNutt with $10 said, What's the worst recursive loop you've experienced in a deployed environment in game dev? Hold up, what I'm is a your name? Range, and one of my analysts almost sent a kernel toaster by me today. Thought I'd ask. Your last name is McNutt. <laughs> and his first name is... Tuckfard. What is his name, dude? Tuckfard McNutt. What a name, dude. I'm impressed. The worst recursive loop you've ever experienced in a deployed environment in game dev? Actually, I think the worst possible recursive loop I've ever seen isn't even in game dev. Let me pull this up. It's called the repulsive grizzly attack. And it was created, accidentally, by the Primogen. In Netflix. <laughs> Primogen is both the best and the worst programmer I have ever met. <laughs> this is because of him. Insane, honestly. Yeah, it's very funny. It's very funny. Can you sum it up real quick? Yeah, basically he could, he could bring down all of Netflix because his code was recursively checking values. That's the best way that I... It's a very simplistic way of putting it. But if you want to read through the, the white paper here on everything that it was doing, it's very funny. Yeah. Genius and dumbass merging into one. It's a funny moment. But yeah, no, it was, it was just basically recursively checking values. Horrible thing. Horrible thing. FranCam114 with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, long time uh. listen, first time TT sir. You mentioned you love Sandbox MMO, was yes. wondering if you played one of my favorite games ever, Star Wars Galaxies, and if you can share any memories from it. No. Worm regards. Is Star Wars Galaxies in a, a social sandbox MMO? Is it actually? I don't think it is. Is it? Really? I didn't realize that. Yeah, I know I never played it. I played SWOTOR. But I didn't play Star Wars Galaxies. SWOTOR I found to be very, very fun. And um I I kind of miss the way that it was originally. I played a Sith. And the reason why is because I wanted the really cool sword. I wanted the red sword. But there was something that happened when SWOTOR came out that actually deeply upset me. And uh it made me eventually move away from the game. I, I can't remember which version of Sith that I played, but it was like the the warrior version, right? The problem that I had is if you went down the list of spells in Swotor, they had not only copied every single one of the spells from the warrior at, of World of Warcraft at the time, they copied all of the values. It was the exact same damage ranges. It was the exact same ranges for spells. It was the exact same cooldowns. Everything was exactly the same. And it wasn't like a little bit the same. It was exactly the same values. And I was like, dude, this is kind of gross. And it kind of made me move away from the game. Yeah. It was only that one, too. The other ones didn't have that. It was just that one. And I was like, dude, like, why? Like, why? And that was at launch. I played it a lot at launch, too. But it was it was really kind of... A, it gave me a gross feel. Yeah. Fast way to balance? It's just gross. It's a gross thing. It's a gross way to balance. You know? It was Swotor. Yeah, Star Wars The Old Republic. I played the shit out of Star Wars The Old Republic, though. Yeah. 
It was just kind of weird. The game itself was really fun. I, I enjoyed the shit out of it. But to be real with you, yeah, inspiration of WoW, just a little bit too much inspiration. That's not inspiration at that point. That's direct, that's direct copy-paste, dude. That's like, hey, copy my homework and change it a little bit. And then you're like, oh, wait, I didn't change it at all. Right? Like, that's what that is. Yeah. They All the values were exactly the same. It wasn't even, like, like nearly the same. They were exactly the same. It was grim. Grim and weird. E. Was that 5,000 bits for the letter E? <laughs> Codenota Bear with 500 bits said I'm in my second year of a CS degree and taking my first game dev class. It's insanely nice. Never would have had the courage to commit to this path without you. Oh, dude. Thanks for being an inspiration. You kick ass. Thank you very much. Seriously. Tara Goth with 500 bits said never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. That's right. I probably will, though. Just wait and see. It'll happen. Eventually. Please bring back Wildstar. Dude. I played a true spell slinger in Wildstar. I beat the entire game. I was very into Wildstar. It had a huge amount of problems. It had a massive, massive amount of problems, dude. And it wasn't just one thing. It was a lot of things. And like, I'm kind of sad about it because it was such a cool world. It was a really interesting world. But it just, they had too many design flaws. They had a shitload of design flaws. I'm sad about it, frankly. Tim Kane talked about it on his YouTube channel. What did he talk about? I'm actually really interested. Yeah. Community Wildstar server project on GitHub. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I want more MMOs without tab targeting too. I do. It was just, it was supremely imbalanced. It was the biggest problem with it. What MMO would you recommend now? I'm waiting for Ashes of Creation. And if Ashes of Creation lets me down, I don't even know. Like, there's not really any MMOs that I'm super into right now. I think at that point, I'm just going to end up playing Final Fantasy XIV and giving in to the, you know, the inner cat boy that all Final Fantasy XIV players have. Because that's really what happens, right? Eventually, you're just like, there's no other MMOs. I will become a cat boy in Final Fantasy XIV. Like, there's no, that's, that's what happens. That's how it works. We know that. We know that's what happens. There's no escape from it yet. Because there's no other MMOs. You're like, there's nothing else to play. I guess this is it. Right? Yeah. There's no choice. No regards, dude. It's funny. Uh, there's Guild Wars 2, but there's... I don't know. Guild Wars 2 is a lot of fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy Guild Wars 2 a lot. Although, to be real with you, in Final Fantasy XIV, I play a Rogadin, so too late. Not a cat boy. What are you going to do? I'm the big man. And the reason I play the big man is because when I do calisthenics in the game, my ass is the exact height of everyone else's face. And when you're crafting in a town, you can't leave. You're stuck there with me. And it's very funny. <laughs> no escape. I can respect that. I have so many pictures of it. Subligar is the best armor in the game for that, by the way. God, it's funny. What server am I on? Dude, I started I started in the very beginning. Show us. Let me find this. It'll be on my Imgur. So when I when I started on Final Fantasy XIV, it was very, very early on. And um basically what happened was no no one knew what servers were. Like no one knew what the servers possibly were. No one knew what like there was like no history to servers. So I started on Belmung. Belmung turned out to be the RP server. Great fantastic right didn't want that shit i'm an endgame raider so i was like well i guess we're here now so i was doing all the endgame raids we actually had like we were the only raiding group on the server at the time and we were kicking some serious ass and having fun but every day after the day was over of raiding i would go back to limsa laminsa and be like what am i doing now and it was just all these people are peeing so i would do hilariously stupid shit the whole time yep found it i'll give you an example of this this is me wearing subligar gear uh, while someone is trying to craft. Yeah, this is basically what I spent my time doing when I wasn't raiding. Because there was nothing else to do. There was nothing else to do. And they can't leave. They're stuck there crafting my ass. They're stuck doing it. And it's so funny, dude. It is so funny. So yeah, this is the true Final Fantasy XIV experience. When did I actually submit that? How old is this shit? How old is this image? What year was this? That was submitted 10 years ago. That I took that picture in 2014, dude. God damn. It has been forever. Insanity. Insanity. 
No, I never got banned for that. Never did. I was known for it. It was very funny. Everyone got angry, but I never got banned in the game. Never did. Gotta do calisthenics, dude. People would actually say things, they'd be like, do you mind? And I was like, I do mind, actually. You know? I'm here trying to keep fit. And that's very important for my health. I, I mind about my fitness very much. And that was it. And it would just be that, and people were like, oh, bah, bah. You know, it's just... <laughs> It was so funny, dude. It was so stupid. I love Final Fantasy XIV, dude. Yeah, I'm crafting my body, you know? That's a, I find it hilarious. I find it deeply hilarious. Yeah, it was RPing the guy who's got to keep fit, dude. The dude that has no personal space, uh, no understanding of personal space, and really needs to keep fit. That was my character. RP server, got to RP. That's what I RP'd. It was great. It's perfect. Gotta stay in shape, dude. I avoid limps like the plague. Yeah, got weird, right? Got weird. Have you tried Warframe? Yeah, I've actually... I, I have almost every unlock in the game in Warframe. Inside of our guild, we have every unlock in the game. I basically quit when they launched the, the mechs. The mech, right? That, that made me just end the game. And the reason why was this, is I got super into the game. We did Railjack. And Railjack was awesome right? And it was very hard to get into first. It was expensive to, to build one in game, right? So I built it and I got really into it. And um, then after I got all the secrets, I actually unlocked all the secrets for it. I got the weird arm cannon, the alien cannon, arm cannon thing. And I made it really, really strong. And I was super into this kind of shit. And then afterwards, they nerfed all of it. They made it so that they gave you back all the money and resources that you spent on this. And then they also nerfed the shit out of the arm cannon. So it was useless now. All of it ended up being worthless. All of it. All that time spent was worthless. And then I was like, well, okay. And then they released the Necromex, or whatever they were. And the Necromex were incredibly expensive to make. And I was like, I'm not doing this shit again. I'm not doing it. Shit, it was not worthless. They made it worthless for a very long time. Did they make it good again? Because if they made it good again, maybe I'll go back to using it. But if they didn't make it good again, then... Uh, buh. Buh. I miss Railjack. Railjack was fun as hell. <clears throat> Game Dev Tycoon is very fun, yes. Yeah, a lot of the times what, I, what I've played since then is um, I use Haruto and I use uh, Anaris Prime. And the reason why is because Haruto, I have a build for it with a Riven mod on it that's like basically perfect. And it... Uh, it allows me to always get red crits no matter what. And Haruto has a hidden power, which is every time you crit, you would get that amount of damage back as HP. So I am literally impossible to kill. That's it. It's just fun. Anaris rework tomorrow? What are they reworking about it? I don't like that. What are they doing to him? Uh, I have a ton of different I have a ton of different frames that I use though. And by the way, fashion frame is the end game, so all of them are fashioned out. All of them. They're fixing him. They're giving him use useful skills. I just need him to have very large armor. That's all I need. I don't need him. I don't need him fixed. I just need him to have a large amount of armor. Still large armor? Okay. I know he's based off of HP and armor, dude. That's all I care about. Because what I did was I covered him in the ability to not only have a shitload of armor and HP, but also not get knocked down so he can't be knocked down at all and also has a shitload of armor and hp and is very fast and all i do is i punch things to death and i crit for just absurd amounts of damage and everything dies so then i do um what is it the iron path or whatever the hell it's called steel path i just do steel path missions and just wreck wreck face dude yeah, you can't get knocked down with him have you seen the stack overflow armor reno no no yeah, I've been in Aros main for a long time. I used to play Wisp a whole lot. I played uh, I play Frost on defensive missions, though, like Frost Prime. And then, uh, God, what else? What's the poison one? The one that spreads mushroom spores. I do that one all the time, too, when I'm leveling shit up. Love that. Yeah, I, have a, I just have a ton of frames. Yeah, Saren. Saren. I do a ton of Saren. Ton of Saren. I have so many. Like, I, what I used to do all the time is I would help people get all of their, their secret moon stuff. 
because I know all the moon puzzles to get all the all the upgrades in there. So I'd teach people like, hey, here's how you come and do the moon puzzles to get all your stuff, and I would just teach them all their shit because it's just like it's fun. I I know how to get all these kind of like all the all the secrets in the game. I used to do all that kind of stuff all the time. I I got really really into it, and I was I was playing for a very long time, and I applied to be a Warframe partner at the time. I was a much smaller streamer then, and I applied to be a Warframe partner. And they told me that I didn't have enough game knowledge. Even though I had like most of the game unlocked, I knew most of the things about the game that we're talking about now. And then on top of it, I also knew I also had like rank one in the world on a number of different maps in terms of like survival. And they told me I didn't have enough game knowledge. And then two weeks later, their partner program imploded. And like everyone was like talking and they're like, I'm leaving the partner program. It's a piece of shit. Like it, it imploded. Like everything went to shit. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so at the time I was like, oh, I guess I dodged a bullet, dude. That's that's rough. It was it was like really bad. You're coming out with a stalker quest soon. That's kind of cool. That's really good. I actually I think Warframe is in really good hands now. Like actually really, really good hands now. Do you guys know who the here? Let me pull this up. Uh, let me see. I'm going to show you this. Do you guys know Pablo makes? Do you know Pablo? If you're a Warframe fan, you know Pablo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh? Pablo's in our stream team, dude. I've known Pablo for years. <laughs> I think Warframe's in good hands now because of Pablo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. He's awesome as shit. I've known him for a very, very long time. So he's the des design director for Warframe now. And he wasn't when we first met. He was uh, he was working on, on Warframe, but he wasn't a design director. And he's like increased his career over time. And I think he's he's doing a really good job. Yeah, the community loves all of his all of his reworks. Yeah, he made Hydroid fun. I want to check out Hydroid. I liked Hydroid a lot. Hydroid's like one of my favorite frames, to be honest with you. So like, yeah, he's the reason that Warframe's in a really good spot. I, I agree. I super agree with that. People like his stuff. He's the one reworking Naros. Ooh. Ooh, he better not screw up my boy. Better not screw up my boy. I don't play anymore, but he better not screw up my boy. You know? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What, what do you mean that Naros gets sand cats? What did you just say to me? I get the summon cats, dude. Mm. 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 What do you mean he summons cats, dude? Mmm. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. No. Can I mod them? Okay, hold up. There's only one thing that matters in this. I may be able to summon sand cats, but can I fashion frame them? Hmm? Hmm? If I can fashion frame them, I'm in. I'm in. Check his tweets. New battle groups, the simulacrum. Oh, that's sick. Where is his tweets about this? Link to me the tweets. I cannot... He has so many tweets. Pablo, like me, is terminally online. What's Fashion Frame? The endgame of Warframe. There's so much Warframe on his, on his timeline, dude. Yeah, I don't see any of the tweets for this. Tweets aren't real? I think they are. Have you heard of Dino Blade? Yeah, dude, the dinosaur sword game. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. Uh, okay, so Forge is in here. I have an idea for Forge. I don't know if, how we're going to do this, but I have an idea. I want to make something weird. I want to make something very strange. And I'm excited for it. So I don't know how I'm going to do this just yet. I don't know how I'm going to do this just yet. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Already weird? Yes. Can we see some of your fashion frames soon? I don't even know if I have the game installed. Let me look. I was actually updating Star Rail earlier. Because I haven't played that in a while either. 
Warframe? I don't even have Warframe installed right now. Do I have it installed over here? I do. Yeah, I've got Warframe installed on Steam. So, like, it's kind of funny because Steam shows I only have 153 hours because I use the original launcher. I don't use the Steam version. At least I didn't for years. So, like, this is not correct. I've, I have probably five or 6,000 hours on Warframe. I have a shitload of time in that game. Like, an absurd amount of time in that game. Yeah. I used to farm on Hydroid to sell in-game mods for Platinum. And that's kind of what I did for ages. I play Star Rail? Yes. Yes. I love the hell out of Star Rail. It's fun as shit. Do you know why I like Star Rail? So this is something kind of interesting because a lot of people aren't going to like Star Rail because of the gacha game stuff. I was very, very hesitant of playing the game. I decided to play it anyway. Because it's a gotcha game. I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this. The reason I liked it is because I played for like two hours in the beginning. And then it popped up an ad. And it said, hey, do you want to buy this thing? And I said, no. I have now played for over 200 hours. And it has never asked me again. Ever. I've never seen that before. That shit blew me away. I was like, okay. Uh, well then, that feels very good. Yeah, they did it once. They asked me one time. And I've gotten so many things from just playing the video game. So many free things and like free unlocks and stuff like that. I've never felt the need to buy anything. It It is incredibly compelling. It, it made me feel like I want to buy something to support the game because they've been so good to me as a player. I didn't I didn't expect that. It was Star Rail. Yeah, Star Rail. It feels good. It's a really good feeling game. Love it. Yep. Yeah, free-to-play game, too. Crazy shit. Yeah, it's a crazy, a crazy W from that source. You would, you wouldn't expect that. <clears throat> yeah, I played on mobile. Played on mobile, and I'm gonna start playing it on a secondary computer because I have my, I have my bait machine, which is the one that plays Helldivers. So, <laughs> anything that has Kernel level landing sheet goes in the bait machine. Though, it's funny as hell. Hello, Bezos. How's it going? Is Grant a valid way to learn coding? Yes, it is. How to escape the Matrix? Well, you stop watching the movie. Yeah. Let's walk out of the theater, bud. I know the arc fix is live, I know. Aw, oh, man. There's a zone near me that has a devil Joe. There is a pickle zone nearby, but it is two streets away. Can't look at it. Can't look at it. Can't look at it. Don't want to look at it. I'm waiting for the ad break to be over. Go do it. I can't, dude. It's far away. I'd have to end the stream. I'm not ending the stream. I've been asking a bunch of streamers. What is their dating advice? I'm going to be real with you, dude. Like, don't worry about that shit. Go do shit that you enjoy. And if you're not worried about that, you might find somebody else who also enjoys the same thing. Then you start talking and it goes from there. If you're focused on dating or focusing on getting a relationship, you likely won't get one, or you'll get one you really don't want. <clears throat> yeah, no, Warframe is good, really good, dude. I don't like dates, they taste weird. Dude, I love dates. Dates are delicious. Yeah, don't force it. It gets weird. Every person I dated showed up out of nowhere. Yeah. Any advice for Lost Ark? Play the game until the end game and then stop playing the game. The end game in Lost Ark feels like shit, dude. The rest of the game is awesome. Yeah. The rest of the game is fantastic, but that end game, oof.
Yokolab Duck T with 500 bits said Hi Thor, by any chance will you be unlocking the Cursed Quest on April 1st to allow one Cursed Quest per person for one day only in conjunction with the Record Hype Train event? No. <laughs> no, dude, that's so many Cursed Quests, you have no idea. That'd be insane. We, we wouldn't get anything else done. Plus, we're already doing a whole lot of stuff for April 1st. We're already doing a bunch of stuff. Psycho1343 with 1000 bits said hello Thor I hope you have a lovely day, I just want to scream into the void for a bit since nothing I do nothing I try works out for me, I find it really hard to focus on one thing and no matter what it is, I seem to give up before I complete it, it feels like people don't care about me and only care about me because of convenience, I find it too hard to care about myself my mind is messed up and I can't handle this life anymore, I give up. A lot of your issues that are coming from that are clearly self-confidence issues, like 100%. It's not that life is too hard. It's not that people don't care about you. It's not that any of that kind of stuff is going on. That is 100% self-confidence issues, 100%. The world is not turned against you. And when you say nothing works out for me, but you also say I don't complete anything, it's not that things aren't working out for you, so you're not finishing them, right? So you have to focus on, okay, I'm doing this thing. This thing is getting done. And when you get to the point where it's like, I could complete this, there's something that's happening there where you're no longer completing that thing. And then you go, well, nothing works out for me. It ends up being a self-fulfilling prophecy of everything is bad. So I'm going to ensure that this situation cannot resolve in a good way. So everything is bad. I think the best thing that you could have for you, honestly, you need to talk to a professional about these things. You need to work out why that behavior is coming forth. You need to work out why you have that routine and that pattern that is self-defeating. Because it is self-defeating. It's causing a lot of Trump like trouble for you, honestly. But you have to understand that it's not outside forces that are doing this. You can solve this. You can fix this. It is going to be a change in perception and a change in the way that you approach problems and the way that you resolve problems. But talking to a professional may help you along the way. Most definitely. X Shinneth with 500 bits said I am an audio engineer about to graduate college and am looking to start building my portfolio so I have more than just my education to put in a resume. Any advice on how I should go about building it? Yeah, so building your resume is pretty good, pretty easy. I'm going to go check the ferrets in a moment because they just threw something everywhere. You are a goblin animal. One moment, let me, let me do this first. Dear God. Okay, I'll answer your question now. I'm sorry about that. Um, the ferrets decided to flip over their food bowl, throw it all over the floor. I went over there, I picked up one of them because I was like, what are you doing? And he instantly just shit everywhere. <laughs> While I'm holding him, he's just like... Bleh. I was like, okay. That is great, buddy. That is fantastic. Thankfully, I was holding him over the poop bin, so he pooped into that instead. But, like, god damn it, dude. Yeah, take that. Exactly. Like, goblin mode, dude. 100% goblin mode. Why? Why are you doing this? Oh, my god. Well, anyways, food's all over the floor. I put most of it back in the bowl. It's being a goblin. Anyway, you're an audio engineer about to graduate college, and you're looking to start building your portfolio. You have more than just education to put in your resume. Any advice on how to build your portfolio? Yeah, so... Portfolio stuff is actually pretty pretty easy. A lot of times you want to take your top three things. And I know this this may seem really restrictive, but take your top three things that are relevant to the company that you're applying for. So if you're doing audio, try to match the audio style of the company you're applying for. Blizzard has a particular style to music. So do a bunch of music in Blizzard style, right? Different games, different way of doing this kind of stuff so you can try and match that. This is a good example of this. Now here's the big thing about a portfolio. You don't just put up the stuff that you can make. You don't just say, here's what I can make. You have to put up time. This is something that a lot of artists forget. And a lot of musicians forget. It's not just what you can make. How long did it take you? What tools did you use? 
you need to explain this because they're hiring you to make things and they need to know not just what you can make, but how you make it. And that's very, very important. So put times on these. Maybe show a bunch of prototypes for each one. Show exactly what it is. Yeah, in-process picks, in-process steps. Prototypes, tooling, time. Show all that shit. It's incredibly important. And if you keep it to three results, it makes it so it's much like much more likely to be seen. Much more likely. I've been through so many zero hiring management Zero Zero with like, 500 bits this said shit. this idea of you will own nothing and be happy. Likes of companies taking away access for a game or book especially services for programs you paid for is completely stupid. It's only going to promote more piracy. The companies yeah. are just boiling the frog, slowly hopping. No one will notice at this point. I mean, to be real with you, I've, I've never ascribed to that. To be real with you, you own nothing and be happy. It's funny, too, because people talk about Steam all the time. They talk about Steam, like, what happens if Steam dies and I lose my entire Steam library? But they forget something. Steam has actually stated publicly many, many times that if Steam ever goes down, in the unlikely event that Steam ever dies, they have things set up so that you'll be able to play everything in your library still permanently. Which I think is a really cool move. Basically what it sounds like, which they've never really said, but they're talking about this kind of a thing, sounds like Steam DRM dies with Steam. Makes sense. Sammy underscore buns with 500 bits said, okay, the uncommon fish ticket has been made. Okay, thank you. The ticket is all that matters. We, we handle bug reports through tickets. So if you have a bug report, you have to put in a ticket. And if the ticket, you know, once we reach the ticket, then we fix it. It's all cute. Decatur Everything. underscore rat with 500 bits said, I am a semi truck driver and started seeing your shorts last fall. Recently started listening to your streams and I'm now writing a rough draft for a game design doc on my off time. Thank you for being someone who says we can do the things we're afraid to go for. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. You're awesome as hell. Yeah, here we go. There's a Reddit post about this from ages ago. Let me pull this out. See if we can find the original one. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah, basically what they did was they... they've it, There's been a bunch of interviews over the years about talking about this stuff, where they have a bunch of programs in place where if, if they ever die, then you keep your games and, like, Steam shuts down or whatever it is. Yeah. There's been a lot of content about this, a lot of talk about this. A huge amount of it. It's been around forever. Long time ago. <clears throat> it was like 10 years or more ago. What am I looking at? Uh, I'm working on recipe shit. I'm actually doing patch notes, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Say the front page? Nice. Hello, front page. Actually, front page, I have a surprise for you. Let me pull this up. This is a pretty important one, actually. It's for you. It's for you, passerby on the front page of Twitch. That's right. That's right. That's for you. Also, I just lost the game. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. Just is. Is what it is, Chet. Is what it is. You just call me a butthole? Dude, I haven't been called a butthole in years. That's hilarious. <laughs> Chili Red Panda with 1000 bits said Ya cheer 1000 high Thor, a bit of Hi. a weird question, but I was sure. wondering if you're doing okay. I'm based in Central yeah. Europe and your streaming time is overlapping with my work hours, 9 to 5, but that's like in the middle of the night in US, isn't it? Yeah, no, I, I stream from midnight to noon PST every day. Except for Thursday. Thursday's my one day off because that's Thor's day. Yeah. No, I'm super fun. Super fun. Cosmic Tiger 254 with 1000 bits said, Hello, funny Jolly Roger man. Hello. I could use some advice for streaming equipment. Mainly looking for a recommendation for PC and monitors recommendation, preferably with liquid cooling as I am in a cramped apartment. Hmm. I am not sure if that is a valid reason, but I find it cool. 
I don't really have a budget, just a space restriction. I am working at a vet hospital and as I am finishing classes, for now, I would like to follow an interest of mine, but I am overwhelmed by the choices. So let's think about this. Looking for a recommendation for PC and monitors recommendation, preferably with liquid cooling as I'm in a cramped apartment. I actually use air cooling as funny as it is. Not sure if this is a valid reason, but I find it cool. I don't really have a budget, just a space restriction. So you don't have a budget restriction, just a space restriction. I'm working at a vet hospital and finishing classes for now. Honestly, what I would do, dude, like I, I would go and pull up in PC apartment picker and, and build one. Like, like 100%. If you have a space restriction, you may have to go to a laptop, right? Which kind of sucks. But I used to do a gaming laptop for ages and it, it was not a problem for me. But PC part picker is going to let you build your own machine and find out if it's going to fit. That's one of the biggest things. So like... Mini ITX, dude, some of those cases are really tiny. Some of those are really small, dude. They're so small. Yeah, I don't know. But, like, to be real with you, I would use PC Part Picker. I really would. Mini ITX Raven case? Let me see how tiny this is. Mini ITX Raven case. That is so tiny, dude. It's so small. How do you fit anything in there? There's no room for activities. That's crazy small. Yeah, you know that would fit. It would definitely work. It's average? No, it's tiny. See, stop making fun of me. I won't. That being said, Gamers Nexus reviewed it and said it was good. And I trust the shit out of them. So I would check it out. That might actually work, to be honest with you. Yeah. If Gamers Nexus is saying it's good, then it's it's likely to be good. They're very meticulous about testing stuff. Look how weird this looks. Look at that. It's thin. It's like a normal case, but thin, right? Thin boy. So it's actually pretty interesting. Yeah. It kind of looks like a console almost. You know what I mean? Yeah, it looks like it looks like a console. It looks like Xbox New Edition. It looks like a PS5, yeah. <laughs> it's just weird. It looks like a console. It's pretty interesting though, to be honest with you. No, I like Gamers Nexus' stuff. That is the Silverstone for that one, it looks like. Yeah. Silverstone Raven Mini ITX case review for that one. Yeah, maybe check out those. Maybe check out those. But I would use PC Part Picker to find out which parts you want to be able to use inside of that, frankly. It's just a good website. It's good for doing all this kind of shit. But to be real with you, I don't... I don't like tiny cases. I like big cases, you know? I want room for activities in there. I want to see my parts. I don't want them touching each other. Yeah. Zero Siphon Zero with 500 bits said I modded a game called Star Wars Empire at War. I installed a mod and went to that mod to mess about with navy and unit caps in battles for galactic conquest. That's cool as Now shit. I just need to work out how to get the CPU to use more cores as it lags like on one core. Oh, is that a single core game, dude? You. You. Minecraft moment. Buh. That sucks. Tone Time Space with 500 bits said as a musician I have been told I learn quickly and would be a good student of programming. Okay. I have always been interested in improv and thusly in things more in line with prompt engineering. As someone who has never learned any programming languages but does deeply understand large and basic concepts such as binary coding and quantum. IDK what bootcamp would you recommend for me to make money as a pure artist who wants to learn to start coding? Hmm. What do you mean, deeply understand large and basic concepts such as binary coding and quantum? It's a very strange statement to make. And what do you mean, prompt engineering? 
been interested in improv and thusly in things that more in line with prompt engineering? You're talking about AI generated code? Is that what you mean? Is this a copy pasta? I'm not sure if this is copy pasta. I'm not sure. She said, as a musician, you've been told you learn quickly and would like and would be a good student of programming. Okay, so learn programming. And you want you're interested in it. improv. Okay. That's a very different thing. That's a different skill set entirely. And thusly in things more in line with prompt engineering. That's AI generated code. That has nothing to do with that whatsoever. You said someone who's never learned any programming languages, but you deeply understand large and basic concepts such as binary coding and quantum, which are vastly different things entirely. And this, this is starting to make, this is already making no sense. I don't know what boot camp would you recommend for me to make money as a pure artist who wants to learn to start coding? That there's no boot camp for that. What? So none of this really makes any sense. Do you want to make money as, a, as an artist, a musician, or a programmer? Because what you've shown me here is that you have like cursory knowledge of many things, but you don't have a direction in what you're trying to tell me you want to do. And you've thrown in a bunch of high-level concepts such as quantum, you know, quantum computing, things with binary, which aren't really relevant to 99.99% of programmers anyway, unless you're dealing with memory management, and even then you're mostly dealing with assembly. And then also prompt engineering, which means you're having AI generate the code for you anyway, which means you wouldn't have an understanding of it in the first place. So this is confusing and I don't know what you want. Yeah. This this feels like a bunch of buzzwords. Choose a direction. I have, I have no idea what you're asking. Troy Tech with 500 bits said yesterday I was doing Uber and tripped hard then later on I had yeah. $100 fall from my pocket so it was a hard day. I have Dane Bramage, compressed spine and narcolepsy from 2021. I got hit by a semi-truck. Been struggling Whoa. with existential dread. Passed out for a minute because of my narcolepsy when you played the TTS so I missed the timing. What? Here is the link for my book. HTTPS colon slash slash w Let me go find your book. This is the one you sent me. You sent me your book before. That is not the whole link. Discord please. Now narcolepsy is some wild shit. Yeah, this is actually the book that you sent me. So they, member of our community, actually. So Troy Tech actually sent me a copy of their book, which is awesome as shit. Uh, being able to write your own book and then release that into the world is not easy. Not easy at all, especially if you get hit by a semi truck and live, right? Some crazy shit there, honestly. I think it's really crazy shit. So like, to be real with you, this is kind of cool. I think this is really neat stuff. What is this? Look at this look at this weird fight. Prompt engineer isn't a thing. No, it's not. It's not a thing. There's no such thing as a prompt engineer. That's not what you are. If you <laughs> as much as people want this to be a thing, but they're like, oh, it's a prompt engineer. I I'm an engineer that works with the AI. No, you're not. There are real engineers that are actually building that that tool. You are writing text into a tool and it's giving you a feed out. You're not an engineer. That's not what that is. You can try putting that in your title. But no one who's an actual engineer is going to respect you as an engineer because you're not one. That is not what that is. Not at all. Whatsoever, my dude. No. Stop this. Stop it at once. Absurd to me. Actually absurd to me. Alright. Here's his book. Let me grab this. Can we get a link that isn't five miles long? Eh? Eh? Almost. There we go. Got it. No. I, I find it to be very, very strange that, like, the AI community is equal parts. Everyone should own everything. We should have full ownership of all of our stuff. And also... I am a true engineer. Everybody should look at me. I'm I'm amazing, right? It, it it just doesn't make any sense to me, to be honest with you. None of that entire community makes any goddamn sense to me whatsoever. I also think it's very funny that the crypto community has, has equal parts of strangeness to them, where they're like, we want to have decentralized currency where no one can own any of our stuff, but also let's use a bunch of centralized exchanges. Oh, why did somebody steal my crypto? Why do these communities make no sense? They don't. They don't make any goddamn sense to me at all. 
it's really, really weird to watch over and over again. Like, if your entire personality, your entire personality is derived by somebody else's programming like that, what, what are you doing? Stop. You need to have a personality beyond, I can type into an AI and it makes things for me. That's not a personality. That's not a positive way to go through your life. You need to build things. You need to build things. Yourself. You need to make things. If you want to be creative, go be creative. But to sit there and, and you know, tell an AI what to do for you and then say, oh, I am so creative, look at the thing that I made. You didn't make that. You didn't at all. And you should stop acting like you did. It makes no sense. Whatsoever. Yeah. Makes none. Make no sense. It's the same as going on Google, taking somebody else's images and go, oh, I searched this. I found this. I made this image because I searched it on Google. No, you didn't make that. You didn't make the te technology that made that. You didn't dream up any of the, the, you know, the art that went into training it in the first place. You don't own the copyright to it. You don't own any of the distribution rights to it. You did not make that. And you are not an engineer for telling the AI to do it. And that's never going to change. Codenota Bear with 500 bits said you probably get this at least once a week if not more, but I am begging for an ultra kill playthrough. Oh yeah dude, I want to play it, but I can't play it on stream because like that game is like epilepsy to the max, man. Like it is, it is rough for people. It is absolutely rough for people. <laughs> is a junior dev a stack overflow prompt engineer? I know right? It just blows me away, dude. It's very funny to me. I can add search engineer to my job title now? I know, right? Insane to me. Ooh. I've just been made aware of something very upsetting. You ready for this? You guys ready for this? You ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, dude. That's funny as shit. Look at it go. That's permanent now. You're never going to unsee that. You're never unseeing that. God. That's rough. All right. Time to build some shit. Uh, we need to go into here and create another new crafting station for this. Let's see here. Are you getting back to your prompt engineering? All right, dude. It's funny as shit. We're going to do Stonebeard over on this one, and we need to do Stonebeard over on the other one, too. For the layout. Now, I find more often than not, to be honest with you, a lot of the people that are very deeply into the crypto, like, are deeply into crypto or deeply into AI. There's a lot of crossover between those communities, but they're not, you know, it's not always the same for both of them. What I find most often is a deep lack of understanding about copyright and how copyright works and then on top of it also a deep lack of understanding of the act of creation where they believe that having a tool design and build everything for you based on the work of somebody else is now somehow uniquely yours because you told it to do it and it makes no sense if the work that is going into the training model for that ai like if we have an ai an ai requires generative ai requires input data that data has to be made by a real human being. There's no way that it can generate anything on its own without that input data. If you don't own the copyright to that input data and you use generative AI to make something out of it, guess what? You still don't own the copyright to that work. 
You don't own it. You didn't make it. It can only exist because of that initial data that you didn't own the copyright for. That's the problem. That's the problem with all of this. And if you can't understand that, and you're working inside of the AI field, and you're like, oh man, no, it's totally, totally, we just own anything that the AI spits out. You literally don't know what the hell you're talking about. And that's the entire fight over all of this. So like, no. If you, the better way to do this, to be honest with you, is license the artwork from artists for money and then include that licensed artwork in the data and now you're good. Now it's fine. You have no more problems. But that's not how this shit is working. Instead, they're not licensing the work. They're using it illegally against copyright and then using that in the AI generative model and then selling that as a service. And that shit is insane to me. And artists are getting absolutely blasted for this because they're like oh what the hell's going on and the whole ai community just jumps down their throat dude it makes no sense artists are asking for way too much from what i know it's their work to sell who are you to define what their value is you see that that's how that shit goes Yeah, if you want it, pay for it. If you don't want it, don't pay for it. S did someone get banned or they just got slapped? I use AI to learn. That's a great that's a great resource to learn from, dude. It is awesome to use AI to learn. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But when people are going forward and they're using other people's art inside of a data system and then using that to generate new art and then going i made this and trying to build a career around it by calling themselves a prompt engineer it just it makes me want to slap people through the internet it's the dumbest shit on the planet to watch prompt engineer walk into any self-respecting company and call yourself a prompt engineer you get laughed out of the room that interview will be over so fast your head will spin dude engineer ridiculous to watch mm, let's see ads mm, there we go what are you doing little man one moment Yeah, we got ads. We're going to wait. There we go. Didn't get an ad and I'm not subbed? Yeah, you won't. Sometimes you just don't. It's based on your region. Not always the same. <laughs> is it a pot washer or is it an underwater ceramics engineer? Bingo, dude. That's exactly what that is. That is 100% the same. Underwater basket weaver, dude. That's all that shit amounts to. Swoldemort, god damn it. <laughs> AI should be used for one thing. That's making Swoldemort. That's it. Nothing else. Swoldemort, that's it. It's funny as shit, dude. The boy who lifts. And wizards and Arby's. I agree with that. What is Swoldemort? Go look at the internet. Wizards in Arby's. Let me find this. Wizards in Arby's is the only thing I enjoy.
If you've never seen Wizards and Arby's, this is Wizards and Arby's. This is what AI is used for on the normal internet. This is what this is what we use AI for is to generate stupid ass images of a million wizards inside of an Arby's, dude. This is what it's for. This is what you should be using it for. Not declaring yourself a prompt engineer. Not trying to build a career out of typing text inside the AI so that it can do all the work for you. And saying that you're an artist now. It's for generating images like this. Generating images of wizards taking over Arby's. That's what it's for. That's what AI is for. God, I love how hectic all these scenes are too. Look at this. It's terrifying. Look at him. What is he doing? His mustache is coming out of the sides of his nose. Wizards and Arby's are amazing, dude. I think this one's carrying a pumpkin. Oh, it's totally carrying a pumpkin. Look at this shit. Look at this weird pumpkin one, dude. What even is that? What is he doing? Wizard. <laughs> this is wizard. Uh, Wizards and Arby's is the best, dude. That's all it's useful for. He's about to fly out. Yeah, it's true. 100% true. Is the Yellow ready? Star 95 with 500 bits said as a player with 1,500 hours in Foxhole, I can explain anything you want to know. I'm going to end up playing this, aren't I? Do you have to fear AI as a programmer? No. Here's why. Here's why you don't have to fear AI as a programmer. Let's say that one day, AI takes your job. And let's say that you're afraid of AI right now, so you're like, oh, I don't want to learn anything new in programming, I'm just going to stop because AI is going to take it. What's the outcome? You lose. Right? You gain nothing. You stay exactly the same. Let's say that AI doesn't take your job. And you decided to do nothing in this because you were afraid that AI was going to do something. Well, you didn't progress as a programmer, so you lose. Let's say that AI does take your job. But you invested in yourself the entire time and you learned a bunch of new stuff about programming and you're able to transfer these skills to something else along the way. You win. Let's say that AI does not take your job and you invest in yourself along the way. Oh, guess what? You win. So where's the defining factor here? Is it AI? Or is it you investing in yourself or not investing in yourself? The only thing that matters is if you are progressing and you're learning new things, and by the time that AI will or won't take your job, it won't be relevant anymore. So, sit down and learn some shit, and don't worry about it. And yeah, we're totally going to be playing Foxhole. It's going to happen. I'll make a section of the Discord and everything. Trucido79 with 500 bits said, Hi Thor, you're amazing and I really enjoy listening to you while working, and you've Thank helped you. me get a bit out of my funk at work. Anyway, I wanted to just give a yummy recipe you can try with Vegemite instead of Marmite. I love Marmite. We don't have Vegemite here. It's really good. HTTPS colon slash slash www dot Let's go look at it. Cheese and Marmite puff pastry swirls. Oh. Oh my shit. Hold up. Oh. I can taste it through the screen, dude. Look at it. It's a savory pastry roll. It takes 25 minutes of total time. 10 minutes of prep, prep, 15 minutes of baking. Oh, God, dude. It's not going to take 25 minutes for me because I'd make that. I make the pastry from scratch. Yeah. I'd have to make the pastry from scratch. Is that just Marmite and cheese? It'd be Vegemite and cheese for me. Yeah, 250 grams of cheddar. Strong cheddar, so a sharp cheddar. Three tablespoons of Vegemite. Oh, God. I need it. I need it. I need it. Anything with cheese, dude. I love sharp cheddar. <sighs> I want that. Yeah, I'm going to link this in chat. Enjoy this. Enjoy that. Let me see here. Is there such a thing as a non-technical developer advocate? Yeah, we call them producers. 
Your producer is the tank and the healer for your team. Same thing as a project manager. Um, same roles, right? Produ production, project management. They are there to tank all the meetings for you. They're there to be your biggest advocate. That's what they do. PMs are the best. Yeah, producers and project managers. They're paladins, dude. They've always been paladins. They protect your team from bullshit meetings, and they, they heal the team when there's downtime. If there's nothing for a project manager or producer to do, largely, the best thing that they can possibly do, go get the team some coffee and donuts, man. Some good shit to do. It's really good shit to do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not concerned about AI at all. Here's how I'm going to handle AI. I don't give a shit. I'm just going to keep making things. No reason not to. Bakutar Dev with 500 bits said he, I am developing a Twitch chatbot. My problem is that I feel like I am not releasing updates fast enough and thereby letting my user base down. It takes a hit on my mental health, making it harder and slower to develop and in a downward circle it goes. Any ideas how to get out of it? Building a Twitch chatbot, my problem is that I feel like I'm not releasing updates fast enough. Is your user base giving you feedback that you're not releasing updates fast enough? If it is, then release updates faster. It's kind of the best way to do it. Or tell them why you're not going to. If you can't, then just tell them you can't. It's about a conversation, right? They don't lead you around by the nose. You, They tell you what they want. You tell them what is possible, and you guys meet in the middle. So sit down and talk with your community, right? I think that's a really important thing. You don't have to push yourself to the breaking point. You need to have that conversation, I think. Honestly. Most definitely. The Hipster Gaming with 500 bits said, Hi Thor. Love your nope. work. I'm a senior automation test engineer at age 23, working in the nice. banking industry. I love what I do and eventually I want to branch out and have my own business. Like you did. Nice. What is your opinion on automation testing as a service? It's great. Automation testing as a service is kind of a cool thing. Um, usually, most companies want custom implementations. So automation testing as a service might be more of you guys getting, being a contractor and going in and building automation frameworks for hire, right? That's a pretty common thing in that direction, less of doing automation testing as a service where you just have a service and you just, you just sell it out, right? So that's, that'd be more like that. That being said, you're a senior automation test engineer at the age of 23, working in the banking industry. You're set. I'm just going to be completely real with you. If you stay in that job, you're done. You win. At that age, with that title, inside of that industry, you could do that shit for the rest of your life. Just to be completely honest. Yeah. Really young, really good position. Awesome title. So do keep that in mind. I don't even know if automation testing as a service is the way to go. At that point, you'd be contracting. Contracting automation testing, which is pretty normal. Like, that's that's been a thing. I've done automation work for a lot of my career. So, like, when I worked at Amazon, I did automation frameworks in Python for Lumberyard. I did automation stuff when I was at Blizzard as well. And a lot of it is going to come down to custom Im implementation, usually. Unless you're doing it with, like, data automation. But even then, that's custom implementation most of the time based on the data structures that they have involved. You'd, you'd know. But, um, yeah, no, I uh, to be real with you, I think it's a cool area to explore. But I think it's more of a contractor role at that point, if that makes sense. And with your title... You're set anyway. 100% <laughs> set. I do understand the idea of going off and running your own business, though. I super get that. It is very freeing. But there's a lot of value in keeping your day job and doing stuff on the side as well, as long as your contract allows it. <laughs> Ice White with 500 bits said, just got my first job as junior pen tester. Nice. I like to thank you for the motivation. Dude, that's also awesome been binge watching your coverage on the Apex situation. Thanks. I'm really glad, dude. Yeah, the Apex stuff is pretty much done, though. Like, um, we're just waiting for... I think at this point, we're really just waiting for Respawn to make their statement. And that's pretty much it. Which I think is great. That's a fine place to be. I think they're doing a really good job, so... Just gotta wait. Gotta wait. Inert. Inert is going to be... What is it going to be? I don't remember which, which slot that is. Zero, nine, eighteen, twenty-seven. It's forty-five. And the ferrets have crashed again. Dude, the ferrets are crashing constantly now. I don't really know what to do about it. It sucks because I really like this tool, but it's also crashing constantly. Hmm. Buh. Buh. 
Smells like request forgery? No, no, no. It's um, it's throughput issues. So the tool is actually this. Let me show you this. The tool is made by a developer named Clonesy. Uh, it's Stream Avatars, and the problem with it is, I don't think there's any other streamer that has this many viewers that is using this tool. When we got over like five thousand people, it started crashing. Now that there's fourteen thousand between YouTube and Twitch, it crashes constantly. And I think there's just something wrong at that level of viewers where it starts to die. And the developer can't really test that because this is 100% an edge case. Yeah, I've been using this thing for years, man. So I, I think, I really think that it's an edge case issue. I really think it's an edge case issue. It's yeah, I'm 100% an outlier. So like I keep releasing information on them. I was like, here's some logs and shit. We can't figure out what's, what's breaking it. They've released a couple of updates. We just don't know. No idea. Yeah, this is a stress test for the tool, 100%. So we just keep relaunching it, basically. Which is, like, it's pretty funny, because it's a great tool. It's awesome as hell. But, like, it just keeps dying. Yeah, st stability at scale is very difficult. Is it time to limit it to tier 2 subs and up? We actually tried limiting it to only moderators, and it still crashed. So it's doing something with, like, user state, even if you're not, like, going to be shown up as a ferret. I don't know why. Yeah. It's over one year of use in total time. I've been a streamer for seven years, so yeah. Yep. Stability at scale is very rough. Yeah, it is. How can you test for stability at scale? So, that's generally very, very difficult to do. Um, we, we'll try to do things like bots and stuff like that. We try to fake engagement. We try to like to try and do that kind of a thing to test at scale. And then the only other thing you can do is you do stress tests, man, with real users. Real user stress tests are generally going to give you more information than a bot, you know, bot stress test. Bot stress tests just don't work a lot of the times. They give you a better idea, but they just don't work. And I think it's it's really important to understand that, too, is like this shit, a lot of it you can only discover on live servers. A lot of it. And it's rough, dude. You are the stability at scale test with this problem? Yeah, it's that's exactly what this is. Yeah. Yep. Yo, Gert with love with six pounds and 66 pence said you have some odd problem with feces fixation. Cool as shit, I love this shit, funny as shit, scares hit of me. Are you constipated, Thor? Grin. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Proud of you. Good job. Good job. Deeply funny, dude. Make this one 53. Oh, Beans is awake. Alright, that looks much better. Yeah, that looks way better now. Alright, that one's finished. Now we're going to go over here, and we're going to make something new. And we're going to make this to be something new. Let's think about this. Ugh. Ugh. There we go. Rune carving level one for this. Let me think. What is it you're doing? Rebalancing some stuff. Never thought of using Minecraft players It's because I don't play Minecraft. It's because I turned Minecraft into an MMO to test balancing in an MMO as a two-person team now. So it's me and Jake do all of it. And I do balancing in game design, and Jake does uh, plugin development, so we can work on it together. And it's all server side, so you can play it on a vanilla client. It's kind of fun. Yeah, Beans is recovering from surgery. He's in isolation because of it. Yeah, I don't play Minecraft. I am Minecraft. It's basically well, I'm block game technically. Is block game open source? No, not open source. But we got a lot of players. There's a lot of people on the server. Usually like 50 plus, and the server runs pretty well, so we're sitting at 20 TPS, so it's kicking ass. Yeah. Jake from State Farm? Yes, definitely. That one. Mr. Thor Blockgame. John Blockgame. John Blockgameman. Yeah. Anyone can join? Yeah. It's mc.blockgame.info is the actual domain. That's the, uh, that's the IP address for the server. What's up, Revive? How's it going? 
Sick partner name, by the way. Will you be boxing another Twitch streamer? What? What do you mean, will you be boxing another Twitch streamer? I don't understand what this, like, obsession is with Twitch streamers fighting each other. I'm a programmer, dude. What, what am I going to do? Get up there and slap someone and be like, Ugh. And I'll just, like, run out of breath halfway through. Like, come on, dude. What the hell? What is this shit? Yeah, I'm not going to go up there and fight Mike Tyson. I don't have a death wish, right? Like, let's be real. <laughs> that Mike Tyson shit's insane to me. It's honestly insane. I think he's... I, I honestly think that... that uh, what is it? Is it Jake Paul or Logan Paul that's fighting him? Which one of the Pauls is fighting him? Is it... It's Jake Paul? He's gonna die. Like... <laughs> like... Dude, you're not gonna survive that. He's freaking Mike Tyson, dude. Like... That, that man's whole life, he's been a weapon. He's a weapon, dude. That man is a weapon. Like, Mike Tyson is a weapon. That's what he is. Mike Tyson's going to be unleashed and just annihilate him. And it's going to be horrifying. Like, what... Here, everyone's going to say rigged, right? Everyone's like, oh, it's not a real fight. It's going to be rigged. It's not a real fight. It's going to be rigged. What if Mike Tyson walks out and punches him once and he dies? What's going to happen? Like, do you think... Like, like legitimately, Mike Tyson is, is a terrifying human being. He is a terrifying human being. He is a weapon. He's been a weapon his whole life, dude. Have you ever seen Mike Tyson fight? Mike Tyson's a scary bastard. Like an actually scary bastard. Even at, what is he, 57 now? You've seen his training videos of him at 57? Dude is terrifying. It's WWE? No, it ain't. No, it ain't, dude. Boxing is not WWE. Those dudes get hit. It's not WWE when you watch a dude get punched in the neck and go down. Like, no. <laughs> you have a vast misunderstanding of boxing if you think that's the case. People die in that ring, dude. Like, that's not... That's some scary shit. Yeah, people are acting like he's not... Like, like Mike Tyson's not scary. And I'm like, dude, no. Boxing is super brutal. It's a show fight. Every fight is for show. But boxing, like many other fighting sports, like, like you know, mixed martial arts or MMA shit, people get killed in that ring, dude. People get permanently injured in that ring. People's lives are changed forever in fights like that. And I'm going to be super real with you. Mike Tyson's been on the giving end of that shit many more times than you can imagine. He's a scary dude. He's very good at what he does. And he's a weapon. 100%. <clears throat> Goblin, thank you for the $5 to the moderators. Very nice of you. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, go tell Mike Tyson it's WWE, man. Like, I could take him, dude. Yeah, you could take him for a single punch, all right? And then we'd be picking up the pieces to give to your family afterwards. Jesus, dude. The hubris. The immense hubris of chat. Blows me away. We're like, oh yeah, there's still some of them over there on the wall. Let's go, let's go scrape that off and give it to the family as well. Like, dude, it's, it's Mike Tyson. <laughs> oh. I know, I gotta remember you're talking to kids. I know, dude. There's there's I think I think some people just don't remember the history of this dude. He's old. He's 57. He's built like a truck, dude. Have you seen the videos of him still training? That shit don't matter. That shit don't matter at all. He's, yeah, Mike Tyson, blind and, and ancient, could kick your ass. Like, that's what he does. He, like, let's, let's think about it this way, right? Let's say that he's slower. Let's say that he's old and he's a little bit slower. He just has to hit once. His entire body has been trained as a weapon to hit as hard and as fast as, like, he's, he's the strongest fighter pretty much ever. You have to dodge every time. He just has to hit you once. Once, dude. He's a Dark Souls boss. He is. You have to dodge every single time. And if you make a single mistake in that fight, especially because you're going into that ring as a novice, 
you get hit by one hit that way, you're done. It's over. The you died screen shows up. And you know what happens right after that? Let me show you this. I'm going to show you exactly what happens when you get hit by Mike Tyson. Your vision goes black, and this shit shows up. That's exactly it. That's what happens. You get a new game plus is Luigi, dude. It's over. It's over. It's ended. I could take a punch from Mike Tyson. Ridiculous, dude. No. You die. That man is terrifying. You ragdoll, 100%. Scary as hell. I was half expecting the Sky... What was it? The Skyrim thing? Is that what it was? I could have shown the Skyrim thing. That would have worked, too. Yeah, dude. No, he's... I, I think that's some of the things that people don't realize is... I know it's very easy to kind of discount people and be like, oh, he's, he's reached a certain age. But, like, dude, he's scary. He's unironically a scary dude. Like, unironically a very scary human being. Because he's he's been a fighter his whole life. And you can't really compare a lifetime of fighting... To somebody who's just starting out. They know too much. And it's all instinct for them now. Yeah. An old tiger's still a tiger. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah, he bit a man's ear off. <laughs> I don't even think he realized he was doing it. He just did it. You know, like... Scary as shit. You know? Actually, I'll give you a really good example of this. Ozzy Osbourne. I'll give you a very good example of this. Performance. Muscle memory performance. Age doesn't matter anymore. 100%. Ozzy Osbourne is a very good example of this. I got to see Ozzy Osbourne at, at, um, at BlizzCon ages ago. And Ozzy Osbourne's walking around and he's, he's got his hands like this and he's very, he's very kind of like quiet and he's, he's, it's very clear he's quite frail when he's walking around. And then you see him get up on stage and he reaches out and he touches this and you see him just go like this and he turns into a completely different human being. It's like he's, he's young again, he's absolutely fantastic and he does that stage show and he's amazing. He was absolutely incredible to watch. And you can see the transition happen the moment that he walked up on stage and touched that. It was incredible, frankly. And then he gets back off and he's like, he's back to being an old man again. And like, when you look at performance changes like that in people who have been doing it their whole lives and their body clicks into action on that moment, you're going to see that shit with Mike Tyson. And you're probably going to see him kill a man, frankly. It's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Like it's yeah, it's it's scary as shit, dude. Yeah. It's very scary. We saying age doesn't matter? In boxing? No, I'm not saying age doesn't matter in boxing. I'm saying that Mike Tyson even at fifty seven could kick the shit out of any of us. <laughs> Yeah, age 100% matters in that, but he's still terrifying. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, that's just, that's how that goes, right? Show the video of training? I don't have a good video of him training. If you have one, send it to me, because I've seen a couple of them, and I'm like, Jesus. What is this I could take a hit shit? Oh, yeah, here we go. Mike Tyson training at 57, yeah. I'm going to link this out to you guys. God, he's fast as shit. How is he so freaking fast? See, that's the thing, dude. He's scary as shit. I'm going to link this to you in chat. Now, imagine that kind of speed at all. He, he has insane amounts of intensity, dude. Imagine that kind of speed, and you just got to get hit once. No, dude. No, dude. You get hit one time by that and you're done. Yeah, F that, exactly. Because people are just like, oh, no, it's easy. But, like, look how freaking fast he is. That's him at 57, dude. He's so fast. He's so fast, dude. Nah. Nah. I wouldn't do that shit. You're putting your life on the line stepping in that ring, 100%. I think it's... I understand it's a publicity stunt. I know it is. I know that like the Paul brothers are like, oh man, it's a publicity stunt. We're totally going to get known for this kind of a thing. We're totally going to get like more, more views and all this kind of shit. That is a dangerous way to get views, man. Like that is a, 
That is a scary ass thing. Yeah. It's a scary ass thing. You know? Chrome plays games with 1000 bits said you've been a great inspiration for my Twitch journey. Thank you for all the advice and being an amazing member of the community Chrome Heart. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, risking risking head injury for views. Yeah. Risking permanent brain damage for views. It's insane. What a legal activity we're doing today? Not, man. We never do. $10 million for one punch from Tyson, $1,000 for no punch. No punch. Look, I'm going to be real with you. The older you get, the more you realize that health is the only thing that matters. That money can't buy you getting out of getting a concussion. That money can't buy you out of getting your jaw unbroken. That shit isn't going to work. That shit sticks with you. Health is the only thing that matters. 100%, dude. You take the punch, you're probably too young to realize that. You're probably too young to realize how bad that is. Yeah. It's all about health, dude. 100%. Yeah, if Tyson punches my neck, it's going to snap, dude. If Tyson punches your neck, it's gone. You'll still be there. The neck will be over there, right? It's not going to work that way. Your neck is not very good on the other side of the room. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to do what it's intended for. Insanity. Yeah, not, every, not everything you can heal through, man. Like, it's like, well, you'll go to the, you'll go to the hospital and be like, hey, Mike Tyson punched me. You'll be actually be like, hey, my, my Tyson punched me. Your whole face will be just destroyed, right? And you'll be like, well, like, how do you fix this? And they'll be like, well, we can't. Your bones are actually powdered. Yes. There's, there's no bones left in there. So, uh, you're rich now, but you're just, you know, you don't have a face anymore. It's gone. Right. Was it worth it? No. No. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm going to be real with you. Dumb shit for money is not good. That's not a good thing. In risking self-injury for money is just not, so not something I would ever get behind. I think it's really foolish. I'll divers today? Yeah, yeah, later. Later there will be. HPF3 with 500 bits said Yarchir 500 just got the heartbound OST. Now I can claim Hello. first place in their beat hazard three scoreboards. Anyways, how be you? Dude, I want to watch a video of you playing that. Record that shit. I want to see that really badly. We all watch so much Jackass in our youth. Dude, I watched a ton of Jackass. I watched a ton of Jackass. And if you see them today, like, go look at the videos of them like, being interviewed today. And it's like so rough, dude. All of those dudes have health injury, like health shit now. Everybody. Steve-O is super messed up, man. And they do have regrets about it. They talk about it all the time. Jackass was being, doing dumb shit that got them injured for money. And all of them are like, yeah, this, I shouldn't have done that. Like, yeah, it's awful, man. I'm doing really good, though. I want to see you a video of you playing that. It sounds awesome as hell. Last night's work reminds me of Rayman 3. Hell yeah, dude. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Yeah, CTEs don't show up for like 10 years. Yeah. It's crazy to me, man. It's crazy to me that people are like interested in getting that kind of injury. Yep.
Is 936p60 better than 1080p? If you have limited bandwidth, it can be, yes. Yes. Bam is worth, worse off than Siebel. I've ne I haven't even seen Bam anywhere. Bam Margera? I haven't seen him anywhere. How's Beans doing? He's doing very good. Yeah. I'm actually really... He's doing too well, because he keeps trying to escape, and he's like thrashing. He's mad. He wants to go play. We let him out. This is the cutest thing on the planet. We let Beans out yesterday. And this is the first time he's felt good in a while, obviously, because he's been having this problem that we didn't know about. And we put him on the floor. And the moment we put him on the floor, he arched his back and started jumping all over the place. And we're like, no, Beans, no. And we like, had to pick him up. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he was so excited. He was jumping all over the place. And he was trying to do war dances. And he was freaking out. And I was like, no, we can't do we can't do that. You're still healing. So I had to. we had to put him away. And he was so sad. He was so sad, dude. So we had to put him back into the cage because, like, he needs to he needs to relax. He just had major surgery. So we're we're waiting. Yeah, it's gonna be two weeks. It's gonna be two weeks. We'll likely let him out around a week in because he's healing very fast. He's doing really, really well. So he's drinking water right now. He's very cute. Yeah. He's very cute. But I I'm just happy that he's doing well. Happy he's doing well, honestly. Yeah. All right, we can get rid of all of this. Be gone, weird stuff. All right, so I'm thinking about doing something to rune carving. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about doing something. I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. We have a little bit of a problem, which is interesting. Rune carving progression doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. At all. Has Drift King Henry? He's doing good. He's doing really good. Uh, we've actually started a new type of physical therapy for Henry, which is pretty interesting. So Henry has a problem where his balance is gone. He's got vestibular disease that was brought on by middle and outer ear infections for 75% of his life. He was untreated for that. He came to us at the rescue. We started treating him for it. So he only turns left. That's all he can do. So we're starting an interesting kind of physical therapy to see if we can fix this to help him with his balance. We've set up tubes... And those tubes are set up like this, right? And we put him in this way and then lock the tube together so he can only turn right to go forward. And it's working. He was actually able to go around the tube multiple times in a right direction. So we're trying to get him used to being able to do both turns to help him with his balance, to help him with that. And it seems like he can do it. So we're going to keep doing this and trying to get him to, to move different directions that way and, and work with that. Also, we gave him soup on his own yesterday, and um, he managed to take a poop in the middle of his enclosure, roll in the soup, and then roll in the poop. So two hours later, when we got home, we came home to him completely covered in poop and soup, which was wonderful, frankly. So he got a bath. He got a bath yesterday. Yes. The old poop and soup. Yes. The old poop and soup. Yeah. It's rough. It's rough. Some say he's still in the tube, but all right. Yeah, old poop and soup. But no, he's getting better. He's doing better. Yeah, it's not good. But no, he had it over his whole face. Yeah, here's the hypertube Henry. Here we go. Let me grab this. So this is him doing that. There he goes. We can lock those two together and be like, cool, there we go. And now he can move to the right. And you can see he's kind of struggling with it a little bit. Because his, his natural movement is to the left. So getting him to forcefully move to the right means that he's gonna it's going to help him with that balance. Yep. Well won. <laughs> okay, that's the most clever comment out of all of them. Well won, dude. What's the matter with you? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, by the way, um, I'm going to TwitchCon in uh, Rotterdam. I'm going to I'm going to be in TwitchCon at you. So if you guys want to meet me, I will be there, and you can come hang out. So we'll do that. Yeah, I found out that uh, flying into Rotterdam is impossibly expensive. It was six thousand dollars, and I was like, nope, ain't doing that shit. So I'm landing in London and then taking the train. So I'm going to do that instead. Yeah, taking the train instead because apparently you can do that there. 
here in the United States, not really a possibility. So I'm going to take the train instead. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah, that was absurd. It's crazy expensive. London was the cheapest. Yeah, London was the cheapest option. And, depending if the Mons could go, they could meet me on the train. And I'll go together. Kind of fun. Oh. Will Thor ever go to Australia? Maybe. I like Australia, but I have to tell you, the drop bears are terrifying. And by drop bear, I mean your children. They have no filter, and they have the same amount of sarcastic wit as you. You know that's true. Terrifying creatures. Deeply horrifying. Also, Baja was there. Baja was terrifying. No, I do want to go to Australia, though. I want to meet all my buddies, man. Like, this man knows too much about us. I do. I do. To be real with you, if I do go to Australia, we have to play Goon of Fortune. At least once. At least once, I have to do this. I find that to be mandatory to my experience. It has to happen. Yeah. Oh, no, indeed. <laughs> you have no idea how much this American knows. You have no idea. I'm ready. Yeah. Do a shoey? I'll do a shoey in Australia, indeed. I would do it in Australia, 100%. How could you not, right? You stay in London for a bit? I think I'm just going to land and get on the train like a, four hours later. I think that's pretty much all that I can do. Maybe I'll look at things and take pictures. Be like an awful tourist, you know? Who is a hills hoist this, these days? People who want to be a go play Goon of Fortune, dude. Or Wheel of Goon, depending on where you are in Australia. Avoid the fairy bread? Hmm. Yeah, I heard about the, the bridge collapse in Baltimore. I watched the video earlier. It's wild to me. It's very sad. Incredibly sad. Train ride is pretty chill and amazing. Really? Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to Rotterdam on the train, which is nice. Beans is now cage raging. He is so angry. Would you like to see him? He wants to see Beans. He wants to see Beans. You want to see Beans? All right. Give me a second. Give me just a moment. I'll grab him. Little Beans. Little Beans, man. Beans. Here he is. Hello. So there's Beans. His neck was shaved and his belly was shaved, and he's so crazy. But he's got. Ooh, 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 ooh. You see how active he is? Oh, sir, I'm gonna have to hold you. You can't do this. You can't do it. Calm. Calm. He's just as strong as he used to be. Oh, you're so clever. Oh, my God. Sir. Sir. Sir, please. Sir, please. Sir, please. <laughs> oh, beans. It's okay. He wants to play so badly. I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go put him back. I know, he can't play. He can't. It's dangerous for him right now. Cannot play with him. He's now trying to destroy the cage. So no, uh, can't play with him right now. He has to rest. He had major surgery. And he had. we have to wait. I know. It's going to take a little while. It's going to take a little while. And that's okay. Just needs to happen, you know. Since the Eurostar actually ends in the Netherlands, it's get on, sit for four hours or so and exit, see the countryside in 20 minutes of Steam Deck, because tunnel. 
French countryside is lovely. Belgium is an experience. And then Dutch countryside is flat and cows. I actually prefer it over flying to London. Really? Much less stress. Interesting. Flat and cows. How's Grandpa doing? He's doing fine. He's just mostly blind. All right, next. Edward Eddie Riggs with 1,400 bits said love your vids and shorts on YouTube and was finally able to catch you live. Also love learning so much about being a dev and coder with you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. You're awesome as hell, dude. Ice White with 500 bits said hey dude. Hey. Just wanted to thank you. Just got my first job as a junior pen tester and you really contributed to me going out there and getting it. Hell I've been yeah. super interested in the red side of life for a long time but only just taken the leap. Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome as shit. The underscore bacon underscore dragon with 500 bits said on the earlier topic of dumpy emotes getting banned. Do you think they would ban an animated dumpy emote of either missing no? From Pokemon or a still image of an actual dumpster just moving around in a circular motion. Okay, a dumpster moving around in a circular motion is hilarious. But how would you do a missing no dumpy? How could that possibly- Oh, you put a dumpy in chat, it's gonna die now. Yeah. It's kinda how that works, dude. That's how that works. It's very funny. Sir. That is illegal. Beans is being illegal. No, I actually mean it. You, you may not realize this, but every one of those animated dumpies that shows up in chat, they actually do ban them. It's not a joke. If it's animated, it will get removed. I'm, I'm not joking. This is not a joke. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm serious about this. They delete them. And then they send emails saying you're not allowed to have those. It happens every day. Like, actually every day. <laughs> you're getting every one of those emotes removed, is what's happening. Yeah. Yep. So, Beans right now is biting every side of the cage and trying to tear it open. Stop it. Nope. He's doing what we call cage raging. He wants out very badly. He's so angry, but we can't let him out. We just can't. He needs more time in there. He has to he has to wait. Yeah, that was audible. You can hear the you can hear the metal, yeah. Yeah, actually it was loud enough you heard one. Yep. No, not go beans. We we need him to not do that. He's so excited right now. Because he to be real with you, he likely had this thing in him for months. It was likely in him for months, slowly increasing in size over time. And he finally feels good for the first time in months. And he's so excited, frankly. So, like, we just have to wait for him to be healed enough that it makes sense. And then we can go forward and let him out. And we'll do it all on stream. We're going to do, a like, a whole thing of, like, it's Bean's release moment. And you just go crazy, you know? Yeah. Brain removal? Yes. We removed his brain. Yes. William Kurokami with 10 euros said, Hi Thor, I hope the next oh. CBT for Hardbound is coming along nicely. I know it's hard <laughs> to get it. into the CBT because so many people want to take part and spots are limited. Anyway, have this, Swaldemort. Stop using that acronym for closed beta test. Stop. Stop doing that. I swear to God, our whole industry needs to stop doing this. Why are they like this? Also, you're a Swaldemort, I swear to God. Insane to me. Totally not chip with 1000 bits said, Hey, Mr. Computer Dude, I wanted to ask for some advice. Hi. I want to get into software development, but I am struggling to not only start, but stay dedicated and consistent to learning. Hmm. All the videos I have watched Insane. feel like I am just copying and pasting what the instructor tells me. I don't yes. feel like I am learning. And how do you manage your time? ADHD is a biscuit. So to be real with you, um... You want to get into software development, but you're struggling to not only start, but stay dedicated and consistent to learning. 
from what you've told me here, it is likely that you're stuck in what we call tutorial hell. Right? You're doing a bunch of tutorials. You find the tutorials really boring. You do a tutorial so you can do another tutorial. And maybe one day you get to start your own project. Stop doing these. Stop it. Stop doing tutorials. Stop doing this. Instead, start a shitty project. Get stuck on your shitty project. It could be anything. Be like, I want to make an object move. Whatever. Doesn't matter. And when it gets stuck, refer to the documentation. And when the documentation doesn't help you, then, and only then, do a tutorial. And when the tutorial gets you unstuck, then move on. And stop doing the tutorial. Even if you're in the middle of it, stop doing it. Walk away from it. The tutorial is a crowbar. It is there to unstick you. We don't binge at crowbars. It doesn't make any sense. You need a reason to do the tutorial. You don't just do it on its own. If the, tutor, if the tutorial doesn't help, then you've had a shitty one. Go find another one. Right? Yeah, he's going crazy. He's raging super hard. So, like, this is a pretty common thing, right? And if you're dealing with, like, ADHD symptom stuff, you should talk to a professional about that if you can't handle that. But something that may help you is writing down lists and tasks of things that you should do for the day. And we found that a really easy way to do this is get five tasks together. Put those on a piece of paper. And you know what the first task should always be? First task should be make a list. So when you finish making that list, you mark that one off. Feels good to do that. Now you got four things left. Big Foti with 500 bits said evening Thor from Naturally Deadly House here. Any insight into the gold buying systems that pick up on the current plague of gold buying happening in WoW Sod etc. Oh, yeah. Seems to be a lot of repeat offenders getting away with blue murder. I mean, Appreciate yeah. your content, mate. It's a very refreshing change to my current roster of content consumption. P. That's because, it, so what you're seeing there is a very small part of a very big business. Um, gold selling in video games is actually a cartel. It's a number of cartels. There's three major ones, but there's probably a lot of minor ones as well. So when we're dealing with these, yeah, they're actually, it's actually cartels. It's these big, massive crime syndicates that are doing this. And they work with a lot of different teams. So those teams will be like account takeover. They'll be brute forcing of passwords. They'll be uh, ones using two-factor bypass kind of stuff or trying to find ways to wait until your two-factor is off. They run server infrastructures for these types of things. Some of them will run bots and video games to just farm. Some of them will run like scams and video games to try and get people to engage with them and they take over the account. There's all kinds of different ways of doing it. But all of these lead back to the same source. It's one big, massive business that makes millions and millions of dollars a year. Because what they'll do is they'll go to areas of the world where those people make a certain amount of money and they go, hey, I'm going to give you 10% more money to do this instead. And of course people are going to do that. It's a job. That's how that goes, right? So they do the job and they get 10% more money and they live much better. That's it. That's how it works. So like, yeah, it's legit. Car yeah, they're, they're massive multi, multi-billion dollar businesses, dude. I wouldn't do it. You would. You 100% would. If you live in a scenario where your life is absolute shit, and someone comes by and goes, hey, run these programs. All you have to do is run these automated programs and just make sure these keep running and they give you 10% more wage than any other job in your entire village. Yeah, 100% you're going to do it. That's how this shit works. Have these been identified yet? Yeah. Most of them run out of China. And the reason they run out of China is because in China, in-game fraud is not fraud. Real money fraud, you can be put to death in China. In-game fraud, they don't give a shit. It's not against the law. If it's not against a Chinese company, no one cares. That's a normal thing there. So because of this, they just become more common there. That's it. That's the only reason. But no, we deal with this shit all the time. I'll give you a good example of, of us dealing with these major, major groups, right? So when I was at a AAA company, we had a problem with an authenticator bypass. Authenticator is like two-factor, right? And the two-factor bypass was really bad. I remember it was coming in and uh, CS was contacting us. and like, hey, somebody actually said that their account got taken over and it did get taken over, but they have a two-factor on it. And I was like, that's freaking weird. All right. Next day. Hey, there's five more of them. Next day. Hey, there's 80 more of them. Hey, there's a thousand of them. Ah, oh, shit. Right? Because now something is really, really wrong. There was a two-factor bypass, meaning two-factor was not protecting the account. So we're trying to figure this shit out. And we're like, okay, this is really, really bad. Two-factor is not effective on people's accounts. What the hell is going on? We start digging, digging, digging. And we can't figure this out. And it's getting worse. And every day it's getting worse. Like 10,000, 20,000 people were like, oh my God, what the hell is happening? This is scary, right? And we just couldn't find the vault. And then somebody popped up on the forums. And he said, hey, I know how the two-factor bypass works. Here is how it works. The reason that I am telling you 
is because the cost of gold has dropped so significantly that our entire group can no longer make money. And the other two major cartels are abusing this so heavily and they're being short-sighted. And all of us are going to lose in the end. So please fix this. That bypass was real. It was completely real. That was the Vuln. And we fixed it. And the price of gold on, on different sources around the internet for real money transaction went back up as a result because gold was too easy to steal while the two-factor authentication issue was around. And that guy went to go back to making gold, making money selling gold. Yeah, you've definitely heard this before because I've talked about this before. It wasn't even no honor among thieves. This guy was smart. He realized that the long-term implications of this vulnerability would have destroyed their income. That's all that was. Yeah, in-game gold, dude. Did they get banned? We have no idea who they were. They're using a burner forum account. Smart. It's a smart way to do it, dude. Yeah. So to be real with you, this shit is way more common and way, way more complicated than you could possibly imagine. It's not just some dude in a basement. It's massive organized crime doing this. Yes. It's crazy shit. And I have spent a lot of my career fighting this stuff. <laughs> like, it's crazy, crazy. There's a 90% chance the other two got mad? Oh, yeah. It's like scam centers. It's the same. It's just like scam centers. Same shit. Organized crime, dude. Is there any reason you're using two-factor anymore? Ye yes. What? Did you... I, I feel like some of you guys got out of it that two-factor is not good. That is... No no, a two-factor bypass is in that specific implementation of two-factor. There was a vulnerability that allowed two-factor to not be relevant. Two-factor is what you should be putting on everything. Every, everything. Everything. They really classified as crimes. Computer crime, yes, because they gain access to other accounts that they shouldn't have access to. Uh, with an intent to cause harm, which causes monetary damage to the businesses involved. So yes, computer crime. Yep. Yeah, the vulnerability is pretty funny. Uh, basically what it was, what it came down to be, and this is this is hilarious, is you would put in a very specific code, which I'm not going to tell you what that was. It was a very specific value. You would hit save my password. And then for some reason, it would inject that specific one into the database for this. So then the next time you go to do this, you would put in the exact same specific code. And it would say, cool, your two-factor is correct. That was not good. <laughs> <laughs> it was really dumb and most of these things are it was just bad it was not a sequel injection though no. it was not it was actually it was not an injection attack it was saving a specific value in an odd way or specifically that it was not injection yeah what is this what is this strange disagreement Disagree. Two-factor not on everything. Sometimes the de-anonymization is not worth the data on an account. No. Put two-factor on everything. I have, I have been a hacker for the last 20 years. If you don't put two-factor on something, and eventually that thing gets knocked over, which it will, I will have access to that account. You have given me a thread to pull on the sweater that is you. Two-factor everything. Two-factor everything. Strangest take I've ever seen. De-anonymization. Jesus Christ. My man thinks he's secret on the internet. Oh. Taffine with 500 bits said why did the Russian emperor's comedy career fail? Because nobody could understand his sarcasm. That's pretty good. <laughs> sarcasm, dude. So I think we're going to update some things. I think we're going to update some stuff. I'm going to make this level 50. Save that out. Save this out. We're going to go back over to here. We're actually going to put Stonebeard over on this side. Grab that, move to this, and we'll say, what is that key rot mod called? 
Runestone of the First Father. There we go. Those will both be 50 now. Yeah, no SMS two-factor is not a good idea. Um, I don't use SMS two-factor on anything unless the website demands SMS two-factor, and even then it's not a good thing, frankly. Um, I would use it over using nothing, but it's still last place. Use use software to find two-factor and hardware to find two-factor. Those are the ways to protect yourself, 100%. Yeah, Authy is fine. Nothing wrong with it at all. Yep. Nothing nothing is wrong with it at all. Authy is good. You definitely use that. Yeah, SMS because you lost your old phone. Yeah. There's actually a really interesting one that, that we saw quite a bit of. Um, here's, here's a good example. Let's say that you enter a prompt like to log in, right? A login prompt on a website. And let's say that it has password and it has username. And then after this, it verifies if your password and username is correct. And then it gives you two-factor. Is this correct? Is this the correct pass-through? You have username. You have password. It verifies these two. And then it does two-factor. No, the answer is not depends. The answer is no, this is not correct. And here's the reason why. If you do this this way... I will sit down and set up a huge massive network of bots, geolocate them to your location using VPNs. And this is very common. We saw this at scale. We saw this as in takeover of hundreds of thousands of accounts at scale. What they were doing is they were geolocating to the locations that these people were using other information. And they set up bots to try and log into their account every couple of minutes. So it would bypass any of the filtration that's going on there. Constantly changing IPs, but also doing it with the geolocation so that geofencing wouldn't stop it, which is usually a normal thing. And then what happens there is eventually they get the password. Eventually they will. Either through brute force or either through using other passwords and other services. They won't get all of them, but they'll get some of them. Then they set up a new account, and that new bot logs into this with the correct credentials every five minutes, and then logs out. And what it's checking for is it's checking to see if this two-factor exists or not. If the two-factor isn't there, then it takes over your account and applies its own two-factor. And you've lost your account. And people remove two-factor all the time because of, oh, they change phones or anything like this. The reason this attack was so dangerous is because it didn't happen all at once. It happened piecemeal over time based on when the user had disconnected their phone. So it's harder to track. I caught it. I caught it because I had access to the logs. It was actually the first week I had access to the logs, and I was like, you guys see this shit? And they're like, what's that? And I was like, H here. And I wrote up a giant report. And I was like, there's a lot of accounts that have been compromised. <laughs> it was bad. It was really, really bad. So the better way to build this, this workflow, and this is actually the change that we made, was this. See this? You put it there. And if anything in this is wrong, you say something with your credentials is incorrect. And if all of this is correct, you log them in. That's it. That's how you fix this. You do not verify username and password until you have two-factor prompt up. It's funny. Yep. Single sign-on's great. I agree with that. What if two-factor is not enabled there? Then the user is vulnerable. There's not much you can do. Yep. You you want your users to have two-factor, which is why Blizzard and other companies incentivize you to use two-factor. Why do you think they give you an in-game pet in World of Warcraft for adding a two-factor to your account? Do you know why? It's not just to protect you. It's because it costs them less money over time. Because the inevitable CS ticket to solve the problem of your account being taken over won't happen when you have two-factor in your account. That's why. They're spending less money on resources because your account is more secure.
Yeah, you also get more backpack space too, yeah. Yeah, never tell the attackers what part of the login they have wrong. Just say, something went wrong. You- some of your credentials are incorrect. Not your username is wrong. No, don't tell them that shit. Do not ever tell me which part of your, the login was incorrect. And I'll be like, ooh, piece of candy. Like, you don't want that. You don't want me to know that. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Kurosaki with 500 bits said Yarchir 500 here again with another question. So I've been working on a game project off and on for three years now, and nice. my problem is, I'm not sure how long the demo should be. The okay. game has a persona style system, where days are for building your relationships with NPCs and nighttime in a dungeon to find the boss. I have the first chapter completely written and all the voice lines but it's not fully developed and I want to get it out there. It's not available anywhere yet, save pre-builds in my Discord. Why don't you do one or two days of that day-night cycle? I don't know how long that actually works, frankly. But, you know, if you give... What you want to do with the demos, you want to give them a full smorgasbord of all the features of your game, right? All the intended features. So if you're showing off all of those features in a single day, because you have a full full day-night cycle that actually handles all the mechanics and everything like that, then that might give them a full understanding of the features of your video game. So give them that. Yeah. Uh, the best possible reaction you can get to your demo is I'm mad at it because I wanted to play more. Great. Buy the game, right? That's that's exactly what you want from a demo. That's exactly what you want from a demo, is people wanting to play more. Yeah. From RCE, shut up. So dumb. So underscore Chikoma with 500 bits said, is this how you do the TTS? Yep. If so, how good is your vision with glasses? Is it 2020? I don't know. I recently had to get new glasses prescription because everything is double without them. It's horrible. My glasses are real wild, frankly. I actually have to get a new set of glasses because they gave me, um, they put blue light filter on it and I hate the blue light filter. Like, I really, really hate the blue light filter. Yeah, they had to do like 3X prism on mine. It's uh, kind of grim. But I put them on and I was like, I started getting like really suspicious because nothing felt real because I was finally seeing objects as like 3D instead of slightly two objects and suddenly everything was like ah it feels like I'm wearing 3D glasses I don't like that shit <laughs> it felt too real I was like this is fake I know it's fake by the way that it's real you know like didn't feel right felt real bad <clears throat> you got ads gonna wait all right, I'm going to go get some water. I'll be right back.
I have returned. Oh, man. I just had the weirdest, weirdest <laughs> kind of experience I think I've had here. Um, so I just looked outside out back, and I have a fence in my backyard, right? And I just see, like, this child climbing over my fence. And I was like, what the shit? So I opened the back door, and I was like, what the hell are you doing? And this this thing turned around. It's just, it's a, the fattest raccoon I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's close the door. I was like, okay. You just have that, you know, whatever you whatever you're doing over there, that's yours, dude. Like he was like It's a fat raccoon, dude. It's a massive raccoon. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, well carry on then, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It's terrifying. No picture? No, I went back inside. Raccoons are scary as shit, dude. Raccoons are vicious little dudes, you kidding me? Anode underscore KK with 500 bits said Thor, you're saying you have a folder of nudes, but do you have a folder of dudes that you print before you send them? To evacuate, of course. I don't have a folder of dudes. Although I do 3D print dudes a lot in Helldivers. Send dudes, chat. Send dudes. That's how we win Helldivers, you send dudes. <laughs> it's true. F1NCHIV with 500 bits said what are your thoughts on Valve's anti-cheat? Mainly with CS2. Especially when people experience more and more cheaters every day in the matchmaking mode. To be real with you, a lot of the cheating space right now is pretty bad. And the reason why is because methods are evolving very, very quickly. And there's not a lot of really good solutions currently. Kernel level NA cheat I don't think is the right direction. It's kind of funny, too, because I, I talk about kernel-level anti-cheat giving access all the time, but that's not the entire point of this. Kernel-level anti-cheat has full access to your computer and hardware. So do as any other, other program. There's a difference between this and another program, though. Who knows what the difference is between kernel-level anti-cheat and a normal program running on your computer? What's the difference? <clears throat> There's one major difference. Kernel takes over? No, nope. same. There we go. It's permission. It's permission. The reason why I don't like this is this one you invited in. This program, they are not allowed to access the memory space of the rest of your machine. And I know that because let me tell you, it would have been real easy for me to catch a lot of people if we could see those out of process, like map hacks and shit. But I wasn't allowed to read the memory space of the rest of the computer. I could only see, read the memory space of StarCraft, of WarCraft. So, kernel level anti-cheat ends up stepping in here, you give it permission, and now it can read the memory space of the rest of the machine, and you can catch a lot more things. Now, it wasn't a matter of could, it was a matter of should. Both of these can. One of them has permission to do so in a legal setting. That's the difference. I don't like giving permission to have them read the rest of the memory space of my machine. Either of them could, but this one is not allowed to do so, if that makes sense. <clears throat> yep. I find it to be incredibly bad. It's like inviting a vampire in. I don't want to invite the vampire in. That is the key difference. Yep. What are your thoughts on Vanguard for Valorant? Same shit. Colonel level is not the way, dude. What if... I, I love that every time I say this, every time I talk about this, the first response is, what if the vampire is hot? But, but, but what if the vampire's hot, chat? Uh... Too horny to live. That's what you are. Ridiculous. Ridiculous, dude. We've all played BG3. Alright. I get it. The vampire's hot. I understand. I understand. Ridiculous. Way to stumble into, don't worry about it. Ask your parents. <laughs> oh, man. Asterion approves, God damn it, dude. Bingflop with 500 bits said, Do you know any cool games that are fully voice controlled for my disabled friend? Fully voice controlled. You know, I don't, but you know who I know would? 
me show you this guy. I don't know that much about that area, but I know someone who does, and their name is Stephen Spawn. Hold him up. Stephen Spawn. Uh, why won't you show up? God damn it. Spawn. My own buddy won't show up on my friends list. Very cool. Very neat. Steven Spawn. Why is this not? Yeah, there's his emote. But why? You know what? Screw it. We'll just do it that way. Here. I'm going to link his channel. No, it's not blocked. Hey, it's not blocked. There you go. So Steven Spawn is actually an awesome human being. He is physically disabled. Found his, finally found his Twitter. There we go. He's physically disabled, and he's actually the senior director for Able, Able Gamers. And he streams on Twitch. He actually uses, like, one finger and a hat to play most games. He's got a very limited range of movement, but he will kick your ass in video games. He's actually quite good. Um, he used to play Rocket League all the time. I don't, know, I don't know what he plays anymore. I haven't been able to catch his stream for a long time. So if you have physical disability, talk to him. Reach out to Able Gamers. Yeah, it's kind of wild shit, frankly. Yeah, he used like a head device for a while for like camera track stuff because he can move his neck a little bit. So there's a whole thing for that. But no, he's really, he's really awesome, dude. Thank you for the rating party at 23, by the way. I just got talking to, done talking to Mark, founder of the weekend. Oh, dude, they're, Able Gamers is amazing. And Steven Spawn is freaking rad. So if you have a physical disability or you want to find something so that your friend with a physical disability can play stuff, then talk to these guys. Because they know so much more about that space than I do. And infinitely, infinitely more about that space than I do. Because that's 100% their realm and their life, right? Yeah. Yep. And ban that person. Easy. Yeah, easy ban on that guy. <sighs> Too quick, streamer, man? Yeah. Yeah. I'm real fast on those ones because it's just dog shit behavior. Who? Uh, someone came in and said and made disparaging comments about Russian people. I'm going to be super real with you. Um, I don't give a shit who you're being racist against. That shit never flies here. I don't, I don't care what side of a war you are on. I don't care about your geolocation. No one shows their spawn point. And if you want to discount an entire race of people based on where they live, where they were born, just because of geopolitics or a current conflict going on, you don't belong here and I don't care about you. 100%. Don't be a piece of shit. Don't be a piece of shit, no matter who it is against. I don't care. That will never fly. And I will remove you instantly myself. The mods can't even get to you fast enough. That's how that shit goes. So, they didn't choose their spawn point. Don't be a piece of shit. Yep. And then 100% goes for both sides of that. Yeah, rule number one, don't be a dick. Yeah, it'll always be that way. Like, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I don't I don't care what nationality you are. I don't care what your sexuality is. I don't care about your identity. I don't care about any of that. You are always accepted here because this is a community about learning shit, <clears throat> about bettering yourself. And there are certain aspects of every one of us that we didn't choose. So if you hate someone based on something they didn't choose, it's not a good thing. That's not something I want here ever. So be nice. Be, be cool. Help other people learn shit, right? You're never going to get any type of positive benefit by spreading hate, even when you think that hate is righteous in the moment. Because all it does is it opens the door for that in return. It's never going to be beneficial. You tear down the entire human race every time you do it. It's not good. It's never going to be good. It's dumb as hell. It's a really stupid-ass move. Really stupid move. Who didn't choose to be goblins? I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. Also, there's only one politics allowed. Like, only one thing in politics is allowed here. Skyrim belongs to the Nords. It's true. It's true. That's the only one. Yep. <laughs> oh. I like it. You're like, hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, it's funny as hell. 
Now hold on a second. Now hold on a second. It's so funny, dude. <laughs> oh, Super Earth as well. Yeah, we gotta have democracy as well, it's true. Remember, vote early, vote often. Democracy. What are the- there's no politics on Super Earth. You know, you receive your piece of paper that tells you what you're supposed to vote for, and then you vote for it. There's no politics involved. Done. Simple. Democracy. Yeah. It's managed democracy, dude. It's all managed for you, you know? You delegate it away. No longer a problem. <laughs> Welcome to Super Earth, dude. <clears throat> yeah. If working overtime on AAA games with giant budgets is the only way to succeed, then maybe the industry deserves to die, says RPG veteran David Gator. You know... I agree. I 100% agree. Easy. I worked, I worked two years straight of overtime on StarCraft II Wings of Liberty. I worked two years straight of overtime. I watched multiple people on that team get divorced. I watched people walk out of the studio and never return. I watched people have breakdowns in the office. Because we worked six to seven days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day, every day. And the reason why that happened is because our department thought it was a good idea and thought it was possible to, quote, get ahead of development. We were QA. QA is a reactionary team. You can't get ahead of development. You can't test shit that's not ready. It made no goddamn sense. None of us, none of us thought it made sense. And yet we had to work it. It was horrible. Horrible experience. And to be real with you, to this day, if I go and open up my Battle at Launcher, go grab this real fast. As a result of all of that, uh, my login session's expired. I don't want to log back in. I'm not doing it. I'm just going to leave it closed. Uh, to this day, the Battle at Launcher, I actually have StarCraft and all StarCraft, any logos, any of that shit, it's hidden on my list. Every other game is up there. StarCraft is not there. I don't even want to look at the logo, dude. So yeah, no. Yeah, if, if the industry doesn't know how to survive without treating workers like shit, then maybe it shouldn't be making games. Any studio that's like that, 100% should not be making games. Because the, the cycle of overwork people, pay them like shit, and then fire everyone after the project is over, that's awful. There's a reason that I went the way that I did with indie. There's a reason the way that I pay my people is like this. is because that shit is terrible. Because the things that I saw in AAA were unacceptable, and I won't repeat that, you know? That's sad? Yeah, but it led to me having a studio where people are treated correctly, you know? That's the whole thing. Tell it to the public account industry, it doesn't really change anything. It's a horrible way to treat employees. Horrible way to treat employees. Especially in a creative position, you're just going to burn them out. Burn them out badly. Always makes me glad I never went to AAA. Yeah, I'm glad I did. Because I learned a lot, right? I learned a lot of what not to do, frankly. Wasn't that exactly what the Dragon Age dev said? Yeah, it's what we're talking about. How do you make money? You don't have partners, do you? So, this is what we do, right? Of 100% of the sales for Heartbound, which the game has sold about 60,000 copies, it's a little bit over 60,000, I take 50%. Shay, our artist, gets 25%. Stein, our musician, gets 25%. All the music you hear on our stream, all of it, all that's from the OST. 100% of the OST sales go to Stein. I manage that on Steam, but Stein, Stein gets all the money, our musician. When Shay makes the art book, 100% of the art book is going to go to Shay. Of my 50%, I pay for all the software and the hardware for the team. They need samples, they need hardware, they need a new drawing tablet, whatever the hell it's going to be. I pay for it out of my share. And I pay for all the legal fees, such as trademarks and everything else. They have zero risk, and they get paid as long as the game is on sale. That's how that works. And this system, being able to do it this way, means that they are constantly getting paid, they're constantly getting covered, and they have nothing to worry about. That's why I run it that way. It's a way better system. Passive income, dude. 
you find money wise? Yes. The amount of people that have shown up in this stream, like the amount of you guys that are here, here's here's what's changed in my life, right? I went from like, hey, I'm making it, everything's great, to okay, now everyone gets to make it. That's what changed in the last four or five months. So the first thing that I did was I started a corporation. Corporation is going to give us tax benefits and allow us to do a whole bunch of stuff. In fact, today, after the stream, I have a meeting with the money manager so that I can go and start a account for healthcare. Because what we're doing is we're hiring on the moderators full time, giving them 401ks, or as you know, in the, in the UK, it's known as a pension, right? And then also giving them healthcare. That's what I'm doing with this. On top of this, I've gotten a piece of land and I'm already starting the process of constructing a facility so that we can take our ferret rescue from 35 ferrets currently to 100 by the end of the year. That's what I'm doing with all the money. That's the whole idea. It's setting us up in a position where everybody gets to win and we get to keep doing the cool things that we're already doing but more. So yeah. Oh, on top of this, we've also changed our entire donation system. Thank you for the hundred dollars to the mods, by the way, Xavier. God damn. Thank you very much. What you just saw there, that's part of the new donation system. So let me pull this up. I've changed this entirely, so now a hundred percent of the donations through Pally go to the moderators. Number one, I get zero percent of that. None of that goes to me. And then also Whenever you guys do any of the donations to go into TTS, that goes into a queue. All of that is queued up. Every time I hit that button, that money goes to me. If I don't hit the button for yours, there's 64 in the queue right now. If I don't get those, if I don't get to your message, and it doesn't show up here, which, by the way, it'll show up here with your name, the message you sent, and a timestamp, so you know exactly what it is, even if you have to leave the stream, it goes into the debt tracker. If I manage to get it to zero, I keep all the money for the day. Nice. If I don't, whatever is left over goes into this debt. When this hits 10k next, we're going to give all of that to the Godot Foundation. The last one was $7,500 to Ferret Dreams and Rescue, or Ferret Dreams Rescue and Adoption. So if $7,500 was donated to them, that shit goes to charity. I didn't earn it. I don't get to keep it. So that's how we handle all of the money with this. Because to be real with you, like, you guys have given me more than I could ever hope to have. So, let's go do some cool shit with it. Right? That's the whole point. And do it fully transparently where you can see every goddamn piece of it. So there's no no worry. You know, Godot is a charity. Godot is, yeah, no, Godot is a free and open source foundation for the Godot like engine. So giving it to them means that they can go and get a bunch of cool features in Godot that helps every game developer forever. That's the whole point with that. Awesome, awesome team. Awesome shit. Yeah. So like my whole idea with this is let's do all this cool shit with this because I don't need all of it, you know, obviously. And at the same time, we can do we can do it all transparently. We guys get to see all of it. So there's no concern of like, oh man, maybe he's not doing it. Maybe he's storing the money, any of that kind of shit. Yeah, no. We do everything with it. So my my hope is to hire every moderator on it once. My hope is to do that. We're gonna start with five. And the reason why I'm doing it that way is because entertainment is scary. Entertainment is a scary business. If 80% of you guys disappeared today, I don't want to have to hire on a bunch of people and then have to fire people. That would be terrible. So we take it slow, we do it slowly, we do it the right way, instead of having to do a bunch of risk. So bring on five people at once, and then over time, maybe increase it. The other thing I'm reaching out to is we're doing sponsorship stuff through SideQuest. SideQuest handles my sponsors for me, makes my life easy, really simple. And those sponsors make it so I can hire on more of our mods without having to worry as much. So that's what I'm doing with that, right? So like all of this is, it's literally just trying to be as transparent as possible and do, do shit for the people that have made this possible. I'm just, an, the best way to put it, I am just another employee of the business, just like everybody else. I just have a different role. That's all. Thank you for the $20 to the mods, dude. You kick ass. Thank you. Thank you very much, dude. What a boss. First streamer of the quota. <laughs> right. Oh, I got a quota, dude. <laughs> I got to get through these TTS or I'll die. Right? <laughs> totally not chip with 500 bits said boogers. Boogers? I love that. All of that. Everything to talk about. And the next message is boogers, dude. Proud of you. Proud of you. 
Incredible. Incredible message. <laughs> Arshiapina with 500 bits said all my game projects end up with me over optimizing everything and losing interest to the project. Any tips on preventing that? Yeah, I mean, if you're over optimizing and you're not having fun doing that, you're probably optimizing the fun out of it, as funny as that is. I like optimizing, though. Optimizing is the fun for me. Like, Heartbound has a ridiculously efficient system going on. Like, let me give you something weird. Heartbound runs at 60 FPS on an Android watch. It also runs at 60 FPS on a smart fridge, which is weird. It's a weird thing. That's a weird level of optimization to have, but I, I find that to be highly entertaining, right? So if if you're coming to the, to the point where you're like, oh, I'm over-optimizing the shit out of everything and I, I don't have fun with it anymore, maybe stop optimizing it, right? It's okay for it to be a little bit shitty. It's okay. Do you want to see the... It's actually on a fridge. That's not a joke. Do you want to see the... Who hasn't seen the fridge video? Okay, we're going to show it. It's very funny. Hold up. It's very, it's very funny. Also, thank you for the $20 to the moderators again on Morbid. You're awesome as hell. Thank you, seriously. Let me see if this is too loud. It might be too loud. Let's see. If you get Heartbound working on a smart fridge, I will send you a challenge call. Game on. Thank you for the five gifted subs, dude. You rock. That was the that was actually the anti piracy measure. Carbon runs on a smart fridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's my favorite. Who did this? Don't worry about it. Could be anyone, dude. Could be anyone. It's very funny. It's very funny. Yeah, challenge coin achieved. Yes. That person actually has two of them. Yeah. No, it wasn't me. It was not me. I do find it hilarious, though. Yeah, good editing. Really good editing. You would, you might expect such a thing from an editor, you know. Maybe. Why two? Because they got them. What's the challenge coin? I think I have one on my desk here somewhere. There we go. One of these. It's a coin. It's an official pirate software challenge coin. There it is. I gave one to Primogen, and I told him to stop being a little baby and go full-time content creator. Yeah. And it haunts him now. He's holding on to it, and he's like, what do I do? God damn it, you've challenged me. Yeah. I haunted him with it. That's right. And then he was like, okay, I'm going to try it. For a week, he did it. And he was like, I love this. He's got to do it, dude. He's got to. I basically no balls him with it. That's 100% it. Game dev is an OP job. They can run a game in a freaking lawnmower? I know, right? But no, it's optimization without limit can be dumb. But optimizing the fun out of everything for me is fun. As funny as that is. I love optimizing the fun out of stuff. I think it's hilarious. Getting your game or your systems to run on the stupidest thing possible is fantastic. It's the best. Soft Taco Raider with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, I am trying to pick out a username for HackerOne. 
My understanding is the community doesn't pick usernames that are identifiable to an individual. How would you recommend building professional reputation in Bug Bounty? Would love your thoughts. Much respect. Thanks. The way that you the way that you build professional reputation in Hacker One with Bug Bounty programs is just go to bounties, go to programs that don't have money. Go to ones that are like just for cred or just for like t-shirts or things like that and do them. Turning in a ton of vulnerabilities allows you to build up credibility on there. You get internal points and then eventually you'll start getting accepted into what are called private bounty programs. You will get emails to invite you to private bounty programs. Um, that's how I got to do some bounty stuff for the DoD. So honestly, super fun. You found a bunch of cool shit and those private programs pay a lot because there's very little competition and the vulnerabilities are quite plentiful most of the time. So, yeah, do it that way. Just just hit everything. Hack the planet, man. On top of that, I do love that Hacker One also looks like Hackeroni. And now you can't unhear that. And that's permanent. Yeah. Yep. No, I worked for the Department of Energy. I did bounty programs for the Department of Defense. Turbo Droef Toyter with 500 bits said, How would you recommend saving a lot of different accounts and passwords that would be available on different devices on the go? Should I trust the safety of a password manager with all my info? You can do whatever you want in that regard. I don't trust any of that shit. Ever. I don't log into critical accounts outside of my work machine. Ever. I do it on a home network. I don't do it over my phone. I don't even have access to my email on my phone. Ever. The only thing I have access to that is a uh, Telegram chats and Monster Hunter Now. And that's it. <laughs> that's all I use my phone for. And phone calls. Yeah. Yep. You can also use, I, I guess you can use like physical YubiKey, stuff like that. But to be real with you, no. <laughs> yeah. It's a hella level paranoia. Yeah. Kind of comes with the territory, right? That's, that's sort of how that goes, man. Oh, Bezos is here. It's time for Bezos. By the way, tomorrow is going to be a short stream. It's going to be a short stream tomorrow. I don't like it being a short stream. But the internet man wants to meet me at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. I have to go there to the to the place. We're going to be setting up. We're doing the walk around to determine how they're going to install the infrastructure for the internet. Yeah. So I have to go there at 10:30 a.m., which means I likely have to leave at about 9:30 a.m. Yeah, only a nine-hour stream. I know it sucks. I know, I know. Only a nine-hour stream tomorrow. I know. Yeah. Fiber install is insanely expensive. It is. Am I moving? Well, when we get the internet, yes. You've gone weak. I know. I've gone weak. Only nine hours in a stream. Ugh. Tomorrow's game day, dude? I know it's game day. I know. Tomorrow's gonna be, like, a lot of gaming. Today, I have a meeting at 1.30 p.m. For the healthcare accounts. Excited for that. I have so many emails. I 
Oh, you got it. Nice. Very nice. I have everything set up. We're good to go. Oh, gross. It's over Zoom. Zoom. Zoom meeting. Were there a few days of VODs missing? Oh, no, it's actually, it's actually kind of shitty. So, the VODs went missing because there was a bug. The filter for Pally, which is our donation system for the mods, did not filter out racial slurs. Twice. So because of this, I had to delete the VOD. However, after talking to Pally, we found out that the person who did these things had their payment information on file every single time, and one of the donations they did was actually an account here on Twitch, which was Tubby McCustardson. Neat. Yeah, they're banned now. They're also banned from Twitch now. Uh, not really a smart move to do that. Really not smart. So changing your name to the N-word and then donating, thinking that you were somehow anonymous when your payment information was the same across all of your transactions really was not a smart move. Brilliant human being. Yeah. So anyway, banned. Yeah. Kind of a dumbass. First username is fire, was fire. Banned now. Yeah. Really not a smart move, to be honest with you. But no, we've got that fixed now. Now it actually says, you know, the mods have been fed. I still see the name in the tip feed, but in the public one, it just says someone. It'll be anonymous, right? Yeah. I think I know what I want to do with this now. Rotten Maw Keys. Probably make that level 50. Hmm. Could that part be removed from the VOD for YouTube? No, our VODs on YouTube are too long, so because of that it cannot be automatically removed, can't be, you know, removed from that. So instead, we just have to delete the entire VOD. And it sucks, like we had to delete two VODs because of this, but like, whatever. It'll be fine. How come you know Pet++? Looks like this, it's cool. Go into Settings, and then Style Configurator, and you can set it to be whatever you want for any language that you want to. Yep. It's so my sleep schedule, five hours a day, every day. Byzantine Valkyrie with 500 bits said, Ya cheer 500 don't think I ever mentioned, but since hmm. I started watching you and left my job, I've started on my D&D homebrew projects again. That's Mental awesome. health has been doing better. I have nice. a class one want to release, but my real passion project will never see the light of day. It's based on a certain series starting with Z and ending with Elder. The class is something I've been refining for almost eight years now. Just need to get over my anxiety and do it. Shout out today for the game War World. That's freaking awesome, dude. That's awesome as shit. Hell yeah, man. Good job. Make cool shit. 100%. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give a reason to have rune carving over level level 40. And that reason is going to be the keys. So making incantations beyond will require levels 50, 60, 70, 80, 100. Right? 80, 90, 100. So I think that's going to work out. So do key rotten maw 1 and 5 are both going to take 50. The second tier will take rune carving level 60. Third tier, etc. Now I need to make a set of armors for this, which I can definitely do. I'm just going to go set it up real fast. I'm going to items. We'll go into sets. Where's my profession sets? What language is this? It's not a language. It's, it's YAML. It's just configuration. Think of it like JSON. There we go. Termite, grave robber, pescatarian, forager. What are we going to put for this one? 
I don't know, actually know what to put for this one. I think JSON's better than YAML. YAML is more human readable. That's the problem with it. That's the reason we use it, is that YAML's more human readable. They're about the same speed, too. It doesn't even matter. Secretly Java? I mean, Java's the back end of this. Java consumes this, so yeah. A rune carver. Call it Double Dave? I'm not calling it Double Dave. You freaking goblin, I swear to god, dude. It's not named Double Dave. Zultralord with 500 bits said hot dog. <laughs> Mateos42 with 500 bits said hey Thor, what would happen if Q-Day were tomorrow and everyone had access to the technology? What would that do to internet security? Would the internet break? Would there be chaos IRL? How unprepared would we be? When you're talking about Q-Day, what specifically do you mean? Because when you say Q-Day, I think of Star Trek Q. That's what I think of. And all I think of is, is literally Picard saying, what is it you want, Q? Unless you mean quantum computing, if that's the case. Yeah, quantum computing breaking RSA. Uh, everything would go to shit for a little bit, for sure. <laughs> If that would be a thing, if 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 quantum community breaks breaks RSA standards, yeah, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a nightmare for a little bit. Yeah, everything would kind of go to shit for a minute there. We'd adapt to it, but it would it would be a a mess for a little while. He thinks he means one shape which forms everything. Wait, what? Why are you like this? You know, everything would be everything would be jacked, dude. But quantum computing isn't really there. It's not, like, feasible yet. Um, it's I guess it's an interesting thought experiment to be like, what could happen for that? But it's unrealistic currently. It'd be, it's super unrealistic. Yeah, TLS handshakes are incredibly slow, comparatively. Yeah. What are you doing? Whiskey is staring at me. Little man. All right, go back to bed. Just hit his face. An algorithm would solve prime factorization. Forger over artisan. No, in this case, it's we're not using forger for this. We're using a different name for rune carver. Forger already exists. Ah, uh, that's like the rune carving. This is getting the rune carving equivalent. Rune carving exp. We're actually not going to be adding skill to this either, because skill is not a thing as part of rune carving. That is not a thing yet. Hmm. Mason, like stonemason? That's kind of cool. I like that. Etcher sounds cool, but it's also, it's hard to, it's weird to say, right? It doesn't pronounce very well. We can do something like runesmith. Yeah. Oh, hey, you just said it. I was thinking it, and then you said it. That's awesome as shit. Might do runesmith. Might do Runesmith. I think Runesmith is better. Master Edger. Really? 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 Of all the things you could choose, you choose this. Why? Why are you like this? Why are you like this? I can call it Edge Lord. God damn it. What is this? The hell is this? Why are people adding me with weird streamer drama? I don't give a shit. I don't care. 
I don't even care a little bit. Like, people are linking me video of Aiden Ross saying shit. I don't give a shit what Aiden Ross says. I don't give a shit, dude. Why are you sending me that? I don't care about that at all. Streamer drama is dumb, dude. Hope he gets banned. Like... <laughs> The only reason why I, him, why I want him to get banned is so he stops showing up in the timeline because I actually go and read stuff about like streaming news and stuff like that. And he just keeps showing up with some other horrific thing that he said, and everyone's like, "My God, he said a horrific thing." I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit even a little bit. Don't even give it a little bit. So now, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this to this message that was sent to me, and I'm gonna block that person on the internet, and I never have to see any stupid bullshit. From that person ever again. Curated. Curated and gone. Don't have to care. Outrageous. He's banned from Twitch? Yeah, he should be. Let's see. Yeah, you know, I think the item set is probably going to be Runesmith. I like the idea of Runesmith. It reminds me of the game Rocksmith. It's kind of fun. I dig that. Alright, Rune Carver set. We're gonna call it Rune Smith. Arcane Sculptor. Ooh. Sigil Weaver. I like that one more. Sigil Weaver. I like that infinitely more. Done. Good plan. Good. Yeah, lol, get curated, idiot. Exactly. That's how I feel every time, dude. Like, when you're blocking or banning people on the internet, um, you, I, I, I don't know why this is. There's some people that are like, they won't block or ban anyone. They're like, no, 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 I have to have all of this. I have to, I have to, because you know, if I block them, then they win. No, no, they don't, dude. If you block people, you win, because you don't have to deal with that stupid shit anymore. Like, what? Just get rid of that shit. Why? Yeah. Just get rid of that shit. Waste the time, dude. Blocking is free, bingo. But like to be real with you, it's it's important to hear other people's perspective. That is important. You should always be hearing perspectives that are outside of your own. But if you got some dude that's just like throwing slurs at you, like just block him. Who gives a shit? Like you're not going to gain anything from that interaction. You're not learning anything there. You're not gaining any intelligence. You're just watching a person devolve into the internet, right? It doesn't matter. That shit doesn't matter at that point. <laughs> All right. Armors. Where's me armor? Mages, Rangers, Botanist. There we go.
Okay, I think I got all those modifiers in there. We've got one more. And I think we're good. I think that all works really well. Nice. I hope you see this message just started college. I'd like to make software and stuff like that, but my guidance counselor put me in computer science. I think it doesn't really teach software engineers, but more like theory. And they're making a mistake following what they said to study. Not necessarily, you can do both, but at the same time, that may be below your skill set, if that makes sense. Yeah, that may be below your skill set. You have to look into it, to be honest with you. Because computer science, just in just computer science direction, just computer science direction, the basics stuff of that may be too early for you, right? And then a little bit more into computer science is you start actually working on things. You start actually making software, right? Doing stuff. So not just theory, but the very beginning of that may be below your skill set. So see where you are in the program, if that makes sense. <laughs> Will AI negatively defect game development? No. Large doubt. Just another tool, man. Hello, applying with 500 bits said Thor's DDoS Python web applications, K E K W. <laughs> Dom Origato 137 with 500 bits said R. We gotta get the modifiers then now. So I have a different set of modifiers for each one of these armor sets, and I need to add the one for this. We've got archaeology, which is of the grave robber, right? So we'll have to change this over because we've got fishing, pescatarian, earthbreaker, forager, termite, grave robber, and then this one is going to be of the sigil weaver. And this is going to be experience rune carving. And this will be rune carving. Just like that. And we'll be able to copy that up to each one of the tiers. Easy peasy. Song is a banger. Yeah, dude. Stein is a wizard. Oh, is that lagging? Jesus. There we go. This is actually not going to be so bad. It's going to be pretty easy to set all these up. And the community is going to be quite happy about this, frankly. Just started a cybersecurity diploma at 30. All your content around the subjects piqued my interest, which has been a real struggle for me throughout my whole life. Thank you for all the content. Much love from Australia. Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. You're making an MMO now? I've been making this MMO on the side for years. It's fun. It's a side project of mine, and I work on it when I can't work on Heartbound on stream because it's I'm working on stuff that could spoil the game for you. So I don't want to work on that on stream. So instead, I work on this. I'm always going to be working on something, but... I want to work on things that make sense to work on on stream, you know? What IDE am I using? I'm just working inside of uh, Notepad++ right now, dude. Just working on uh, what are called YAML files. YAML files is kind of like JavaScript, or it's kind of like, uh, not JavaScript, JSON. It's like JSON. This gets consumed by Java, and it's effectively more human-readable JSON, is all you're looking at. Think of it just like a JSON tree. Same shit. All right, there we go. These are done. Those are finished. Now we can go into here. We need to give this a color, right? Need to give it a color. And if we go into here, we look at armor like this. You can see these just keep getting darker over time. Those get darker over time. These get darker over time. So, like, they get more and more into the direction of that armor, right? So we need to find the same sort of a thing. But we need a specific color for this. And I think it's probably going to end up being red. It'll probably end up being red. Maybe. Or like a gray color. Dark blue. For rune carving. Oh, you know what I could do? We could add a trim to it.
Yeah, we could add trim to it. Mm. What if we just do it as purple with gold trim? Yeah. We could do purple with gold trim. I think it would look nice. Here. We've got this old thing. What colors can you do on that? Gold? Yeah, do a gold trim on that. And then we'll do... Oh, weird. It doesn't actually have the right trim on this. That's a little bit weird. They don't have leather in here. Alright. That's fine, I guess. I think it'll end up being that one. What is that one? It is called Ward. The pattern is called Ward. So we'll do Ward with gold. Easy peasy. Uh, what was the trim amount? Don't match case. No, it wasn't that. There we go. We'll pull this one up, and I need to go find the armor that has it. I think it's holiday armor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's holiday armor that actually has the trim on it. So I can look at the exact thing for this. Yeah, it was the Easter sets. Easter Ranger helmet. Trim pattern, trim material. There we go. So all we have to do is go to each one of these and add trim pattern and trim material, and it looks like it's going to be right after the lore. So we'll do it right after this. Trim pattern is going to be ward. Trim material is going to be gold. But easy. Don't tell me what to do with my brains. I will. What do you use when SCP? No reason not to. It's fine and fast and easy. Works with S FTP and SFTP, which is most of what I'm using it for. I don't think you can trim leather. Wanna bet? Wanna bet? All of that is trimmed leather. All of it is. Ta-da! Yeah. All of it is trimmed leather. We actually based it off of... I based it off of different uh, moths. And it ended up being a lot of fun for that. So yeah, you can trim it. Yep. As a real-life leather crafter, yeah, you can. That's funny. Alright, so we gotta go to... After each one of these... And we'll likely have to change the coloring around. So we'll do that as well. Looks like we reduced by 20 on each one of these. That's what I was doing before. Do red, green, and blue. By the way, I think when we hit 100... Cyanide KZK with 500 bits said, Hello streamer, Hold I was wondering if you have ever heard of Voices of the Void. It yes. is a pre-alpha horror game about listening to deep space noises with aliens yep. and it's real cool. Yeah, Voices of the Void is actually cool as shit, dude. Super, super agree with that. Absolutely do. 100%. Let me pull this up. Voices of the Void. Yeah. This game is so neat, dude. There you go. It's so goddamn cool. Yeah, it's really, really interesting, dude. It's listening to deep space and hearing weird shit. Don't spoil the game, though. It's good. It's very good. Oh, actually. I guess hide trim is already on there. Oh, 
This is it. We'll have to put text on these later. I'm not going to put it on now, but eventually we will. What game is that? Voices of the Void, man. It's awesome as hell. RTA Rudy 999 with 500 bits Good. said hello. I would love hello. some advice. I'm 29 and I work in QA software testing for two years now. I've always All wanted right. to work as QA for games, finding bugs and whatnot. It is what I enjoy. But I can barely find remote openings, and on site opportunities in my country are very limited. I finished computer science, but coding never really stuck with me. Now I see there is a game dev master degree in my city, but I'm afraid to do it while also working full time. I wouldn't be afraid to do that, but also if you want to do QA and software testing, like or QA development, like for you know games, game development, uh, that master's degree is not going to do anything for you. QA for games is, unfortunately in your case, it's generally not seen as remote all the time. You'll have to find a studio that will allow you. Yeah, if you're good, they'll hire you remote, and it, it won't matter about your degree. A degree for that is if you want to make video games, not test them. So it may give you much added context that'll make you a better tester. That could be valuable. So investing in yourself in that way could be good. But make sure that you're not taking on too much work, because you said you're wor worried about it while you're working full time. So for the for the one thing, you have to find a studio that hires you remotely. You have to. If for the other thing, you may want to take that, but understand that it's going to give you context knowledge, not direct knowledge for testing, if that makes sense. Degree now useless? No. You have to listen to the full statement, not just jump to the conclusion in the beginning. Right? So to be real with you, in this situation, that master's degree, while it can give you cursory knowledge around the around what you're trying to do, it not is not necessarily beneficial to your career in QA, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, degrees have not always been useless. That piece of paper opens doors for you. That's what it does. The thing that is more important out of anything ever is work experience. But if you don't have the work experience, if you're trying to get it, having something like that can help. What's your opinion on third-party QA companies? Largely, they'll be disconnected from general the rest of the development team. So because of that, they're not going to be as effective. In-house embedded QA is the best option. Always. ISTQB does certificates for game testing? Yes, they do. That's a better route, honestly. What's your thoughts on Web3 Gaming? Complete dog shit. <laughs> yeah, it's complete dog shit. What is QA? Quality assurance. Is the big goal frozen? No. I'm just waiting to do it till later. What is Web3 Gaming? Crypto shit. Do not go to university unless it's top five? No, that's terrible advice. That shit doesn't matter anymore. It used to. It doesn't anymore. No one cares about what college it is. They just care about if you have the piece of paper. You should consider getting into IT sales. I'm a systems engineer for Fortinet, and I've been working in security for about 10 years, doing sales for almost 20. I used to work in the trenches and was full-time hands on keyboard. Now I get best of both worlds. Sales engineer is a great job. A degree in computer science. Security didn't exist at the time. What do you mean security didn't exist at the time? Oh, it did. Guarantee you that. Learned to hate coding and prefer building and architecting. I get to work with some of the largest companies in the world. Think about it. No, I'm good. I'm just going to be real with you. Nah. <laughs> I've been a hacker for 20 years, and uh, now I get to run a company and, and make video games and have a good time. So, no, I'm good. I don't want to work for somebody else. I, uh, I got sick of mowing other people's lawns. A long time ago. Seen a lot of shit. Now I get to run a studio where that doesn't happen to the people that work for me. And I'm a lot happier for it. So yeah, nah. Never knows best with 500 bits said hey Thor the VTubers claim they can't come to your H-O-U-S-E-H-T-T-P-S I saw that, dude. slash slash twitter dot com slash parody underscore VT slash stated Yeah, no, no, I saw this. This actually came up earlier. This came up way earlier in the stream. This is, uh... This is very funny. This is really funny, actually. 
If you didn't see this earlier in the stream, I, I told people, like, you can't, like, VTubers can, can be running at your house at the same time as being live on stream. This dude's response is hilarious to me. Oh, God damn it. God damn it, Twitter. What? Who designed a UI like this? There we go. Something horrifying is that if you piss off a VTuber, they can both be on stream and running directly at your house at maximum speed at the same time, and you would never know. That terrifies me. That's a superpower we don't have in the rest of the streaming world, and that scares the shit out of me. Hey, it's true. Yeah, Thor, buddy. I forgot one thing, though. No VTuber has ever touched grass, so. This is what we call an alibi. This is false. This is false. He's only saying this to throw you off. The VTubers are coming, Chet. They're going to get you. And you'll never know it. Because this alibi now exists. It's true. It's true. Yeah. The VTubers have touched grass. Do not believe their lies. Do not believe their lies. Terrifying. Terrifying. Don't believe their lies. It's not touching grass if you run on the roads. True. True. They could just be running on the roads the whole time. Surround your house in grass. Build your home out of grass. He even sat... He, he sounded a little bit out of breath, dude. He might have been running. You never know. You never know. How do we know you're not running t to our house? Because I'm really here. So, you know, I couldn't be running right now because I'm actually on the stream, obviously. Streaming from inside your house, Chet. It's already too late. You've already lost. It's over. <laughs> Democracy soon, yes. Hmm. Good thing I work from an office. That's fine. I'll be waiting when you get back. Big go win soon. Every time someone asks about the bid goal, I conveniently forget for another five minutes. Since you're here, can you do the washing up? No, I'm not here to do dishes. I'm here to stream from inside your house and steal your Wi-Fi. Soon. Fahal with 800 bits said doubt you remember, I told you the other day I was having a career crisis. Yes. Then the other day I saw your, just go do it, YT short. You have inspired me to quit my job and go to med school. I am gonna be Dr. Goblin thanks to you. Hold up. Hold up. I hope, I hope that you are financially stable in that endeavor, number one. However, if you want to become Dr. Goblin, I will be impressed. That would be amazing. The world needs more doctors. The world needs more trained medical staff. We're at a critical period of understaffing in the medical field. So good for you. Super good for you. 100%. Same thing with veterinarians as well, by the way. So like, yeah. The world me needs more Dr. Goblin. Then we'll actually have a real chat MD. But I still won't believe you in chat. Because chat MD is always wrong. Yep. It's true. It's true. Chat MD is always wrong. I touched grass today, that's a lie. No one has ever touched grass. A lie to these fine people. Your wife's a doctor and she gets treated like shit in her residency, it's sad. That is sad. Not necessary. What is grass? The world may never know. Archie Hunter underscore RP with 500 bits said, Can I ask, as a new viewer, the background music you use on stream is so relaxing, is this your own work or? I have no idea 80% of the time what goes on in your streams, but I find myself coming back less than three. Yeah, so this game right here is Harpound. It's our game that we make. Um, it's got 96% positive reviews, and it's all on Steam. The OST for this is what you hear on my stream every day. 
There's 100 songs in the OST. It's three and a half hours of music for the game. The game has thousands of routes. Uh, even with 60,000 sales, the players still haven't found everything, and they likely never will. And on top of this, if you get the OST, 100% of that goes to our musician. And as long as you are not re -up directly re-uploading the music with no other content, you are free to use the songs in this OST in any videos or streams, whether they are monetized or not. I will never DMCA you. And we own 100% of the rights. So, it's our choice. And we want you to be able to use it for that. So, have fun. I'm going to send you some links. There you go. Yeah, we, we come across it all the time, too. People using it in shorts, people using it in YouTube videos, people using it in the backgrounds of their streams. It's great. Is chat real doctors? N no. No. Go see a doctor. No. Ooh. 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 All right. Do you guys think Rune Carver should wear wigs? Because we have Aspirant Rune Carver's cap, but I feel like it should be Aspirant Rune Carver's wig. Just wear a big old wig, dude. They got boots, pants, a vest, and a cap. <laughs> Little mouse. I took beans out, he was scary. He was no, he's wild. He was crazy. Little one. Little one. Little mouse. You love being tall. Yes, you do. Smell it. Oh, oh, stealing it. Backwards, upside down. What are you doing? What are you doing? You flipping? You flipping? Can't flip. There's no flipping. There's no flipping. You have such a long neck. Your neck is enormous. Whoa. Flip in. Wants to get my desk. Wants to be a hacker. Okay. That was that was flip flip spin. Yeah. Mouse does tricks, dude. Yeah, hacker noodle, a little bit. Yeah. She's very cute. Mouse is my favorite. I'm new here, what's this software? This is me building stuff in YAML. Although, we're probably gonna do democracy in a minute here. Cause it's about that time. It's about that time. It's about time for democracy. Did you share your Nubhead Plus Plus theme? Yeah, just go to settings, go to style configurator, and set everything to black and green. The only thing you have to change that's a little bit outside of that is like certain things you want it to be like a little bit darker green. When you're selecting objects, selecting things like this. That's about it. Yeah. Otherwise it just makes it bright. It's impossible to look at. That's all. Alrighty. Bug or robot democracy? Depends on what the major order is. I don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. Or use a real theme like Solarized Dark. Gross. Gross. Congratulations on your upcoming baby. Get out of here. You're the worst. Boo. Boo. All right. There we go. Oh. Nope. Your spleen is too big. Your spleen is so big. You have such a big spleen. Oh. Oh. Going crazy. All right. Loki. Very cute. Smelling good, so that's good. Don't have any weird smells. Why is your spleen so big? I'm such a big spleen. You got spleganomy, dude. Huh? 
Yeah. Loki's got a big spleen. If it gets big enough, we might have to take it out. Yeah. To remove most of the spleen. Yeah. Old man shoot bug, how dare you? Helldivers. The Helldivers button has been pressed. It is time. It is time, chat. Right, give me a second. Is this hit to the right category? It is not. So this is pretty interesting. I don't know why this is happening. But for some reason, when you send an API request for Helldivers 2, Twitch views that as just Helldivers 1. And I don't really know why. It's very, very weird. And there's no way to fix this. It is really annoying. Yep. Alright, I'm going to change this again. Helldivers. Two. There we go. Helldivers. It is now working. It had to relink it as Helldivers 2 in all caps. That's why it worked. It all makes sense now. Alright. Updating this stuff on YouTube. Come on, YouTube. Wow. YouTube is lagging, actually. What the hell is going on here? YouTube? Why is my browser lagging? What the shit, YouTube? Okay, hold up. Refreshing this page, because holy shit, that's completely broken. Uh, you're getting hacked? No, I'm not. What the hell are you talking about? You are getting hacked. Oh no! I'm getting hacked! Oh shit! You're dumb, dude. Alright, there we go. Let's sit up. Browser was lagging to shit, but we're good now. And I think... I think it's everything. I think it's time. Alright. Music off. Democracy on. It's time. Hopefully they've actually fixed the issue. Hopefully it's actually the thing. Let's find out. Let's find out if they fix this. For realsies. Helldivers, where are you? Oh, the machine is set up. Everything is good to go there. And we're launching. They did. I just did a round with Arc Thrower and it's super duper good. Nice. Playing with Arc and it didn't crash. Nice. Blushy Jude with 500 bits said you mentioned rigging for VTubers. Yes. Yes. They are expensive and the amount is worth it. I have been watching your channel for quite a while. I might as well introduce myself. I am a VTuber, and my model was rigged by a lovely artist named it Belina Belfagor from Brazil. Nice. She needs more love for her work as she creates incredible work. Yeah. My name on Steam is Bloodcross in case you see my friend request on Helldivers. Oh god. Right now, I'm running to your place. Super Not to hurt, but to hug. Our home. Stay awesome. Fear. Actual fear. It's very funny. Oh. Major order. Blood cross, you said. I'll go add you. Uh, friend request. Why are there so many? Oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God, chat. This person's name is Foot Freak 77 Think I should add them? I cannot find your name. I am likely blind. Oh look, the party's full. Let's never think about that name again. Uh, also, I need to turn off Bezos. 
Bezos, I need to turn you off. It is it's time, Bezos. Where are you? Pending actions. Actions. And disable that. There we go. Action cues. Everything looks good. And we can hit this again. Mystic right. underscore Owl with 500 bits said watching your shorts on self-confidence and putting your work out there inspired me to publish non-structured poetry about my mental health journey, consisting of everything I've written at my worst and reflecting on it across my journey of recovery. Everyone thinks it's just the result of manic writing, which it probably is TBF, and sees it as crazy writing, but I still believe in its potential to humanize the treatment of the mentally ill. Any advice for looking to get it published? Well, to be honest with you, looking to get it published, it's actually easier now to get published than pretty much any other time, because you can do digital publishing first, prove that people really like it, and then kind of go from there. Oh, this spiral flip. This one is Pepper. Yeah, this is Pepper. So doing digital publishing might be a really good way to do it first. Ooh. Whenever you're holding a ferret, hold the butt. Hold the butt. It's good for them. They got long bodies. Wow, you are wild. There you go. Yeah, trying to one up. Pepper's crazy. But no, yeah, digital publishing might be really helpful for you, man. Like, digital publishing might be the way to go, and then you prove the value, and then you go to a physical publisher, and you go, Hey, man, I've got proof that this is good. Liberation. Oh. Oh, is that a personal order for mines? Chat? Chat, is that a personal order for mines? Glorious. Give me a defense mission. The operation proceeds smoothly. Mission coordinates locked. Mines. Hellpods grind. Mines. Jinx underscore Jess with 500 bits said I am currently an IT systems engineer but have been studying computer science and programming on my own time. Right. I'm deciding to try getting into game development as I want to build and create things for people to enjoy. You have been a huge inspiration to learn and create so thank you. The only thing I worry about is that I might be too old to start at 27. But You're a baby. <laughs> Dude, 27, you're barely old enough to feel ways about stuff. You cut that shit out. 27. Too old. God, I must be dead. <laughs> you are not too old. And to be honest with you, even if you were 70, 80, 90, who gives a shit? Spend your time the way that you want to. Too old. We did get us today. Yeah, mines. Yeah, mines. How many did I get? Ooh, I already got 24 out of 40. Mines. We love mines. Oh, I got the arc gun back. Oh, I love the arc gun. I love it. Oh, I love the arc gun. I love the arc gun. Yes. Yes. I missed you, my beautiful arc gun. God, I missed it. Requesting air support. Let's throw more bombs, dude. Never stop shooting bombs, dude. Oh, I can't hit him from there, can I? Nope. Yeah! Yeah! 
Oh. Just gonna put that there, you know? That's fine. Just leave it over there. You love to see it. God, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. That friendly fire, he had a shield. He had a shield. Where's that fire from? I didn't even kill him. I don't know what the fuck. I, uh, 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 uh. That was his fault, dude. I think he shot himself in his own feet with a missile. They fixed the arc guns? Yeah, they did. Oh, God. My bones. Why am I stuck under you? Jesus Christ. Get out of here. Alright. Please let me climb up. Love this gun. Dude, it's all just lightning. And I've already done my my major order is done. Or my personal order is finished. So it's literally just like lightning and mines. It's the best. Yeah, I'm using a sickle, dude. Nikolai underscore von underscore Imhoff with 750 bits said on Twitter you can also go to account settings, privacy and safety, content you see, topics interests and whatnot, and go have fun. Can True. help curate more. Yeah, no, I super agree with that. Curating on social media platforms is the way to go, man. There's too many, too many people who think the social media platform is supposed to remove everything that you don't want to see for you. That's not how that shit works. You have to curate it. Ooh. I miss this gun so much, dude. I'm just gonna keep running, you know? It's gonna go this way. Shuttle's on its way. Here it goes. This is a new major order. We'll check it after this. Oh yeah. Your team dies a lot, but not you. Sometimes. Depends. I'm good at not getting killed. Usually. Not always. Usually. Argonius underscore doge with 500 bits said yar cheer 500 hey brother what you thinking leave that old record spinning you feel the rhythm going now that i've hit you with that earworm i wish to talk about songs with pedigree 
One notable song is Unreal Superhero 3, also known by the internet oldies as the Sony Vegas Keygen song. Oh. From the research I have done, this is a remix of a remix of the original Unreal soundtrack, which was is developed actually? by Digital Extremes. You know, the Warframe people. Is it actually? Okay, that's kind of interesting. That's very funny, Killer actually. Squid 2603 with 500... What? No. The underscore bacon underscore dragon with 500 bits said covering something that was discussed earlier about ad-free experience. I have no idea how anyone is getting ad-free for all Twitch channels from just Twitch Prime, but Twitch removed that feature back in 2018, no, and I couldn't get ad-free without Turbo or subbing individually after they made that change. Yeah, it's only Turbo. It's turbo, only turbo, unfortunately, just wasn't worth the price after they raised it compared to something like YouTube that Premium. HTTPS colon slash slash blog dot twitch dot TV slash oh Yeah, no, they changed that ages ago, as uh, Prime doesn't do that anymore. Prime doesn't do that. They haven't, like, Prime used to make it so that you didn't have ads anywhere on the platform, and they got rid of that. Like... What do you mean I have 208 medals? The Major Order only gave me 45. What? 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 Hey, you guys want to see something funny? You guys want to see Uruku stop trying to hug me? You want to see that? That's all it took. I didn't even have to do anything. Okay, war bonds. There we go. Got that thing for a hundred and fifty. A freedom proclamation. Work harder for a brighter. You monster? Yes. Okay, you said we had another major order, huh? Liberate Troost. What? Where the hell is Troost, dude? What the hell is a Troost? Bro. Okay. So it's bots time. We have to take Ustotu to take Troost. Which means we need Mantis. Okay. Mantis is going to get taken. I'm not worried about Mantis. What does Ustotu have for effects? Intense heat. Increases stamina drain and speed up heat buildup in weapons. Tremors. No, it's space, space desert this time. You have a strategic eye. Initiating FTL jump to Miserable when you run laser builds? Can be, yeah. Yeah. Just soak out a little bit, yeah. Darwolf 716 with 500 bits said you said Correct. before that a VPN is not security. Yes. So then, what do you do to keep yourself secure besides using a second PC because some people can't afford a second? Any special network setup or special software? Wh wait, what? No, I use a second PC so that I, I'm not installing kernel level anti cheat on my main machine. A VPN's not going to change that. What about here? That has nothing to do with a VPN. This is this is why I talk about this all the time. VPNs are not security products. They only change your IP at the outside, so the only thing that you should be using them for is getting around geolocation restrictions. That's it. That's a very different thing. That that is not gonna protect you against kernel of anti cheat. No. Nope, nope, nope. Nothing to do with that. Oh, it's three! Oh god, no. Ew. Ew. Wait a minute. Is that a hell bomb? Alright. Oh. We're gonna have to do this.
This is gonna suck, dude. Yeah, land against something. Switch your gun? No. It won't matter what gun I'm using. To be honest with you, the primary gun's probably not even going to get used at all. Objective critical stratagem available. All hell dive operations have the AA effect? Seriously? Objective critical huh? stratagem no longer all right. available. Let them come. Let them brawl. Let them face the insurmountable might of their hell <laughs> Requesting attack attack! Dropship! Requesting advanced weaponry! Requesting air support! Requesting attack attack! Requesting advanced weaponry! Who bombed, dude? Oh, come on, game. There we go. Lightning time! Zap, zap. Rude. Down he goes. Alright, I guess that's just not gonna work for some reason. Okay. I think it's trying to latch to the mines and it doesn't know how to do it. Yeah, it's the mines. That's annoying. Yeah. Arc weapons are fixed, yes. Yeah, the targeting system on arc weapons is kind of weird. It latches to random shit like corpses and all kinds of things. I love arc weapon. I love arc weapon. I got the terminal. Oh, that's a bomb. Let's get out of here. Stay down. All right, let's see. We need to go off. Let's go down here. Easy peasy. My life for Super Earth, chat. Yeah, you gotta fight. You gotta fight automatons, dude. Major orders through. If you're not fighting automatons, you're letting them win. And that's not very democratic of you, is it? For Super Earth. Get it in there. 
Thank you for the raid. Raiding party of 13, that's very nice of you. You're awesome, Mommy 247 with 505 bits said angels are just high-level gooses. An angel is a high-level goose. You know, I agree with that. I'm gonna get away from this tank now. An angel is a high-level goose. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I believe. Shit. That hurt. Ow. Did I just get shot by my own teammate? Because I think I did. Oh, shit. Oh, God, that hurt. All right. Hi, I'm dead. Yeet. All right, not dead. Don't know how. Don't want to think about it. Oh, there's another one. Shit. Hey, this is bad. Shit, 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 shit. Serpentine! Oh, my bones! Alright, lived. Oh god, they surrounded us! No! No, survive! Survive! Oh, my bones! Alright, we're good, we're good. Oh god, they're snipers. Reinforcing. Anyway. It's probably bad. I'm getting a call, one moment. Requesting air support. 
Buh, buh, buh. I still managed to salute the explosion. While I'm dealing with that stupid call. So basically it looks like there's something wrong with the insurance for the new house or some shit. I just got a call for them there and be like, what are you doing? Stop it. Yeah, there's, they did something wrong and the math is slightly off. So now it's like, Bleh. I gotta call and find out what they're doing, why they're doing it, and then tell them to stop. This gun is still wicked good on this planet, by the way. I don't see any reason not to use this. It's got unlimited ammo, you know? Bro. No! There we go. Freedom has prevailed. Time to extract. We just have to take these as quickly as possible. I'm just gonna focus on the main objective each time. It's time to push. It's time to push. Joel is adding in robotic gnomes? Impossible. Impossible. And is it for a brand new Helldiver? Honestly, it's just, just have fun with it, dude. There's too many people that are like, oh, there's a meta and all that. No, there isn't. You, just, you can use pretty much anything in the game and it's effective. Like, legitimately, it's, it's super, super fun. And like, I'm level 50, we only do level 9 high, held ever difficulty, highest difficulty, and we just use whatever we want. It doesn't really matter. So anybody who's claiming there's a, you know, meta or anything like that, it's whatever. There are some guns that are just trash, but it's not like it's trash because there's a meta, it's trash because the gun is trash, right? Like the, uh, the offhand laser. That thing sucks. It's just not very good. I wish it was good, it's just not very good. It's not good on any difficulty. That's Pulling the difference, right? This is not really a meta. It's just not good. Shield gen is kind of mandatory. mandatory? Nope. Really not. I use it because it makes things a little bit more effective, but you can use the the physical shield. You can not use it. You can run a backpack with, like, a, you know, robots, anything. Whatever you want, man. Depends on your playstyle. I use it because I like going commando a lot. I go solo operations a ton, and that lets me do that. Getting sniped out. Oh, you love to see it. Ow. Well, I think those are dead. God, I love our gun. I love it. I love it, chat. God, I missed it. I missed my my beautiful boy. Get out of here. I missed it. Is it in safe mode? There's no such thing as safe mode. It's an arc thrower. The air gun is a sniper that ignores armor and is chain lightning. It is awesome. I wouldn't be surprised if they got nerfed, but I hope they don't. Dude, I I hope it does get nerfed. I hope it does. It's absurd, frankly. This game is about destroying fascism? No. This game is about destroying bugs and robots. And in world... You know, real-world geopolitics and political ideology have no basis in reality in a video game where you're fighting for Super Earth. Who gives a shit? Aliens.
unremarkable. Yeah, this game is about democracy, dude. Managed democracy. All right. Martin Blythe with five Australian dollars said, Hey Thor, I'm no programmer, but your YT videos have been a big inspiration for me. I'm writing my own D&D content and kids books thanks to you and Lieutenant. Free. It's freaking awesome, dude. Hell yeah. W. Higgis with 500 bits said given the current state of the nice. game development industry, which is facing significant yeah. competition and recent layoffs, how could someone like me, who self-taught and without formal education or industry credentials, effectively break into the field? Over the past three years, I've diligently built a diverse skill set in game development, spanning every field besides producing music. So if you're trying to do that, and you want to enter this field, you want to do that kind of stuff, you need to start having connections. Getting connections is pretty hard a lot of the times at the outset. So what you should really do is start doing things like game jams. Start making some small games. Put that shit in your portfolio. Show that you can make something even on a small scale, and you will be able to prove yourself for larger scale. As a good example of this, I actually got my job at Blizzard because I made stuff in Second Life. And then, I ended up getting that job. Why? Because I built a giant MMO in Second Life. It was a first-person shooter, steampunk-styled MMO. I learned how to make all of my stuff in that. And then took that, got a career out of it. So like, to be real, yeah. Do this. Make shit. Put it on your resume. It's a lot easier than you would think it would be. Frankly. A lot easier. Surprising, really. Making mods is valid experience too. True. Yep. Geno Ice with 500 bits said Blaster Cat Guy here. Well, Thor, I am sick once more and watching you on my TV. I've oh. been streaming a little bit with friends, but I think I might stream dev work, but I'm self conscious on how little I have and how poor the code is. Advice It's okay to stream a small amount. It's so okay to stream shitty code, right? There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So, don't worry about it, right? And to be real with you, most of streaming is making sure that you get comfortable with yourself and talk to other people and, like, learn to share and be okay with looking a little dumb sometimes, frankly. I look a little bit dumb all the time. It's great. Wow, that guy just didn't die, did he? Oh, yeah, he did. All right, we're good. A lot of streaming is learning how to laugh at yourself, frankly. Because you are going to look dumb. Yeah. Where is my where's my ammunition? Love this gun. Nice airstrike location, dude. Requesting air support. Max empty. Oh. Calling in reinforcements. The angle of the bomb made it land right next to me. What the hell am I getting hit by? Jesus Christ, dude. Okay. I feel like I'm on Tatooine, man. I'm 100% on Tatooine, aren't I? Sand. Oh, you're on Arrakis? True. Desert planet. What if I'm uncorrect, dude? Arrakis burning. How many of you are old enough to know how sad that moment was when Karak was burning? What? Max empty! 
Barak is burning. Wow. That's something else, man. That headshot, they hit really hard. They hit really hard. No, not Iraq. Iraq. Ooh. Why, hello? Democracy has landed. That is... I didn't want to climb that. I wanted to go around it, but that's fine. Yeah, the rockets, dude. There's so many rockets. It's very funny. Reporting to the front. Oh, turrets. Turrets. Doom divers lead the way. Ending in an eagle. Out Good land. Commissar Drac with 5,000 bits said E. E. Thank you for the E. E. Got running out of energy so fast. Sucks. Holy shit, dude. Is that a tank? It's a tank. Oh man. Shizuka. Come on, man. Come on, man. You see me up there. Rude. Shit. Oh, I can't get out. Dropping a pin. East, 200 meters. We gotta break down two more of them. We got six minutes. It's time to run. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Ooh, shit. Requesting air support. Which gun am I using? Plaz Scorcher. Love it. It's really good for all kinds of shit. Like this. Let's get out of here. We got a jammer over here. Ow. God damn it, dude. I think the worst part about robots is the stray bullets are just insane sometimes. Like, sometimes you just get blapped by a stray bullet and you're like, well... Jesus. Freedom never like that. Saved. It's just absurd. You just get completely annihilated randomly. Oh, shields not mandatory. Honestly, energy shields feel less good than uh, ballistic shields against robots a lot of the times. Dropping a pin. Southeast. 300 meters. We're still fully jammed.
never destroy our way of life. Shit. Fire in the hole. Let's go home, boys. Time to leave. You have ignited the We did it. Let's get the hell out of here. Everything is jammed. This place sucks. My ballistic shield isn't black melee because it's a ballistic shield, not a sword shield, dude. Come on. You're taking so much damage because you're wearing light armor. I'd be taking more if I was wearing heavy. Do you know why? Because you can't dodge. Being able to move at increased speed by 10% is enormous in this. And heavy armor is decreased speed by 10%. So you've got a 20% differential in speed. It's so awful. The it, Overcoming that is huge. And stamina drain on a, on a hot planet in heavy armor? Dude, I'd never be able to run. I'd be walking everywhere. I'd be crawling. Yeah. Heavy armor is more armor? Yeah, no mobility. Yeah, best defense is to not be there. The heavy armor is the shit? Well, the heavy armor is shit. You're correct about that, yes. On a hot planet, dude? I'm not wearing heavy armor. There's no way. There's no way, dude. Yeah, just don't get hit, five head. Exactly. Shizuka left. You crash? That's not good. Oh, God damn it. Whoa. Just put that over there for a second, it's fine. Clearing it up. Jocasta, thank you for the rating party of two. I hope you have a wonderful day. Ooh. What? <laughs> I just got one shot, dude. 100% one shot. Through the shield, everything gone. Barely missed him. I'm so dead. Nope. It's too late, dude. Yeah, I didn't hit the Hulk. It was close to the Hulk. Now I got the Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. Instantly dead. Hell divers. Hell divers. Nice. Hello. Hey, look, I've escaped. We did it, boys. We landed on the planet and immediately left. Wait, I just die? I may have just died. I may have died inside of the ship. I love how the bots are so much harder. It's because they have ranged attacks. That's really it. It's just, it's constant ranged attack damage. If their damage was less on those ranged attacks, I don't think they'd be very hard. But, like, they snipe you. You know? Uruku died, F. How do you deal with the jamming towers? You gotta go blow them up. That's the only way. To Lowhawk 808 with 500 bits said, Hey, Mr. Pie Soft Hairware. I heard you like to swallow the mort, but I counter NR Vada Squatabra. Endo Specto Plankto Day for you. May the Harry Spotter of the Forbidden Squatting Chambers curse your mind forever. 
true weight wizards this? put weights on their staffs, yelling fireball but then just flinging the weights at their enemies. Fun fact, Japan saw Harry Spotter and made it into an anime. Mashal, Magic and Muscles. I've seen Mashal. No, 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 Magic and Muscles, I've seen this. Is that the one where he's like, he's like flying on the broom and he's kicking his legs super fast? I think that's the one I've seen. It is. It 100% is. Yes. He's so buff that it looks like magic. Yeah. It's freaking ridiculous, actually. That anime's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's so good. That one's really, really funny, dude. Like, really, really funny. 100%. Good shout. Good shit. It's One Punch Man and Harry Potter. That's exactly it. <sighs> Next planet. Hellpods Prime. Engaging orbital thrusters. Orbit synchronized. Let's think about this. I don't really like the exosuit on planets with the bots. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this. Yeah, I don't really like the exosuit on them. The Eagle 110. It's good against bots. Really? I like the, uh, the Hell Bomb, to be honest with you. The 500 kilogram bomb. Arc throwing bots feels great, dude. We can't bring it forth. If I could, I would. Anti-air removes your fourth. Datarium with 500 bits said yard cheer, 100 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 if we are the goblins, and Thor is the goblin lord, who reminds us of the babe. What babe? The babe with the power. What power? The power of voodoo. Who do? You do. Do what? Remind us of the bait. Oh, barely lived that. Also, that song is stuck in my head permanently, isn't it? Liberty, save me! The game would be a hundred times better if it was in the Warhammer universe. Oh, this isn't Warhammer enough for you, dude? Come on. Come on. Is this not 40k? Exactly. I'm one tech priest away from being in Warhammer 40k, dude. That's that's where we're at, right? Man, it'd be really cool if that guy would just die, right? Oh, his arm came off. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. You know, you know, I just, I'm just gonna, you know. You know, that's fine. You know, you know. What? Why am I on fire? I don't understand why I just lit on fire randomly. Does anyone know? Was there a reason for that? It's hot? Okay, thanks. Thanks, chat. Thanks for that. Because you're so good? Thank you. Thank you. Zap zap. Calling in a help off. There is something. Dropping a pin. North. One hundred meters. Help off. Clear the area. 
medals. Oh god, they never stopped chasing me! Ah! Alright, so those are dead, but this isn't. Now it is. Love this gun. What a good, what a good pro No, I uh, no, Arc Thrower no longer crashes the game anymore. What gun is that? The Plaz Scorcher. It does an explosion around it. It is very, very good against robots. It is incredibly good against robots. Punches through shields, does all kinds of shit, dude. You can kill tanks with it, you can kill turrets with it, it's amazing. Yeah, arc, arc thrower was fixed. That is correct. Yeah, the patch rolled out this morning. Commissar Drac with 1000 bits said UWU. How dare you put the UWU in my stream? How, how dare you? Is that gonna blow it up? Let's see. How dare you? Let's just wait for a moment, and then, you know, one of them. That's deeply rude, sir. I don't know what's happening to physics right now, but it feels bad. We're gonna leave. Why did the arc gun crash your game? I don't know, they fixed it, though. We couldn't use it for like four or five days. It was pretty awful for a little while. Requesting sentry. Is that explosive damage resistant scout armor? No. This scout armor is not explosive resistant, though I will be switching to that eventually. Um, what I am using right now is reduced aggro radius scout armor, which is also very useful. Sending in an eagle. Reinforcing. As you can see, I can sneak up on some bitches. Like this. See that? He doesn't even know I'm here. Hey, one thing though, I think I can kill one of these guys. Let's find out. Nope. Not enough. I thought maybe it had enough damage to do it in one clip, but I guess not. Yeah, scout armor is amazing for solo stuff, which is most of what I do. Yeah, this planet sucks. Yes, the arc weapon works now. Go check the patch notes. It is good. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. Dropping a pin. North Apparently there's an acid mirrors. planet somewhere. Seriously? That sounds awful. Okay, that one's dead. Can't see. Can't see shit. Bounced. Boo. That one's down. Elbow more. Clear the area. 
see you, nerd. Yeah, Arc Thrower, my beloved. We'd love to see it. Arc weapons are fixed, my dude. Yeah, 100%. The cheese? It's not a cheese, it's called using cover, my dude. Alright. Next base. Dropping a pin. Northwest. 300 meters. Weird looking bugs. The major order is to destroy bots. It's time. It's time to go back to the bots, my dude. It's time. Scrolling Van Damme with 10 euros said favorite MMO for me is still WoW and RuneScape. Only three days for RuneScape and then I have my 20 years veteran cape. Even though they have their problems, MTX, sure. I ignore that part. Makes sense. You don't have to care about it if you don't want to, you know. So, Arc Thrower doesn't work when there's mines. You have to shoot out the mines first. But it does open doors like that. And then you can get super credits, which is nice. Alright, that one is finished. What? I wasn't paying attention. I was looking ahead. Feels bad, man. Black Mesa 56 with 500 bits said hello again for. Sorry for a longer question today. I asked about studying for CYSA yesterday. Talking to the duck has been helping already today, so thanks. Good. Question today. I now work doing IT and RF infrastructure implementation and maintenance for a company that is also known for making cell phones. Do you think I can jump over to the games industry with this skill set? Or how would you recommend I pivot to get involved in the industry? I mean, the mobile industry at that point would be really helpful for you. I wouldn't see why you wouldn't, right, be able to pivot over. Any type of... Any type of knowledge in those sections of the industry are incredibly helpful. Like, any type of knowledge in that area is incredibly helpful. So, like, yeah, I do not see why not. Ow. Oh my shit. Okay. So I'm probably gonna die here, but I'm taking them all out with me. You know? You know? Yeah, no, I, I can see you absolutely doing that. Pivoting to game development with that would be really, really useful. Um, I can see that skill set being helpful for mobile games specifically, especially if you have that kind of information. Known for making cell phones. There's a thing inside of the games industry called a Compat Lab. Compatibility labs are ones that are trying to set up games on a bunch of different hardware to make sure that those games work effectively under a number of different conditions. Mobile compatibility labs would be something you'd be really helpful with if you have that much information about that, right? If you work in a company that makes cell phones. I'm gonna die here. I'm gonna try not to, though. Yee. Oh, what the... Sweet wow. Liberty, that dude just mowed me down. That dude just straight up mowed me down, dude. Every bullet hit. Every single one of them. Yeah, I got ganked. I got ganked by a robot. Can't control my pod. Very cool. Wow, very cool. How is he aiming so well while getting shot? Ridiculous. It is actually an aimbot. True. Hey, cool. I got a machine gun. I wonder if a machine gun works well here.
Eat it. And that is why I love this gun. Max empty. New mag. Hot asset destroyed. Sending in an eagle. Ooh, metal. Got the metal. Let's get out of here. All right, next. New man. Next. Dino Let's Manon with 500 bits said, "Good morning, Thor and Goblins." Good morning. Have you heard about the game Omega Crafter on Steam? It is open world survival game where you can get robot helpers that you can program. Seems like, like a game you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. I have not seen the game actually. I'll have to check that out. I'm gonna add that to my list. Also, you're a goblin. You are 100% a goblin, dude. I've returned. Who are we playing with? Uh, let's see. What do we got today? Wolfie, Shizuku, and Iruku. Right now. Holy shit. Alright. Damn it. What the hell game? Why is that have collision there? How about a nice cup of liver tea? Heavy, Did that not blow up? Did I get that in? Alright, guess we'll try again. I'll blow up for it. Worth. Worth. They were cachet off the top of the thing. That's fine. I took it out. It's all good. Can't control my pod. Ready to liberate. Yeah, you can eat it through the door. If the door is open, you can throw it in the door. Yeah. It's actually awesome. I'm gonna go kill meters. that while you guys are firing the missile. Tech pack inbound. Calling down a support weapon. Running away. Nice. The arc weapons are fixed, man. It is a good day. It is a good day. I'm gonna go blow this thing up. Because we're so close to killing it. Yeah, doors and vents. There's so many hulks. Holy shit, man. Alright, I'm gonna die for this. I just need to find out where it is. I don't have to live. I just have to blow you up. Wait, what? Ending in an eagle. There we go. Oh my god, the physics. I blew it up, it's good. 
south. Far. There's so many, like, weird little physics angles that you get caught on in this, man. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. The absolute fear. The flagpole collision, man. Oh, okay. Okay, are we just sniping with missiles now? Is that what we're doing? That's fine. Let's get the hell out of here. Now, you may want to start extraction. I'm just going to kill this Hulk while that's going on. Running away! Joel using missile snipers? Always does, man. Remember, chat, Joel is not your friend. Right? Don't forget that. Don't forget. How's the arc throw against bots? Always feels good. Haruku, what are you doing? He's a traitor! They're not shooting him! Aruku's a traitor. You saw that. You all saw it. You all saw it. I'm letting the Ministry of Truth know about this, dude. This guy killed by Wolf? Good. Fully undemocratic behavior happening there. Oh, no! He got a flare off. No. There's gonna be bullshit now. And there's the bullshit. Oh god, there's so much bullshit. What just hit me? I don't even actually know what hit me there. It was really weird. Holy shit. Okay. We're physics, dude. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go! Oh. Nice. Oh my god. Somehow all is extracted, dude. Somehow made it. You love to see it. You love to see it. Have you prayed today? No, I don't. I don't pray. I'm not religious, my dude. Any takes on Baltimore bridge ship collapse? What colla what take would there be? It's a tragedy, dude. What what do you mean any takes on it? This shit sucks. Like It's an awful thing, right? Zultra Lord with 500 bits said hot dog. Hot dog indeed. Four tie with 500 bits said hi I've seen a lot of your thoughts and opinions on multiple platform and I love what I hear but I have a question do you think hacking in any genre of game will ever be slowed or will it be stuck at the constant stalemate it's at nowadays? Anytime you have an offense side, so the attacker side, uh, you're gonna get a defensive reaction. Anytime you have a defensive advancement, you're gonna get the offensive side trying to solve the puzzle. It is unlikely that this will ever be solved, at least with current technology. Because the attacker side and the defender side are just going to stalemate each other. For sure. I don't, I don't see that really changing right now. Not currently, anyway. 
I have one thing to unlock. It is just this helmet. And then I am done. Did they fix the arc bug? Yes, they did. Eldiver, take command of the galaxy's liberation. Mantis is almost done. Almost done. Why are there so many people at Oshun still? This is not the Major Order! The Major Order is robots. It's robots time, dude. The Major Order is robots. We have to do this. We have to do this. Ustotu. That is the Major Order. The major Order is robots. They suck at bots? They want to complete the liberation? I mean, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, we gotta do a Stotu first. If you don't do a Stotu, then you can't get Troost. Yeah. It's more like a major recommendation. <laughs> major this mine. Uh, it looks like people are gonna get Mantis first. We can do Mantis. Mantis is fine. It's an easy planet, too. We won't have the anti-air. Anti-air kind of sucks. Operation complete. Initiating FTL jump to the Mantis system. Can you not get it from Ustotu? Is that not possible? Jump we need Vandalon? That sucks. Mission coordinates locked. I'll do it, Aruku. I'll remove you. And I'll feel nothing for it. You know I will. Here? We have four days, it'll be fine. Probably true. Probably. I'll do it. Oh, it looks like we still only get three. Shit. That is not fun. I actually want to try the laser against these. I haven't tried it against them. I want to see what it feels like. Zultra Lord with 500 bits said hot dog. <laughs> Is that all of your messages today, Zultra Lord? God damn. Anode underscore KK with 500 bits said customer 44 ticket number 123. You previously said you need to buff stuff instead of nerfing the meta to remove the meta. Yes. But it results in power creep. How yes. would you deal with power creep and big numbers go bigger without nerfing stuff? Make nerfing meta a hard no, as you said. The idea is you don't just do that. Here's what you do. If something is an outlier, you have a bunch of things that are real shitty filling, and you have one thing that's the outlier, right? You don't nerf this one down to here, which is the standard. You bring all these up to here, and then you nerf this one slightly down to there. You buff everything in the game, and then you slightly nerf the bad thing. And you do these in different patches. And you do the buff first, because then players feel better about the other items. And they get used to using the other items before you nerf the only thing that's in meta. If you only just nerf the only thing in meta, people are completely lost, and they don't know what to do, and they hate the game. That's what Helldivers did? No, it's not. They nerfed the shit out of everything first. Then they moved on to buffing things. The buffing things that they tried to buff were not effective. Because of the fact that monsters still didn't work against those. Yeah. They had to go and nerf the monsters two patches later, which was important, right? If you're going to do that, it doesn't work. Flamethrowers were not a good choice. Until they nerfed uh, heavy armor enemies like uh, crushers, they just didn't work very well. It wasn't a good move. I got the Yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it was a good choice, to be honest with you. Wow, I just blew up my own arm. That was cool. Liberty save me! Liberty save me! Oh come on, man! Freaking Hulk out of nowhere, dude. So my eagle is jammed. Means we got an anti-air somewhere on here. Holy shit. Three hulks? Three of them. Okay. 
I don't even feel bad about that. That shit's ridiculous. Yeah, there were three hawks, dude. Enemy, Let's do this. Package acquired. Dropping package. Have to gang up. It's funny as hell. Yeah, three hulks is insane, dude. Yeah, I guess I'll die. Exactly. Is this just? Oops, all worthless. Requesting air support. Package acquired. Smoke. Dropping package. Smoke is not worthless in bots. Uh, I don't really find a lot of use in it. Yeah. I don't find a lot of use in it at all, to be honest with you. I'm going to go to the anti-air emplacement. Because now we have an SEAF artillery. It's easy to do. Smoke is very not great. Yeah. Love this gun. Okay, I guess that works. As I guess, I guess I'll put out a hell bomb, you know? It wasn't working. It's very funny. It's time to get the hell out of here. Map, I'm going all the way up there. Oh, another Hulk. Found Gotta do Serpentine, dude. Medic armor? Medic armor is pretty amazing shit, to be honest with you. Get out of here. I'm at the charger. Oh yeah, chargers are... They nerfed the shit out of their HP. And I think that was super needed. Because they were just overpowered, dude. Like, absolutely overpowered. DVA with five dollars said hi four. I'm in the publishing arm of a mid-sized studio. Cool. We're moving to RRI first priorities and passing on cool games because of that. Any advice? When you're passing on innovative and interesting ideas that could do well in the market because you're choosing the safer option, you're choosing boring ass games that are less likely to succeed. It's usually how that goes. 
Look at Power World. Power World got passed up by a ton of different publishers because everyone was like, ah, I don't know if that's going to work. Now look at them. Right? It's... I know that the publishing wing is all about safety, but at certain points you have to take risks. And if you don't take risks, you miss out on shit like that. Legitimately. I think it's kind of sad, frankly. Because that game's awesome. Requesting objective equipment. Rare sample acquired. Yeah, publishing is all safety and statistics. I agree. Yep. Why is level 46 so unbalanced in Helldivers? What are you talking about? 4 and 6, like 4 to 6 are pretty easy. We only play on 9. Engaging terminal. Bots incoming. Well, all right. Did it just drop two hulks? It totally did. Anyway, I'm gonna get into a sniper position because this is some bullshit. Yeah, certified bullshit going on over there. A little bit of bullshit. Oh, of course. I'm dead. This is fine. <laughs> A tiny little piece of fire touched me and deleted me, dude. That's funny as shit. Is it PvE with a PvP component? No, there's no PvP. No, no, no. Yeah, it said killed by myself, which is weird. Automaton facility destroyed. Reinforcing. The amount of automatons that spawn on this are just insane, to be honest with you. Zultra Lord with 500 bits said for I think Dearly has an air launch in two days. Yeah, I'm aware. He's supposed to tell me when he's all ready, man. Wow. Okay. Yeah, he's supposed to talk to me when he's ready, man. And he's not ready yet. Jesus Christ. Yeah, thanks, Joel. Liberty save me! Liberty save me! Like how my character's screaming like he's dying, but he's totally not. Alright, let's see if a laser cannon is any good against these, because I have never tried a laser cannon against bots, and I have no idea if it's good. Okay, this feels bad so far. Yeah, no, it's just not good. It doesn't feel right because you're there's too much getting knocked around, so it's not really good. It doesn't feel right. Yeah, I'd rather just use arc thrower. Too much getting knocked around. Yeah. Joining the fray. Doesn't feel good. Bugs or bots? We have to kill bots right now. I don't like finding bots, to be honest with you, but we have to fight bots. Dropping a pin, northwest, 300 meters. The major order is to fight bots. Yeah, I'm probably gonna switch to the railgun, yeah, or back to the arc thrower. Probably be the arc thrower. Nobody likes bots. It's because they're really kind of overpowered, to be honest. North. Just take, basically, you just take bugs, but you make them all ranged. That's it. What is a major order? 
Oh no. See this? That's the major order. We have to take the, the planet of Troost. And the way that we take that is by going deep into automaton territory, you know? Gemini is love with 500 bits said hi Thor thank you for inspiring me to start my coding journey and game development. I have been studying Python and close to start making my first game in Space Invaders. Is there a way to hand this game out to friends and family without putting it on Steam? Again yeah. thank you for giving me the courage to follow my dream job. Use itch.io my dude. Yeah use itch.io that is a totally fine way to do this there's nothing wrong with it at all. Rare sample acquired. And you should. Obscuritea with 500 bits said I'm going to hack the moon and build a space ferret army to steal all the snacks. Do what you want. There we go. Got all of the samples, and it is time to get the Tacking hell out of here. East, 300 meters. Time to get the hell out of here. No space Chili for underscore you. W0NKA with 1000 bits said I am not subscribed to your YT channel on purpose cause you said you set your shorts to show people who aren't subbed lol. No, it'll actually go to people who are subbed now. I started doing it to people who are subbed because it's hitting a larger amount of audience because there's so many people who are subscribed to the channel now. There's no reason not to. Requesting air support. I wonder if that'll kill them all. Down a nice. Yeah, you can set it so it goes to people who are uh, subscribers or non-subscribers. Either way. Slick the shirts are awesome. Thank you. Said, hey, That's very nice of you. I'm a game dev graduate who started an internship last week. I have nice. your streams in the background while I work in Unity all day. It's very you nice were the one you. who motivated me to get into the field in the first place. Keep up the good streams and hello from Eastern Canada. Jesus. Dude, that is terrifying. What? Did I just trip on a rock? Like, what the hell just happened there? Like, what? My character didn't get hit by anything, suddenly tripped over, and then just got mulched. Like, alright. That was ridiculous, dude. Staggered by what, though? Yeah, like, what did I even die to? Requesting advanced weaponry! Requesting fortifications! I think I got stuck right here. That was weird. Yeah, I got Joel, dude. ER Nesbit with 500 bits said been working in IT jobs for almost 30 years and did white hat stuff in the 90s before switching over to web dev, security and DQAAS, DBA. You have inspired me to learn Godo with my son. Thank you for inspiring people to be creative and learn, no matter the subject. Dude, I'm really glad you are. That's awesome as shit. Godot is really easy to learn too, so making that with your son is likely going to be quite easy. It can be a really effective way to do that kind of shit and it's fun. Teaches the kids something awesome. Teaches you some awesome stuff. Everybody wins. Ending in an eagle. Got him. God damn it. The weapon sway. The weapon sway. Oh. 
No. All right, cool arms, dude. God, the bots. The trees are speaking binary, Chet. I have to survive. I have to survive. Holy shit. Am I bleeding out? I'm bleeding out. Can't climb this. Uh. Oh. I finally died. It's just too many. It's just too many, dude. Just too many of them, dude. What? Calling in reinforcements. I landed at the bottom of a pit. <laughs> Holy shit! Amazing. Nice hole, thanks. So anyway. It's pretty good, right? Using macros for reinforce? No. Right hand, arrow keys. You reuse macros like that, you're removing part of the fun of the game. You gotta do it. You gotta do it yourself. Nice. Numpad over arrow keys. I prefer arrow keys. Yeah, I use my right hand for arrow keys, and I bound all my my uh, stuff to arrow keys. We need to get that soil data, dude. Holy shit! No wonder these so goddamn many robots. Damn it. Requesting air support. Well, I blew that up. There's too many of them, dude. Yeah, there's just too many of them. What is Aruku doing? Suzuka's got it, dude. Most interested is what he's doing. I don't actually know. This is too many bots, man. The difficulty still doesn't scale damage. It very clearly scales the accuracy of the enemy, which effectively scales damage. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, no, it's it's definitely a damage scaler in that way. Yeah, so goddamn many rockets, dude. What is he doing? Hell underscore with 500 bits said my favorite part of chat GPT specifically is that it has not even a small amount of ability to help with GD script. It's extremely yeah. funny how bad it is. It'll reference functions it never established. It'll use node types that don't exist. It's crazy. Even something as simple as finding a typo is out of its reach. Yep. It cannot do GD script at all. Not at all. So William Mephistopheles with 500 bits said, Greetings Pirate Software. I am an IT specialist for system integration in training for three years in my company. I am now nice. halfway through my time and I no longer feel 100% comfortable in my job. Before I became an IT specialist, I wanted to start my career in audiovisual media, but due to several failures I did not succeed. Okay. After my training I could do a degree in media, which I enjoy, but I would lose my way in IT and could never get my stable job back. 
I don't know exactly where to turn. Requesting advanced weaponry! Requesting 100% comfortable in your job. Before you became an IT specialist, you wanted to start a career in audiovisual media. Due to several failures, you didn't succeed. I could do a degree in media, which I enjoy. Lose my way. I don't think you would lose your way in IT. You could. You can always take classes slower on your own time. And that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So. I'm wondering why you think you're going to lose your way in IT, you know? Why do you think that's going to close meters. that door for you? Because I don't think it will. I really don't think it will. Yeah. IT specialist for production company? It works really well? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I don't think that's a negative thing. I really don't like that enemies can track you through trees and shit. Have a taste of democracy. What the hell? Dark weapon fixed? Yeah. No, it wasn't about Thorblind. I thought that that rock was enough cover, and it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't about learning to be sneaky or not. They caught me. Because somebody else aggroed them. I wasn't even engaging in those. They were shooting me through the trees. The trees are robots too? It all makes sense. Literal aimbots indeed, dude. We need to get the actual objective though. Or we're not gonna make it. Jason A. Yawn with $10 said good morning Thor. I want to make an homage game but not sure whether to learn Unity or Unreal Engine 5 and which is better for local, online multiplayer game and I've never programmed a day in my life before. Map. Okay, Southeast. then back up. Meters. Back up a little bit. You want to make a homage game for local online multiplayer. Throw the online and local multiplayer away. Throw the dream game that you have away for a moment, right? Put it up on the shelf. If you've never programmed anything in your life before, and you've never done any of this stuff before, you need to not bite off more than you can chew. You need to make a small game, something that'll take you maybe 30 days to release, right? So what you do is you sit down and you say, I want to make a very tiny arcade game. You write down what that arcade game is going to be. This is called a game design document. Then, after you write all this stuff down, you choose the engine that works best for that kind of game. Then you choose a language for that, right? And you only need to know enough of the language in the context of the engine that you're doing. It doesn't matter outside of that, right? Doesn't matter at all. So, like, definitely don't get yourself so caught in the weeds of, I'm gonna make my dream game first. It's, you'll fail that way. You will. Because you don't have the knowledge to pull it off. Yet. And that's the important part. Doesn't mean it goes away forever. It means it goes away right now. Until you get better at stuff. So go make a shitty game. And then make a little bit better game. And then eventually make the game you really want to make. Yeah. You learn as you go. You do. With 500 bits said, Hi Thor, all this AI talk reminds me of when Corridor Digital made anime rock paper scissors using training data. Then when they made anime RPS2, they paid an artist to create all the art for the training model. They learned how to use AI properly. That's cool. That's a cool way to do it, right? Yeah. That's good. If they paid an artist to do all of the AI data, like all of the training data for the training model, and the artist was licensing that over to be used for that, that's awesome. That's super good. Nothing wrong with that at all. Valasir Thrallwin with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, when are we getting a baking off stream and make sure no goblin can enter to steal? A baking off stream? So like I I need to bake food and they have to bake food and then we have a challenge? Maybe I'll challenge Onigiri, dude. 
We'll have a glorious bake-off. Yeah. I'm gonna go to Giri. It's me and my baking prowess versus you and your baking prowess. Yeah. Iron Chef. I'd have to go to Japan, though. That's the only place you can have Iron Chef, honestly. Doesn't work anywhere else. Hunt F0RT with 1000 bits said good example of AI problem writers strike out of fear for AI writing shows. What did the mouse do during the strike? Used AI because there were no writers. Yeah, and you know what ends up happening? Eventually there's no more writers to add to the training data for the AI. At least not ones you can legally pull from. And that's the biggest problem. If, you know, Disney is doing that, if Disney did that, they're going to find really quickly no one wants to work with them anymore. People go other places. Now you have a huge problem. Yeah. These ads wild? They're two minutes long. They go off every 30 minutes. Hey, thank you for the 20 gifted subs, Blades Runner. It's incredibly nice of you. Turn sound effects off and then back on, please, to fix the garbled sound. Is that what actually fixes that shit? Because it's so annoying. Nah. Doesn't go away, dude. Yeah, it doesn't go away. Nope. We gotta leave the planet. That's the only way. SFX volume didn't change anything. We did global volume. Let's try SFX then. Oh. So you actually have to drag sound effects volume all the way down. And then all the way back up again. That's horrible. I hate that. That's super dumb. It doesn't work for... It doesn't work for uh, Master. You have to do it for specifically SFX. It's dumb. How did you die? Too many robots. Yeah, unfortunately, the clap of my ass alerted the guards. Happens to the best of us. Yeah. The sniper rockets, dude. I swear to God. It's just a single freaking rocket. One shot's here. Ugh. Yeah, rocket, rocket bullshit, dude. It wasn't a dude on the left. It was a dude straight in front of me hitting me with rockets, man. Yeah, I'm gonna swap over to the explosion resistance armor. Stealth just doesn't work. Jesus. Jesus. What? Is Haruku dead? What is this? What is this camera angle? Oh god, he's under the ground. He's under the ground, dude. A little bit of treason happening there. Yeah. Good luck, nerds. Gekosaba with 500 bits said you popped up in my YouTube short recommend. Yeah. I have never learned so much about security from someone on the internet. Oh. Well, that's very nice of you. Thank you very much. Seriously. QX Salvi with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, I just want to say I enjoy you and your streams. 
As someone who is in IT and trying to specialize in cybersecurity, I love the insight you give from your experiences. I do wonder what your opinions are on career certs for the IT world. I find that the info you learn is good, but actually passing the cert test is hit or miss as a necessity for jobs. Yep. Thoughts? So a lot of the ones that we need for offensive security is you need net plus and sec plus. That's the ones that I always tell people to use. And the reason why is because they're generally accepted by government agencies. When you're doing government contracting, those are the ones that they look for more than anything else. So those are the ones that I advise for. Again, certifications are really just there to open the door for you. Once you're in the door and you're able to get work experience, that's the only thing that matters, man. Outside of that, certs are just there to open that the first time, and then you're done. You know? Yeah. Cert training is really useful, it is. Yep. Val with $2 said, Greetings, how do I create my comic? Busy with 9 to 5. How do you create your comic? Make a web comic. You can do a 9-to-5 job, you still got weekends, man. You got weekends and you got time at home. You get off at 5 p.m. every day. I work 12 hours a day and I still got time to do other stuff. You could do it. 9-to-5? Absolutely. Do your 8 hours a day. Go home. Take a nap, take a shower, whatever it's gonna be. And then work on a webcomic. Nothing wrong with that, man. And webcomics are easy to distribute. And I read them all the time. One of the ones I'm reading right now that I read all the time is Kill Six Billion Demons. It's my favorite one. Love that shit. Yep. Whoop. Welcome back. Democracy's I'm gonna swap my, like, swap my armor around. I need to get different shit. This one is definitely not working anymore. Um. Where's my explosive resistance armor? That's arc resistance. That's the one. That's the one. Explosive resistance light. Do you guys know if an EAT blows up robot bases? Orbit synchronized. What about here? Does anyone know? What about here? Here? Only in the door. Damn it. What about here? Here? Allied destroyer has joined squadron. Here? Hmm. What about here? Detective underscore Corbo with 500 bits said, Hey, Goblin here? Superior, currently an infosec risk analyst for a bank. Looking nice. to move into a red team or blue team role using the resources in your Discord. What about here? Thank you for everything you do. Dude, that's freaking rad. Also, that's a crazy ass job. That's an awesome job. Legitimately. You're rad as hell, dude. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do orbitals. Rail cannon. 380 millimeter. Yep. It's just gonna be all orbitals and, and plane, dude. Because all of the stuff on the ground just doesn't seem to matter very much. Yeah. Laser destroys fabs, I know. Yep. The fabricators? You can't do a fourth slot. See how it's grayed out? Robot. Panoptic Robot planet Emu won't with let 500 you. bits said all hail the Goblin King. King of Goblin D's new, anyway, I made a recipe a few years back that includes Vegemite. Oh. I've stuck it, and a couple picks of steps and completed, in your cooking channel in case you're interested. Oh Super hell yeah. Super tasty. That's awesome. That's awesome shit. You can use the spear against fabricators? Really? Didn't know that. Finally, your effing shorts aren't recommended in my timeline anymore. So you, you showed up here. So now it's gonna constantly recommend me to you on Twitch. That's that was your plan. It's a pretty good plan, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, some people, dude. Tagging map northwest, 300 meters. <clears throat> Spear locks on the fabricators, I didn't know. That's actually kinda cool. Dropping a pin. 
Gao underscore FTW with 500 bits said Yar cheer 100 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 Hey 4, I am in the process of designing an action RPG based around magic being the primary form of combat. However I seem to not find any good examples of a magic combat system that doesn't feel boring or janky to play. Do you have any recommendations for making this work in a fast paced combat environment in a third person scenario? Magicka. Which is... Consequently, also made by the studio that made this game. Magic is a great example. Yeah. Oh, it's jammed. We love to be jammed. Ow, oh, goddammit. Right, that's one down. Wrong button. Let's go blow this shit up. Enemy tactical asset within range. Requesting air support. Sending in an eagle. You man. Okay. Missile bullshit everywhere, dude. I hate missiles. I hate missiles. With 50% explosion resistance in the foot, instantly killed. Really? Yeah, so much for that 50%, dude. Like, alright. Yeah, true balance. Super balance, man. Blows me away. Crouching is free? You know, crouching wouldn't have saved me there, right? You know that, right? Surprising. Yeah, 50% of 200%, I do. Thankfully, over here, we can just do this. Then I can just leave, you know? Problem was the jammer up top. Couldn't do it. Hey, thank you for the rating party of three, Oxlin. Hope you're having a good day. Parody VT with 500 bits said, Well, 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 if it isn't the flesh tuber, heard you were talking smack. We're nice people and totally not outside your house. You're definitely outside my house. You definitely outside my house. You definitely are. I watched your video. Watch your video. It was a ruse. It was all a ruse. Parody. Pickle Hater 77 with 500 yeah. bits said, Don't forget, every time Thor goes on BRB, don't listen to the excuses of, Oh, well, I had to go bathroom. It's because he's keeping beans away from his stash of nuclear codes from government days. So, might be true. Trust me, bro. It might be true, but you'll never prove it. No one will ever believe you, even if you did. What is blowing this up? You know, fine, I guess. Just looked at it and it blew up, it's fine. Matthew Azulis with five Canadian dollars said you ever thought of merch. Bongo's t-shirts, dumpy sweater, mouse plushie. Think it would be a good way to diversify income for the rest of How did that not kill me? But the first one killed me in the foot. Are feet, like, incredibly dangerous? Okay. I understand now. Your feet 
kill you instantly when it's explosions. That's exactly what it is. It's the Achilles heel. Yep. It's exactly what it is. The head is the feet, Chet. The head is the feet. Yeah, to be honest with you, merch and stuff like that, we already have merchandise, actually. Um, I think it's exclamation point merch or shop or something like that. Calling in orbital strike. Calling in reinforcements. You'll ever see it. Objective located. Calling in a support weapon. Sending in an eagle. He's doing it. We got him. Calling in extraction. Five minutes. Extraction shuttle inbound. Oh, you guys are all all the way down there. All right. Fine. Got it. God damn it. Really? Feels bad, man. Yeah, I'm going to change my armor out again. It's just not working. I kind of want to get like long range throwing is going to be what I'm going to do. R long range throwing and eats. I feel like they always aim for your butt. A little bit. Capen underscore crunch with 500 bits said two factor via SMS or authenticator app. Authenticator app. Not even close. SMS is, is actually able to be spoofed with uh, sim swapping attacks. So you can get around it. Basically, it's just vulnerable. Always has been. Holy shit. Holy shit. Wait, which way is my ship? Okay, it's right there. We're good. Where's my bomb? Orbital inbound. Orbital barrage incoming. Stand clear. This is gonna get rough. Here it comes. Yeah. Blow him up. Ow. Rude. Nice. Those reinforcements doesn't get any. Feels bad. This isn't a good place to be, I don't think. What the shit? 
Volcanic activity? Alright. Where the hell's that pelican? Pelican one landing sequence initiated. Okay. <laughs> it's so many, dude. Yeah, it's an all-out war. fools oh god oh god none of them survived that wasn't me killing them that wasn't me killing them I'm a hero chat I'm a hero that's right I'm a hero chat they just couldn't make it on the ship at the at the last second you know I, I tried everything I could I mean you know, they just, they just failed to extract. You know, they're not dead. They're not dead. They stayed on the planet to fight the robot menace. And I left to carry on their memory. That's right. That's right. It's true. It's a true. They also had a skill issue. That's the other problem, too. Yep. Surprising, I know. I know. If come uncreative with 500 bits, said any tips for a design engineer student. Uh, for a design engineer student? Not really? I don't know much about engineering, to be honest with you. That's not really my wheelhouse. Um, yeah, like my finger guns! Yeah, I don't actually know much about engineering, to be real with you. I don't really have any tips for you. Um, if you had a specific situation that you needed help with, maybe, but not just in general, you know? You design harder, right? Yeah, I don't know. I have, I have no idea in that, that regard. There has to be some kind of, like, a specific that I can help you with. And I, I don't really have anything for that. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah, I kind of want to get a servo-assisted... I think I have one in here, too. There it is. I'm going to use the servo-assisted from now on. Just that range throw. Are the arc weapons still crashing? No, they are not. Nope. Orc weapons are no longer crashing. Prowars with 500 bits said, where did you get that little cup from? Colon closing parenthesis. This cup? This is an old WoW cup, man. From way back in the day, man. Ages and ages ago. Nico Dev with five pounds said, hi Thor, love your hi. content, game dev from the UK. Struggling for jobs, portfolio is done. Still devving projects and can't make progress. Yeah. Any advice? I think at that point it might be a resume thing, man. Here? Like, game dev from the UK, struggling for jobs. Really? Yeah, I would say, like, what is your resume like? Because I would always say one-page resume, one-page cover letter. And that's, like, a big deal for that. Here? Many people are trying to make these massive, massive, you know, resumes and cover letters and shit. You just can't do it. You can't do it because you get overwritten. There's a lot of filtration that happens between, like the stuff that you're trying to do in that, and it's... It ends up just being where a lot of people make these massive, massive res resumes, they throw them up there, and then they just get filtered out. So, the only thing I can put on that is, like, hey, one-page cover letter, one-page resume. Cover letter just needs to be your name. It needs to be, hey, as per my resume, these are my skills. I look forward to hearing you, from you, and thank you for the opportunity. And then, for the resume, it's just your work experience. It's the things that are relevant on there. If, if it's relevant to the position, bold it. And then that's it, basically. Maybe a little bit more about yourself, about your education, things like that. But it's not... It's not supposed to be something long, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, you're just gonna get filtered. So that's the only thing I can say about that, is like, short resume, short cover letter. Don't get filtered. It's not even about getting the job, it's about getting to a human being. Alright. 
the hell is this? Why can they see me after that happens? You know what I mean? They shouldn't be able to. I find that to be weird. Zexa 252 with 500 bits said IDK how to twitch, but here you go, your Discord community is amazing, the mods oh. are great, and so are you. That's very nice of you, thank you very much dude, seriously. Nefana with 500 bits said Yar cheer 500 you know how you say that you choose the game type before you choose the engine, because some correct. engines are better for some game types, despite popularity. This is also true for tabletop games. So yes. saying just mod D and D to make your game is like saying just mod Unreal. I would love to introduce you to more TTRPGs. I have dozens I never say, on my shelf. I never say just mod D and D to, you know, to do that. I never say that. Never just mod D and D to make your game. Usually, what I say is, if you want to build a tabletop RPG, go make it in something like Tabletop Simulator. Tabletop Simulator is a very good option for prototyping those types of things. If you want to play D&D, that's fine, and that's a great way to learn how to do writing and other activities, but you don't have to just mod D&D. And I've played a shitload of tabletop RPGs over the year. I'm a big fan of White Wolf Publishing. I go all the way back to things like uh, Vampire the Masquerade and Werewolf and so many other different things out there. Tons and tons of tabletop RPGs. I've been into them for a very, very long time. Really, really long time. Yeah. Severe Buck Holtz with 500 bits said Yard cheer 100 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 love watching your stuff on YouTube. Thank you. My favorite clip is your disrespectfully reclining. <laughs> disrespectfully recline. It's very funny. Droid Boy plays with 500 bits said Hey Thor, started watching you about a week ago and have learned a lot. Brain has been considering the world that you live in. Worried but hopeful about trying things. In other news, did you see the trade G today in Baltimore? Link incoming. Yes. HTTPS colon slash slash twitter.com slash YW reporter slash status slash one. Yeah, no, we've seen it. It's awful, dude. It's really sad. It's funny, too, because I, I think a lot of people are talking about it, but they're not talking about it in the sense of like, wow, that's so awful. They're like, wow, look at this. You know, like. It's a little bit grim, frankly, you know? It's a little bit, it's a little bit grim. What the shit just blew up? I don't even know what just blew up. There was nothing there. Yeah, it's a little bit of doom scrolling tourism for sure. But to be real with you, people died. It's not, it's not great. It's not an entertainment piece or anything like that. I even even had somebody come in and it's like, hey, what's your take on this? Like, what do you mean, what's my take on that? What? That doesn't make any sense, dude. Like, think about it as a human being for five seconds, you know? Yeah, it's weird Throw shit. Something. What happened? Bridge Jocketh and, with five dollars said collapsed. Humble Bundle is running a deal it's on a bad. huge number of cert training course for twenty-five dollars. Mm. Includes A plus, net plus, and sec plus among about fifty others. Is this the one that had a bunch of AI art? Because if it is, then I'm just gonna kill it. But I'm gonna go look. I'll look into it. Yeah, I don't know. D leader 231 with 500 bits said, Hi Thor, what's the mod called? 
by Thor. The mod? What do you mean, the mod? Sending in an eagle. What mod, dude? Oh, come on. The stupid collision on this rock is larger than the model. I'm just gonna run. Because we already got that one done. Tagging map, southwest, far. Alright. What do you mean, the mod, dude? dude? What are you guys talking about? Survive with one HP, lol. The Terraria mod you're playing right now? It all makes sense. Good. Good. <laughs> so anyway. Get supplied, nerd. Come on, man. I hate robots so freaking much, dude. I hate robots so freaking much. Yeah, 100% bot ganked. Yep. They gank you so hard that even the game doesn't know what killed you, dude. Insane to me. Hello. Has Rare sample acquired. All right. Requesting air support. Going this way. Actually, wait. God damn it. There we go. Meg's hearty with 500 bits said good day, Lord of the Leather Trim Thor. I hope you are doing well. I hope we I'm can have good. a chance to chat at some point in the future. Till then have this, leatherworking is always a cutting edge profession. I asked the leather craftsman if he was alright. He said he was just going through a rough patch. You can always rely on leather, it's so dependable, it's the hide or die type. Who made you this way? Amazing. Neo X Rave with 501 bits said Yard Cheer 501 Heya Thor, I was setting up animations in a blend space for basic locomotion in UE5. They wouldn't run backwards properly, so I thought my stake machines were wrong, and after much tinkering, decided to sleep on it. After waking and going through the day, I realized I screwed up my blend space blueprint and didn't have any backwards animations at all. Moral of the story, sleep on your problems, chat. It'd be really cool if the arc weapon actually didn't get caught on rocks and shit. I need to find another weapon, it just doesn't work on these planets. I think I'm gonna switch over to the antimatter sniper. Actually. I think the antimatter sniper is probably a better use. Yeah. I'm thinking the animator, any meta sniper is going to be bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use that instead of the arc weapon. Because I love the arc weapon, but it just feels good against bugs. Not really against bots, you know? The laser cannon, you die before you have a chance for it to kill anything, frankly. The scythe isn't as good as this, because the scythe can't do that. That'd be really cool if this let you play the video game. There we go. Yeah, the Plant Scorcher is just better than this one. 
against bots. Holy shit, dude. The knockdown explosions and, like, fire from the trees, man. Okay. That's a really weird one. Yeah, because you can't see them, but they can see you. Let's see. Alright. Yeah, plants and shrubs being bulletproof is annoying as hell. I think it's, um, it's worse when it's, like, the arc gun. Because the arc gun itself is actually, it, like, stops shooting. When it tries to pull that, right? Like, when you try to shoot past stuff, it just won't do it. It's kind of weird. Yeah. I'd love helmet effects for sight. That would be amazing, dude. Yeah. Also this, like... <laughs> so annoying. You man. Kill the Hulk, worth. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> uh, it's like missile tracking, dude. Freaking ridiculous. Yeah, what? Indeed. You're like, okay. Robot nom, dude. Ready to liberate. The bot missions seem like you just have to kind of fail forward, right? I'm on it. Okay. Requesting air support. No game, please. That missile went through my camera. I'm getting sniper shit over there. Jesus, dude. Calling in reinforcements. What good is that, Class Scorcher? It's amazing against bots. Yeah, you get flanked constantly by the bots, dude. And it's because they can see you through the trees, but you can't see them. That's really all it comes down to. They also have really, really good accuracy on high levels. So on low levels, they won't do it, right? They won't hit you. On high levels, they're crazy good accuracy. JMBO09 with 500 bits said to you, or chat, have any recommendations on gamified SQL learning programs? I saw one last week but like an idiot didn't bookmark it. I know I've building your own one. project is the way, looking for this to supplement foundational knowledge. I don't Appreciate think I've ever you. seen a sequel video game. 
other than EVE Online, which is sort of a meme, right? It's basically Excel in space. But to be real with you, not really. Does anyone know a game that is like a SQL database video game? To teach people SQL? Yeah. SQL Detective? Is that a thing? I've never heard of this. No, they're not trying to learn SQL injection. They're trying to learn how to use a database. Holy shit. Alright. There's just like a million bots in there. That's fine. Yeah. Ridiculous, frankly. Yeah, there's one called the Sequel Murder Mystery. Yeah, here we go. Mystery.nightlab.com. There you go. Sequel Murder Mystery. That's cool. I dig that. There we go. Nice. Oh, I have Sauron. Doesn't even matter. I've already won. I've already won. Smoke bomb sent you shit, no. Oh. Oh, that's a Hulk going. I'm so dead. But I killed your buddy. You know? Ragdolls are great, dude. Jesus. Okay. Dead. Grenades! Grenades for everyone! Grenades for everyone! There we go. <laughs> I threw as many grenades as possible. <laughs> Sometimes it's your only choice, man. Just grenades for everyone. That's the way. Oh, oh, oh. Mmm. How is that not dead? Ready to liberate. I need more grenades. Oh, I'm I'm already dead. What man he kinda using? Class Scorcher. It's really good, it's just not. It's just too many goddamn bots, dude. These missions are a bit overtuned. As you can see. What? 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 All right. It's pretty good, right? get good we do we only do level nine and we win every mission so you get good nerd what are you gonna do now is this the meta i guess the meta on robot missions dude is survive like that's all it is there's not really anything that's effective 
So you just gotta do anything you can. Yeah, hide and seek champion right here, dude. Yeah, you don't care. Just survive. Oh, he's screwed. He's so screwed. He's so screwed. Upstrat. It was the upstrat. It was true. We just gotta get one guy out. Maybe even not get a new guy out. We already won this mission, so it's done. Yeah, we already won the mission. It is irrelevant, chat. Sharp we have Rain already 38 won. With 500 bits said, do you have any advice for someone trying to get into video game art or just digital art in general? I'm not exactly sure what direction I'm going, but I'm working towards an associates in arts and an associates in fine arts and want to try my hand at it, but I'm not sure where to go beyond those associates and where to find opportunities like apprenticeships or internships. Point me to the enemy. Holy shit, dude. And a grenade? Disrespect. It's insane, dude. It's completely insane. I'm telling you, it's completely insane. But yeah, no, so to be real with you, um, you try your hand at it, but you're not sure where to go beyond these associates and where to find opportunities like apprenticeships or internships. Look for any studios that are nearby to you. Another thing you can do is do game jams if you want to do game art specifically, right? And when you do game jams, you are putting yourself out there as a game artist, and now you have a little bit of stuff you can put in your portfolio. Portfolio, at that point, is going to be very effective. Because of the fact that you'll have a small amount of working in a game team to produce a video game experience, right? It goes a long way. Game jams go a long way. So if you haven't got any experience in that role, do that. Get that experience and then use that in local positions like local indie studios to get jobs. 100%. Keep an eye out for more yep, portfolio is huge, my dude. And when you do a portfolio, don't just show your work. Show the process of getting there. The process of getting to completed work the time involved, everything. Dude, Mantis is down? Where were we at? What was the percentage we were before we started those missions? Bro, you just snubbed that guy? Won't be the last time. It's a Ruka, dude. He deserves it. When you've been here long enough, you'll know why. Yeah, did they nuke it? They must have nuked it. They must have nuked it. Operation Swift Disassembly. Interesting. We've identified a long-range communications array deep in automaton space. Its capture may reveal critical intelligence about the enemy's plans. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to use the bathroom real quick. Be right back.
I have returned. Are you ready? Are you ready? He eats you using a robot. You'll never be able to see me eat, dude. It's never gonna happen. Arctic Moon with $5 said a pirate fighting for democracy is a wild thing. Manage democracy? It's different. I think we're gonna go back here. Wait, why is this so quiet? Across the galaxy are fighting for Where's my audio? The sound is gone. You cannot hear this audio. There's no audio with clicking on these now. The Galactic War. A battleground awaiting your... You hear the music, guys. Look, there's no audio. Plunder this planet of every last resource. Go forth and reclaim our land. This operation is complete. You have served democracy well. You do not have audio, you goblin. You only have voice. You only have voice audio. There was no sound effects audio. This planet calls it's just broken. <laughs> from the robots that enslave it. Cool game, dude. Initiating FTL jump to the Usto 2 system. You don't hear the clicking of the menu. It's not playing the audio. There's no way you could possibly hear the clicking of the menu. <laughs> it's like in your head or some FTL shit, jump. dude. Successful. It's not there. Help there is no audio off. playing. Mission coordinates lost. You can hear the clicking in your mind, dude. What about here? Here? What about here? Here? You're not hearing the here? clicks. There's no clicks playing. Here? My computer is the one that is sending the audio to you. There's no audio here? playing. What the hell, dude? Chat is full of gaslighting. That's insane. Completely insane. The audio on that menu was missing. There was no menu clicking sound in that at all. I can even see the audio game, like, mixer, showing no volume. You goblin asses. This one is here. <laughs> you didn't hear clicking. You heard it in your head. There was no clicking happening. Oh my god. Jack Farrell with $10 said, Thor, can you please explain your sleep schedule habits? Sure. I am intrigued. Yeah, no, absolutely. I um, I stream 12 hours a day, and then I work another four hours. Then I have three hours of free time, which, to be honest with you, I usually work with that as well. Then I sleep for five hours, and I do it again. Every day. Except for Thursday. Thursday, I just work 16 hours straight. And I don't have it on, on stream at all. Yep. Five hours of the day, dude. Now watch this chat, trust the chat, MD. Go now. And fear the shadow of night and death, cash pack. not tyranny, Calling down but a justice is your cause. Calling down a walker. I'm wondering, is there any point in killing robot dropships? Because by the time you can kill it, they've already dropped all the units. So what's the point? Oh my god, this game.
Can't see shit. Nope, dead. Missiles don't kill the Hulks at all. Also, they changed it so that the exosuit is really bad at aiming missiles very close. So because of that, there's nothing you can do about it. They're not very good anymore. Um, in close range. Long range, they're great. Nothing wrong with them. But close range, not so much. That one's down. Why am I slowed forever? Come on. Okay. Oh, God damn it. Somehow domed by that and not dead. It won't bind to them. That's cool. Yeah, the rock is super dumb, dude. I don't understand why that's a thing, too. Just, just the binding of the weapon is just really bad. What the hell? Yeah, my head is protected by thoughts of democracy. <laughs> All right, that's fine, I guess. You know. Kaparkino with 500 bits said I have been watching your shorts for a while, but your videos on the recent Apex situation have given me a newfound interest in cybersecurity and has gotten me into programming. I have started learning the basics of programming and JavaScript and I am really enjoying it. Thank you, for less than three. Dude, any time. I'm really glad you enjoy it. Really glad you enjoy it. Honestly. Ooh. I'm really glad, man. Like, there's so much to learn in that area, too. There's just so much to learn. God, I love the Plast Scorcher, dude.
Oh. Oh. Well, all right. I don't know why it was slowed for 10,000 years, but I guess that's where we're at. Yeah, a little bit of cordon. Just a little bit. JDEX 706 with 500 bits said thanks for all the Apex coverage. Dude, As a burnt out IT security professional, this is the Again? first thing in a while to make me want to solve the puzzle. Oh, I'm so dead. Oh, I'm not dead. We won, though. Sending in an eagle. Oh, it's beautiful. I want to die in that. No! I wanted to see him explode. Yeah! Feels good. Feels good, man. Eat it. Sweet liberty! My leg! Yeehaw! Oh, my bones! Oh, my bones! Oh, my bones! I made it! I'm a hero. I'm a hero. I did it, Chad. I did it. The real Wiggler Queen with 500 bits said, Mr. Thor, could I bother you for your Helldiver's friend code? Or is there another way to send a request? I will send you my Helldiver's friend code, I'll put it up on screen. The problem with this is... There's a million ways of getting friend code, like, friends on here, and there's... When you try to add people, it is incredibly slow. I kind of want to automate it, to be honest with you. I really do. I really, really do. Because it feels so slow and bad. Yeah. Like, I'll show you guys in a second here. Watch this. High in life toilet. Very nice. No, it's not a friend code command, dude. Let, let me show you why this is a problem. I've never wanted to get out of a cutscene so long in my life. Come on. Alright, so, you do this, you go to social, and then when you want to add people, right? So, friend requests, watch this. There's actually lag. Why, dude? Like, why does this take so long? And why isn't there just a, like, accept all button? And I have... I have a shitload of pages of requests for this. So, there's the friend code, but I'm gonna be real with you. It's a lot of friend code requests. Like, it's a lot of them. So... Yeah. And cross-platform, it doesn't even work. Yeah. Yep. I hate it, but I love the game so much. I feel the same. Like, this is just a freaking mess. What is that order? I have I think it's in order of of who recently invited you. It's very odd. Coordinates locked. Help pods prime. Work in progress? Yeah, it's definitely a work in progress. For sure. CPT Scrapples with 500 bits said a while back you talked about your time in the red team, but also mentioned the fear of overzealous security guards, workers. Yep. Has there ever been times that you can talk about OFC about where that fear came true? Yeah, I got tackled into gravel once. It was not fun. You may not know this, but like, gravel is not sand. <laughs> it's very painful. Yeah, not a fun time. That felt like shit. I was shredded all of my arms. Uh, it's not awesome. All of my arms and here on my face. I was like, well, that sucks.
What game is this? Democracy. And Humble boy, TV is there a lot. 500 lot. bits said, Hey Thor, do you mind explaining your sleep schedule habits? Yeah. I am intrigued. 16 hours a day of work, 3 hours a day of free time, 5 hours a day of sleep. Every day. Every day. Although lately, I haven't been getting the full 5 hours, and the reason why is because I have too much shit to do. Too much shit to do! Although soon, that will go away. And everything is jammed. We love a jam. Where the hell's the jam? Oh god, we don't know where the jam is. How will we make a peanut butter and jelly then? This is bad. And it would have been cool if when I hit reload, it reloaded. But it didn't. Freedom never sleeps. Lone Star. Yeah, exactly. Calling down a support weapon. Oh. I'm gonna get away from that before they you know what? Beat it. Fine with that. <laughs> totally fine with that. Don't even care. Yeah, solid trade. One of me for six of them, dude. I wish I could have controlled my pod. Point B to the enemy. Objective located. Northeast. Who's that? Ooh. Get out of here. Max empty. Calling in a hell bomb. All right. Jesus, dude. I don't understand why these blade guys are so tanky. Like, there's not really any equivalent on bugs. Those blade guys are just really, really tanky. Tanking map. East, yeah. The ra laser pistol is terrible. Yeah, no, I agree with that. The laser pistol is very bad. I wish it wasn't, too. Rare sample acquired. Alright, got all of those. Dropping a pin, southeast. 200 meters. I don't have a degree. That's not true. I went to college to be an entomologist. I, I dropped out, my dude. Yeah, no. Where's the rock? It was right there. Yeah, no. I went to college to be an entomologist. Dropped out That's and then uh, had a long career in offensive security. Now I make video games on the internet. And I hang out with you guys. Hey, look at this. Mag's empty. New mag. The reason why I love this gun is this. It's insane. Yeah, the Scorcher's insane against these, dude. It's so good against these. Because it has explosion. Yeah, the explosion damage is awesome as hell. William Kurokami with 5 euros said, Hi Thor, I want hey, to thank up? you for the inspiring YT shorts. Dude, They've anytime. really motivated me to do what I always wanted. Watching your streams during work. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is watching my streams during work what you always wanted to do? I don't think that's what the way that you wrote it, but that is the way that it came across. I'm fine with this. If that was- if this is your dream, I'm glad you could attain it. Proud of you. Deeply proud of you. New mag! Sending in an eagle! Engaging terminal! Look at that. Wait for it, wait for it. Yeah. I got the terminal. 
I'm definitely going to start running with this. I want to see what the spear is like. We love the ICBM, dude. The hell? Oh, son of a bitch. Reload, dude. Dead. Alright, I'm definitely going to enjoy this. The spear versus the automaton things? Yes. That is a hard, hard counter. 100%. We're using that from now on. That's really, really good, dude. Doesn't work from the front like that. Um, let me see if I can hit it with this. Okay, perfect. I'm out. Got it. Head aim slightly ahead above it. It's dead now. Yeah, you just have to shoot slightly above it if you're gonna do uh, the eat, because the eat actually has fall off. What are these? Do you see these? What are these? Are those eyeballs from the robots that are just like disconnected? What the hell is that? My god. We killed them so hard they turned into eyes. Yeah, they're invisible now. You shoot me through the sand. Nearby. All right. This is getting a little silly over here. It's got a little, it got a little ridiculous. I can't see shit. Oh, hey, that's a good sign. I think. Cameras all covered in dirt. I think they're blowing up their own dudes. You know? I think they killed them all. Nice. Found something. Feels good, man.
No, I don't want an arc thrower. As much as I love my arc thrower. Mission at 30 minutes remaining. Okay, nothing over there. You gonna aim? You gotta can you aim? Alright. There we go. <laughs> That's the one problem with this damn thing, dude. It never locks. I've got this one. Doesn't seem like it has very long range either. good. You know, feels a little bit good. I found a better strategy for fighting robots. It's a good deck. Ow, come on. Holy shit. Ah, shit. No, this is really bad. I'm stuck on a freaking rock. Son of a bitch, dude. Stuck on a rock and my character just kept vibrating. There's not much you can do. Alright, where the hell am I? Where did you summon me? Okay. Let me go get my shit back. No. Oh. Blew it up. Package acquired. Dropping package. The hell? There we go. Jesus. Package acquired. Dropping package. Package acquired. Dropping package. Max empty. Holy shit. Oh, okay. I'm so dead, dude. Oh my god. I didn't realize that they were all behind me like that. God damn. God damn. At an LG with 500 bits said there was an ambush. I recently encountered an in-game tip which told me that orbital barrage stratagems get more angled the closer you are to the edge of the map, implying yes. that your ship is above the center of the map. Yes, that is correct. You can actually see them as well, and that is that is like that for everything that you use. Including 500 kilogram bombs, all of it. They go from the direction of your ship. Sending in an eagle. So you can see this here, right? It'll come from that kind of direction, mostly on top. So wait for it. Sending in an eagle. Boop. There you go. It's based on like the direction of it. Eagles are kind of weird. <laughs> Because some people say that they go in the direction that you're facing, and some people say that they go in the direction of your ship. But, to be honest with you, it seems like sometimes they just are random. I don't know why the eagle does that. Yeah, we've had it happen where it's totally random before. <laughs> like where I'm facing this way, and it comes directly at me. Yeah. And it's a 500 kilogram, so it's really weird. I don't know why that one does it. It's very, very strange.
Jesus. They have no business being that heavy. It's really weird. Eat it. Gone. Ow. How did that not just hurt me? What? What just happened? Did you see that? That was really weird, right? Yeah, democracy protects, my dude. That 33 that you're seeing, that's, uh, the, what is it called? Max empty. The anti, anti-air turret that I activated earlier. It's just randomly blowing him up. Wolf. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's the, it's the Sam. It's the Sam turret that I activated. That's all it is. So when you get that, whenever it blows up a ship, you just get, um, you, you, all, all that happens is you basically get an, a 33 kill each time it happens. Yeah. What, you saw nothing? No, I see everything, my dude. Thing is dead. Oh, that's gonna go off. Ow. Shit. Okay. Uh, does the spear not bind itself to these? Oh, I guess it does. And it misses. Okay, cool. That's a great, that's an awesome, awesome weapon. That's fantastic. Why the hell does that lock-on exist if it ain't gonna do shit? It doesn't lock on unless you're close enough, apparently. Requesting air support. I'm gonna die. Probably. It'll be worth it. Oh my god, dude. Juggled. That's fine. No, there's no way to live at that point. Yeah, to be real with you, the spear wouldn't lock on when he was far away, so I had to lock on when he was closer, and then it flew over the top of him, so it's like... It's kind of inconsistent damage, you know? I need a, a more consistent damage weapon, frankly. There we go. Mission at 20 minutes remaining. 
You'll never find me. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. They'll never see me, chat. I'm dead. Worth. 100% worth. Yeah, they saw me. But not before I blew up three of their bases. Worth. Nice. Feels good, man. Extraction request confirmed. Shuttle inbound. All right. Tagging map. North. 100 meters. Dropping a pin. North. 100 meters. He started turning towards me before I shot him. Did you see that? They were like aware that I was focusing my my scope on them. That is ridiculous, actually. Like I aimed at them and all of them turned. Like what? That's some wall hack shit, dude. Insane to me. Insane wall hack shit. Hunt F Zero RT with 500 bits said experience for work should be measured in hours, not in years. It isn't fair how someone working 5 years only 25 hours a week has more experience on the job market than someone working 3 years 50 hours a week. They don't. Part-time work isn't as valuable in a lot of places when you try to get a job. I'm dead. Yeah, no, that's that's generally not a thing. You don't say you have 5 years of experience, you, have, you say you have 5 years of part-time experience. And if they ever check up on it and find out that you have part-time experience, it's dramatically different. Yeah. Smitted 392 with 500 bits said Goblin D's. Goblin D's. Oh. Alright. Just gonna just gonna go over here. Just gotta throw that down there, I'm just gonna walk away. Yeah. You can do one of these. A little bit, a little bit sneaky. That dude's a little angry, you know. Just gonna throw that down there. I don't know what that was, but it's dead now, you know? I get an SEA if I could use Yeah, it's over there. Lit everything on fire. It seems to be working. with 1,000 bits said just watched your Outer Wilds playthrough and it brought me nostalgia of my past. Thank you. It's a good game. It's a really good game. I like how I scream when I launch that. Rocket to the face, dude. Rocket to the goddamn face. It's honestly insane. Reporting to the front. Like this is this is legit insane. Ending in an eagle. Like what even is this shit, dude? You know? Some end of the world shit happening here. 
Yeah, we can't even extract. This isn't even an active extraction. This isn't even an active extraction. But the worst part is, is we've cleared the entire map. There's nothing left. So it's not like... It's not like we didn't clear stuff. It's not like that they're just like overpowered for no reason. You know? They're not, the reinforcements aren't coming from somewhere. How much more of a clip do I need to unload into that dude's head to kill him? Holy shit. That's nuts, dude. It's completely insane. The more factories you destroy, the more spawns there are. No, that's not true at all. It's the opposite, dude. You destroy the you destroy the factories and they stop spawning units. No. Requesting air support. It's very funny. You gotta believe, Chet. You have to believe. Calling in orbital strike. It's another Hulk down. Reinforcing. What the shits, dude? He shot me as I was falling. Oh my god, dude. This is nuts. It's honestly insane shit. Honestly Lucent insane shit. 500 bits said, did you see the Cthulhu city builder that was revealed a few days ago at Future Games Show? No. It's called Worshippers of Cthulhu. Also, Henry Fan Club Rise Up Yar Bongo. Can't control the pod. Very cool. Cool game. Ready to liberate. I will have to check that out. Worshippers of Cthulhu, huh? Ate it. Oh, uh, no, Scorcher's better. Hey, do you know we can proceed to extraction when ready? Do you know that? Pretty good advice, I think, right? What? No, you don't. Flare my ass, dude. Get out of here. That was super close. So I'm gonna fix this problem. Seriously? Hell divers never die! Thank you. Deeply annoying enemy. Oh. Rex slips, Rex slips. Max empty. New mag. It's an awesome gun, dude. Okay. Alright. Calling in reinforcements! Requesting orbital strike! I can't see anything through the dust. That's the problem. Like, if I could see the enemies through the dust, this would be a lot, a lot easier. That one's done. Shit. Ah! 
God damn it. I thought he was going down into the pit, so I fired my explosion killed me, dude. Feels bad. Feels infinitely bad. What even killed you? My explosion hit his shield and blew me up. Yeah. I thought he was going into the pit. Yep. Fatal Shield Froggy hit. with $5 yep. said, What are your thoughts on Dragon's Dogma 2 and the state it was released in? I think it's in a pretty bad state, to be honest with you, and I really don't like the microtransactions. To be honest, I won't be playing the game. Um, I was going to as well, and I'm not a fan of it, so. Fatal Froggy with $5 said, What are your thoughts on Dragon's Dogma 2 and the state it was released in? Same. Rip Van Winkle 397 with 500 bits said, Hi Thor. Currently 31 and a non-technical PM looking to transition to tech. Nice. As of yesterday I've signed up for programming classes at my local community college and will get an associates in programming in one year. Do you have any additional advice? No, I think that's fantastic. If you're going to be a project manager and you're going to have that kind of a background, you're going to be very helpful for like to your team, dude. That's a, that's a great thing to do. It's honestly amazing. So yeah. Yeah, good, good, man. No, I don't even have any additional advice. That's a fantastic starting point. Yeah, 100%. That's really good. Glitch27 with 1000 bits said, TTS Thor, since you are the goat of cryptography, what book or resource would you recommend to start with? Oh. It's just Shizuka, Shizuka left. For cryptography? Um. To be honest with you, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a bunch of resources to the hacking section. Because I have a bunch of resources for cryptography that you guys may really enjoy. And, uh, I'll have to add them to that. I think that's the way to do it. Yeah. I think it's the proper way to do it. Just add a bunch of resources for that. Yep. Because there's a, there's a ton of books that I have. Like, a ton of books that I have for that. Yeah. Jagan Wolf with 1,000 bits said thanks for being you. Thank you very much. I'm gonna watch him end Homeless right Alien now. 21 with 500 bits said him currently a cybersecurity and networking student going for my associates. I want to pursue ethical stamina. hacking. Would it be a smart idea to go for the bachelor's degree or take the time to teach myself and go from there? Uh, do both, to be honest with you. Augment yourself with self-teaching. Oh, God. Oh, God, there's so many of them. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Shizuka. How are you alive? My god, how are you alive? How are you alive, dude? If you stim yourself, then you'll get all of your stamina back. Stim, you fool! Not gonna stim. Oh my god, dude. Holy shit. Yeah, no stim, only panic, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, um, let's see. If you want to pursue ethical hacking, though, you should do both. You really should. Pursue that degree, but at the same time, understand that hacking and offensive security it has a very strong basis in IT. So you start in IT, and then from there, you move over towards offensive security once you have a very strong base in that. You get so much better at it that way. Really, really good at it. Oh shit. Are we doing it? Is the dream real? Where is the shuttle? Oh god, it's all the way over there. Man, how do they see that? That's bullshit. You know that's bullshit. You know that's bullshit. Still from this game doesn't work, dude. Triangulation, my ass. Eat it. Yeah. Empty. 
down a support weapon. All right, that's fine, I guess. You know, didn't need it. Yeah, didn't need it. No bugs, guys. No bugs. Is not at extraction site. Pelican yep. One landing aborted, regaining altitude. <gasps> cool bones. Run, you fool. Jesus Christ. You will never destroy our way of life! Okay. Is this is this it? Oh. Just gonna keep running, you know. There's no way, dude. There's no way. There's just no way. Like, it just never ends, dude. It's just infinite hulks, infinite bullshit. Dragoon 209 with 500 bits <clears throat> said 100 yard cheer, 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 200 wait what? 275 hold on 393 what is happening? It's too late. All of your the bits. evolution with removed. 500 bits said I am developing a game and am following your website for the most part nice. but am not big on social media, don't okay. understand it all that well and am not really interested in learning all that more of a developer how do I go about promoting my game in building or are there other ways? So, you're following the website for the most part, but you're not big on social media, you don't understand it at all, and you're not really interested in learning. But you want to market your game. Well, you better get very interested in learning very quickly, to be honest with you. Because, like, that's not how that works. If you want to market your game, you have to use social media. And if you are interested in doing this as a profession, or interested in doing this in a way where your studio will be successful, you have to be willing to learn new things. I have to learn new stuff all of the time. And if I didn't, then we wouldn't be here. So, to be real with you, that kind of outlook is not going to take you very far. You should absolutely be willing to learn new stuff. 100%. You can also pay somebody else, but the results at that point are going to be mixed, right? You're trusting somebody else with your brand, the int you know, what you've made over all this time, and saying, man, I hope that they can market it better than I could, even though they don't know much, as much about it as I do. That's a dangerous thing. It's a really dangerous thing. So, you know, figure out what you want to do. Coco Creamer with 500 bits said hello Thor, I would like hey. to tell you how much you've inspired me. I had 5 hours of sleep and woke up just in time to play Millennia. Well done. Congratulations. This exfil sucks, dude. It's completely insane to me. Every one of the robot missions is like this, by the way. Did he just die? He did. Yeah, every one of these is stupid. Every one of them is dumb. It's because the robots know exactly where you are instantly every time you do anything. You can't yellow the extract, you just die. Yeah, robots are overpowered. So, the reason why robots are overpowered is pretty simple. They know exactly where you are every time you engage. Instantly. There's no reason for it. Like, bugs? They don't know. They're not good at that. But all the robots know instantly. <laughs> They really don't know? I've shown, I've proven it multiple times on stream, so no, they do. 100%. I was fully prone, throw a, um, you know, what is it called? Throw a, uh, stratagem down at maximum distance with the arm that throws it 30% farther, and they all turn and start shooting where I'm at. So, like, no. You know, I don't think you're going to be able to get it, man. You know you can still extract, right, Aruku? You know that, right? 
you should just go prone. And then you can do it. Now, they don't leave. See defend extraction area in the top right? He's just got to survive. He's got to sit here. I'm aware that my mic is muted in game. Aruku's on the stream. Yeah, we just wait. And then at the last second, you'll try to survive. And you won't. Because you're at the top of a hill. My god. Taragoth with 500 bits said TTS yeah, after favor. Dragon's Dogma 2 stuff. I quit playing my new games and went back to old emulator games. Hope I can like new games again. Much better. Much better. You quit playing my new games and went back to old emulator games? Hope I can like new games again? No, I feel you. I feel you completely. I, I don't... The Dragon's Dogma 2 stuff sucks, man. It really does. It's ridiculous. Voice in my head with 500 bits said as a fellow Kill 6B Demons fan, I hope everyone knows that Tom bloomed is a ton of awesome TTRPGs. I didn't know that. Lancer is a mech <clears throat> combat game where Guan 3D printers can print everything. Icon yeah. is his high fantasy tactical RPG, currently in play testing. Finally, no Malagast idea. is a black metal minis game of dueling necromancers. All are available on itch. I hope people can check him out. Yeah, that actually sounds cool as shit, man. And yeah, Kill 6 Billion Demons is amazing. Love it. Absolutely love it. Krahe with 5 euros said, Do you think the programming field would suit someone with ADHD? I'm interested in cybersecurity but have minimal knowledge and want to start learning. Yes, I do. 100%. Don't let that ever stop you, man. Don't let that ever hold you back as a, a thing that is a permanent barricade. Don't see it that way. Really. Absolutely. Alex Gibbs with 10 Canadian dollars said, Thor, can you talk a little bit about your communication style? Sure. I believe that whether you are giving praise or providing critique, it's done without devaluing or insulting the other person. I try to, a lot of the times. I think the only times that I try to do things like that is um, when it's insulting, like directly insulting. It's because that person has said something that is just heinous, right? And at that point, it's like, make. it's not even really insulting them directly, it's making an example of the behavior, right? So the way that I, I feel a lot of the times on this stuff is never go after the person, go after the behavior. If the behavior is heinous, go after the behavior. Explain that the behavior is unacceptable, and then get rid of the person, right? And that's it. Like, that's all that you can do about it. Lexiconius with 1000 bits said B-I-T-S. Bits. The old curse with 500 bits said Hey Queen Thor. Love the new wig and voice changer. Do you ever There's just no eat wig. lemons also have this link? What do you mean do I ever just eat lemons? What link? There's no link. Furious Tumble Nachos with $5 said hey Goblin, Goblin King. King. Quit video after 6 years and got a job in IT, studying for O+. What's your advice for figuring out an IT path when I DK the space? Quit video after six years and got a job in IT. Sitting for A+. What's your advice for figuring out an IT path? I mean, you're already, you're already getting a job in IT. You're already going for A+. I mean, at that point, Net Plus might be really helpful for you, right? Like, certifications are very, very good when you're entering IT. That's something that you can definitely use IT for, is get a bunch of knowledge. Get some certifications, and then start going forward. And you're, you're already doing that, so... There's not really much else to do there. It's kind of just time for you to do it, man. All right, let's see if you can do this. Holy shit. The jetpack. Insane. Another victory for the right side of history. Actually insane. I just watched all those channel points disappear. Did you see that shit? 47% of you said none of us would extract. Get owned. Get owned. Bonkers, dude.
It's funny, too, because at any moment, he could have gotten hit by a single rocket and he just died. <laughs> oh my god, so many deaths. No friendly fire is well done. I got mulched on that one, dude. He earned a hug? He's never earned a hug. Never. And with that, I have beaten Helldivers 2. Done. 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 Eldiver, the super destroyer is ready Done. for your next mission. How many total medals? I don't know. Where do I see that? Missions played, 283. Missions 1, 261. 87 hours in mission time. Collected 3,400 samples. Uh, let's see. Is there nothing for medals earned? Is there nothing for that? Huh. Hundred two friendly kills? I'll fix that. Let me get that up. You see what you spend added up? I mean that's kind of irrelevant, right? Just got them all. Like three thousand three hundred or some shit. Somewhere in there. So we did it. We won. We beat the game. Now it's kind of all about super credits, right? I think I'm going to hold on to my super credits until the next war bond. I think that's how that's going to go. When is the new war bond coming? Does anyone know? Mission coordinates locked. Hellpods primed. April 11th? Okay, that's a while. It's like two weeks from now. Feel like they're releasing them way too fast? I disagree. They don't go away, so it doesn't matter, right? Hey, Ruku, can you take the health one? You take the health booster? Okay. We need the health booster. We're just going to die. Like, on somebody at least. Yeah. Because we need it. Valisir Thrallwin with 500 bits said all love for the Duke Wigglers and all hail for democracy for Super Earth. Hmm. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Midas with $5 said hope you're doing well, Thor. I'm a Cybersec student and watched your videos on the Apex situation and would love more oh, Cybersec God, content like that. Sure. Yeah, no, we could definitely do that. Okay, that was a flare. Jesus. Tagging map, southeast, far.
Nice. Easy win, dude. Is the Twitch player messing up for you? Yes. If the music is out of tune, just uh, refresh. 100%. Twitch has been having some really weird problems the last couple of days. There we go. Got a sample. Will the Minecraft server be restarted anytime soon? No? Is there something wrong? I'm not seeing any performance issues for it. It's sitting at 50 people and it's good to go, so... Why? Is there a problem? Yeah, I got a haircut from that for sure. BB Timeless with 500 bits said hello. I am pretty hello. confident in coding, but I am struggling with coding challenges during interviews. I think it is in my head, but what is your opinion on coding interview questions and how to best prepare for them? I honestly hate most coding interview questions. Um, I've received so many dumb ones over the years. I think the worst one is, I want you to code this on the board. Why? Never ever is that going to be useful. Like, never. Never at all. Just points. Uh, when I had an interview at Amazon, and they pulled that question on me, I said no. They said, do you want to, like, work with this database thing on the board? I was like, no, I don't. I'm not doing that. I'll sit down and talk to you about it, but I'm not doing it on the board. And we sat down and talked about it. And they accepted the answer, and it was fine. I ended, get, I ended up getting the job. And I was like, I'm not doing that. That's a terrible question. I'm not doing code on a board. Yeah, it's not happening. Ooh, you terrifying bastard. Yeah, I think it's a bad question. I really think it's a bad question. I didn't realize I was that close to the edge. Jesus. Yeah, no, I always think it's a terrible one. I really do. So I, I think to be real with you, when you walk into there for confidence for that stuff, the greatest advice I have for any interview is the same thing. Every time. One second. Eat it. It is at the end of your interview. Oh, God. Please, 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 at the end of your interview, uh, what you want to do is say, Hey, if you were to hire me right now, how best would you utilize my skill sets? And the reason why you ask that is you stop having the interviewer 
treat you like a candidate, and they start treating you like an employee. It's a very, very good thing. Social engineering, but very good. Jesus Christ, dude. Alright. You know what? I don't even care. Because that's going to blow it up. And I know it is. Yeah, I'm aware the spear can hit the bot factories. I was dead. So, didn't have my spear anymore. Unfortunate. Meteor shit. Jesus Christ, dude. How'd you like to taste the freedom? You are in range of enemy artillery. All right. I'll just leisurely lay wait here, you know? It's just a leisure, leisure thing. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. I got the terminal. Help hey, time to leave, Clear guys. you love to see it. Holy shit. Jesus Christ, dude. I'm just gonna die here, aren't I? There's like no hills, no nothing. Sending in an eagle. Wow, that bounced for days, didn't it? See if that works. It did not. Into the trash can. No! Climb, you idiot! All right, we survived. I don't know how, but we still live. What planet am I on? I don't even remember. It's too damn many of them. Dropping a pin. West. Far. Drop ship. Found something. Come on, man. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. It's the one, uh, one of the very top of the robot area. Did they fix the spear tracking issues? Dude, I don't know. 
I don't even know what the spear tracking issues were, to be honest with you. It's kind of a piece of shit all the time, like... Like, why is that not... Why isn't that working, you know? Like, why? You know? It kind of just sucks ass. Like, it's like this all the time. Lock-on was ass? Was. Was? It's a terrible lock-on. Those are the issues? Alright. Yeah, it's always been really not great. I'm out of primary weapon. Can't target that. Tagging map. Northwest. 100 meters. Throwing grenade. Right in the door. Got it. Okay, still won't target. Switch the pistol to semi-auto? No. I am not doing that. <laughs> and your back sitting will not make me. Not at all, dude. I hate that thing on that. Whoa! Alright, blew it up. No, I like the pistol on auto, dude. There's a reason I have it on auto. It's because it feels better. 100%. Yeah, why would I want to use single fire on a machine pistol? Like, no. That is not happening. Holy shit. Alright. That's fine, I guess. Calling in reinforcement. Have reinforcement budget remaining. Yeah, why would you do a single shot on pocket bullet hose? No thank you. Exactly. Yeah, I got bruising. Rudolph Thompson with four dollars and ninety-nine cents said finally get to see the god of lightning himself stream. Well thank you. No more shorts for me. Also, I love you platonically. Hmm. Hmm. Platonically. That one's done. Dropping a pin. North. 200 meters. The spear is really good, but the lock on is pretty terrible feeling. Um, does the recoilless kill. Does the recoilless kill those things or no? Does it do that or no? Rare sample acquired. That's kind of the big question for me. Does it? Do you have to hit it, like, right in the vent, though? Doesn't kill fabricators, does it? You have to aim for the vent. Dropping a pin. East. 300 meters. Eagle One, leaving combat zone to resupply. Requesting tech pack. Orbital incoming. Did that seriously just bounce all the way over there? That's insane. Like, completely ridiculous, frankly. All right, I'm gonna grenade this thing. Boop. Jesus, dude. <clears throat> Got it.
That thing is 100% donezo. God damn, dude. I think the one thing about the rocket guys is they kill you in one hit, but they're also like crazy armored. Like crazy armored. You wouldn't really expect them to be like so heavily armored, right? Because they're, they're more like glass cannon enemies. You would expect that anyway. You expect them to be glass cannon, but they're not. Please climb. Please. You closed the door on me. I'm out of grenades now. God damn it. Fine. What? 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 Alright. Cool. I have no idea what the hell just killed me, but that's fine. Happened to me as well. Like, what even killed you? Democracy has landed. Okay. Yeah, we're doing democracy, dude. How's it going? Requesting advanced weaponry! For Super Earth. Mada with $5 said, Hello, Mr. Pirate. How do I get started in cybersecurity? Go into our Discord, uh, join the Discord, and make sure that you get the role of hacking inside of the panels and roles section. Once you do that, go down to the hacking section and look at resources. Then go play around with some stuff, man. You'll learn a whole lot. Jesus. Oh, come on. Fine. Really enjoyed your thoughts on the Apex stuff? I'm glad, dude. Hell yeah. Discord is discord.gg slash pirate software. Dude, that thing sucks. The lock-on for the spear is actually shit. Like, holy crap, dude. I am not surprised people are upset about it. That's the first time I've ever used it. That's the- this is the first mission I've ever used it. It's terrible. Target with Q? So you have to target with Q and then lock onto it? Does that actually work? These expendable rockets, they don't do what I need them to do. Ready to liberate. Also, the cooldown on this thing is six freaking minutes. Like, what the hell, man? That's a long-ass time. No, the cooldown is not 70 seconds on a spear. It's six minutes. And we know that by the top left corner. Six minutes. New man. Uh. 
Yeah, no. Yeah, the eat is 70 seconds, but it also doesn't kill shit. Against robots, no. The eat is not, like, great. Yeah. Against robots, the eat doesn't blow up those... You know, like, the the factories, the prefabs? The reason I'm using the spear is to destroy the prefabs and the hulks. In one hit each. Oh, that's so many dudes. Jesus Christ, dude. I don't even know where those came from, but alright. I'm gonna start using antimatter, anti-material rifle. It's just better. The spear, the spear when it locks on will kill laser turrets. There's no reason to waste a spear shot on that. The just use the uh, plasma scorcher. Plasma scorcher is just better. Good weapon. How did I get killed on the other side of a rock? Did that shit curve? Like, what the hell is that? That had to have curved. That's dumb as hell. Those rockets are stupid, man. Democracy has landed. Where the hell am I? Jesus, dude, look at this. Okay. Requesting Where are these even coming from, dude? Landing in an eagle. Yeah, blame Joel. Whatever said blame Joel. Zeti underscore master with 500 bits said to my team found some fun vulns in our software, but fixing it is a huge task since it's desktop software running at customer sites. Whoops. How would you go about disclosing it internally? I would turn it into the security team. Like 100%. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Like, if you are the security team, then you should have a process for turning that in and disclosing that. You should always disclose vulnerabilities. And especially internally, dude. Like, empty. Flamethrower, flamethrower. Alright. I guess I'll take a flamethrower. Why not? Yeah, definitely turn those in. Definitely turn those in. And don't wait, you know. The longer you wait on that, the more risk you're giving to your company and for the rest of your team. Because if you have a vulnerability and you don't turn it in, and then it gets exploited, there's going to be a huge problem. Son of a bitch. Sending in an eagle. Freedom never rest. That might kill it. I'm pretty sure that's dead, right? Yeah, it's dead. Nice. Alrighty. Dropping a pin. I'm gonna go over there and see if I can't meters. get those spears. Dropping a pin. Northwest. Two hundred meters. We gotta get that last sample done.
Yeah, we gotta fight the robots now, man. <coughs> the underscore greedy underscore grot with 500 bits said I just lost LVL7 character in NetHack. He'd love to see you stream NetHack someday. Oh, that sucks, dude. That would be fun. I don't see why not. I'd enjoy that. Wait, that's not what I picked up. The shit game? Gimme. Stupid thing. There we go. Thank you. Ah. For the $10 for the moderators. Very, very nice of you. Alright, here we go. Rally White with 569 bits said I've been fighting hard for democracy, but lately I've been thinking about pursuing a career as a business analyst and PM. Okay. Thoughts about efficiently and safely committing this treason. Hey guys, I could use some help. Starting a career in business analyst and PM. There's nothing wrong with that. Requesting air support! Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it at all, man. If that's what you want to do, efficiently and safely committing this treason, that really comes down to you. So, like, do you have an opportunity to do this? Is there already a job on the table for you? And if not, start applying, right? I mean, that's what you want to do. And since... Really, man? I hate... I hate the rockets. The rockets are honestly shit. They really are. The rockets are honestly shit. They're just, they're the most overpowered garbage in the game, frankly. They really gotta tone them down. They really have to. Rocket snipers, yeah. You're not gonna kill it with one clip of that. Oh, I guess it was already injured. Or not. Still mad. But yeah, to be real with you, it's, um, it's one of those things of, like, if you have an opportunity to do this, then go for it. As long as you are financially stable, as long as you're not going to screw yourself over in the long run, do it. Because you're going to learn a lot of shit and have some fun. I think it's really always down to that. It's like, it's always good to try as long as you are not putting yourself in such a bad position that you can't recover. Always. <clears throat> and to be real with you, things are a lot more recoverable than you think. You'd be amazed at what you can get out of. Doesn't matter if we die at all. Well done. Well done. Conflicted the M1ND with two dollars said, "What are your favorite RPGs?" Uh, my favorite RPGs are Secret of Ma Evermore, Secret of Mana, and Illusion of Gaia and Earthbound. Likely, like those are probably the ones that I like the most. They're all Super Nintendo games as well. <laughs> <sighs> Evermore? Evermore is amazing, dude. It really, really is. How about Earthbound? Yeah, Earthbound's on that list. Yeah. Earthbound's amazing. Oh? Dude, that ain't gonna do it. The fire. Nice. Found something. You trade battle for Wesnoth. Never heard of that. Request 
Been playing EverQuest for 25 years? Wild, wow, dude. Max empty. Damn. Well, that's not good. Shit. Oh, God damn it. Heavy East, fifty meters. All right. Maybe it is that you have to pin them. Maybe that is the right choice. I don't know yet. All right, blow it up so I can pick it up. That's fine. Yeah, certified spear moment, dude. Oh man. Heavy southeast, close. Out of ammo. Did that seriously not kill him? Seriously? Twice. Two spears and not dead. Just just kill me. It's fine. Ridiculous. <laughs> Honestly insane. I have already won. You can do nothing to me. Actually insane to me. So yeah, if you shoot them in the face, dude, it's a homing missile. It's a it's a one shot homing missile. There is no yeah, there's no excuse for the spear to be that bad. There's none. It one shots a tank. It one shots a ship. It should one shot a Hulk. Like that's there's no reason for that shit. Like that thing took two of those to the face and kept going. No. 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 Hulks legitimately need to be nerfed. I agree. Uh, I think they're in the same classification as what Chargers were before. So the Crushers, the Chargers, were way too overpowered and they nerfed them. And Hulks, I think, are way too overpowered and they need to nerf them. Yeah. Yep. I think that that is the case, currently. And Rockets are way too overpowered. Oh, you're dead. Or not. That was the weirdest physics I've ever seen. Very nice. Living underscore death underscore guy with 500 bits said, what would you say the percent of the internet is supported by very old systems? Yes. Pretty much the entire Navy is held up by Windows 98 and the 1992 version of the Solaris OS. And the banking industry is held up by Windows XP. So yes. Horrifying, I know. <laughs> One moment, I'm gonna eat some snacks. I'm watching one of the strangest chatters I've ever seen in my life. It's like going to the zoo, chat. Can you find them? Their name is extremely long and strange. And they, the last, like, five messages of theirs was My Little Pony, My Furball, Elon Musk. 
and then smell that blissful sex, but they spelled sex wrong. Can you find them? It's an Easter egg hunt now. If the first person to add him, if you can find who this is, I will ban them. But you have to add them. Yeah, you found him. You found him. It's over. You did it. Proud of you. They're banned. Yep. Good job. Good job, chat. You found them. Some weird shit in chat sometimes, man. It's very on. It's incredibly on. Ban the person who found him? No, I didn't. That would be funny, though. Yeah, you guys got a brain cell back right there. At least a portion of one. Uruku has extracted. Is this game co-op? Yeah. We're just playing in the hardest difficulty on, on enemies that are kind of overtuned, to be honest. <laughs> What's the planet? It is Ustotu. Nice. Am I a dev? Not in this game, no. But yes. Been in the gaming industry for 20 years, my dude. Did you have Mantu's back? I'm pretty sure it's obtained now. Oh, dude, it's super close. It's at 97.4 now. It was at 95 when we started that mission, Chen. So... Now it's at 29. Take a look at this real fast. Jalil29 with 500 bits said, Do you think enemy reinforcements should have diminishing returns when overused within a certain radius and or time frame to prevent seemingly endless hordes spawning from reinforcements? Yes. Yes, I do. I think the endless hordes thing is definitely a, a huge cause of problems for the game, where it just feels completely absurd. Especially when they're all ranged, right? If for, for bugs, it can kind of be okay because they're all melee, right? But the ranged enemies are just... it's absurd. You just get a wall of lasers, right? <coughs> the whole thing kind of falls apart. <coughs> you think the spirit could one-shot the mushrooms? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Yeah, truce is all the way back here. So we have to take... We've got to take this one to get truce. So we can get a Stotu, we can take truce. So I've been, tr I've been trying to work on this one with the community. We're 92,000 there. And then over here, we've got 36,000 of Mantis. We'll get Mantis. We will. And then Oshan has 75,000 still. We'll likely get Oshan. And we're definitely getting Ustotu. Everybody's going after it. Yeah, because there's Vandalon 4. And we've got Mantis here. So we got to do Ustotu, Truce, and then Vandalon 4. Because we've already got these ones. Those are fully liberated. And if we take Mantis... We'll be one planet away, after doing this major order, from taking this entire sector. The Trigon and the Tsar sector are going to be ours, which means the robots will be back down to one sector. A single sector. And you realize that that means Malevolent Creek, but for real, right? Order is just one planet? Yeah, but we got to take a Stotu to get this one, and we already have these ones. Look. It means Malevolent Creek for real. Yeah. So, like, that's a pretty big deal, man. Ubinea? Looks like people are already starting to push that one, too. Wow, that's actually going fast for 2,000 people. What the hell? Look at that shit. They must be playing on a really low...
Yeah, because look at her statue, man. Every system will soon exult in it's the burning. It's burning the really fast. The biggest problem we have on these is all of these planets have the anti-air. So we only get three uh, stratagems, which is so rough, honestly. So not only do you have harder enemies, but you also get anti-air, which makes us you have less stratagems, which is just even more worse. Bots is currently set to 0% per hour. Yeah, I saw. And double timing strength, yeah. It's hor horrific, frankly. What do you think happens if we give bots their homeworld back? They said they would leave us alone. But that's a lie, isn't it? No. They'd never give us our home. They'd never let us keep Super Earth. No. <laughs> Which one is their home, anyway? What was their home home planet? I don't even know. Cyberstent? Where is it? Do we know where this is? Up north? Is it close to the center? Top left? Okay, so if this is their home world and they want to liberate it, then what the hell are they doing going this way, towards Super Earth? That's not going to work for them. They know that, right? It's just going to get worse and worse the closer they get to us. So if they really wanted to get through there and go over there, there's, they're doing it wrong. Is it supply lines? Let me go look at the supply lines. Let me see that. I want to see the supply lines for this. Let's see here. It's in the Valdis sector. I don't see how this would be a problem. No, they should be able to do it. Yeah, no, the robots are lying, dude. Yeah, no. I think the robots are lying here. Yeah. There are supply lines? Yeah. It's how you determine which planets can attack which planets. Yep. That's not good. That's not good. In order, in order to get truce, in order to get truce, we have to take. Ah, oh, shit. It doesn't have a direct line of connection. We have to take Ostotu and then Vandalon and then truce. And we have three days and 19 hours, dude. This is going to be rough as hell. Yeah, we got our work cut out for us. You got to take us, though, to... Every Helldiver on this planet. Every single Helldiver. Take us, though, to. It is the only way. It is the only way we will survive. Mantis? It looks like people are going to take it anyway. My hope is that they move from Mantis up to us, though, to. Because, like, that needs to happen. Yeah, I know. The total population is all that matters. I actually don't like that change. So the devs made a change where the amount of progress that is obtained from your team is based on the current number of players that are online right now. So if you go to planets, you can see this. So you see the red? That's the impact multiplier. So as more players get online, which is, you know, our player as, as more players get online, the red goes down. As less players are online, the red goes up. Meaning that you have more impact as an individual when there's less players that are logged in. For me, I don't think this feels good. I can understand the reasoning for this, is to make it so that it's better, right? But it's removed the idea of, everybody get in here! 
everybody get on, right? Because now it you've got this hidden multiplier that reduces your effort if there's more people online. So there's no reason for me to call to arms, right? And I don't like that as much. Yeah. It is incentivizing people playing on off hours, 100%. However, it's also kind of removing the whole, you know, social thing around it, which is like everybody get in, you know? Because you're like, well, it doesn't matter if they get in. We're worth more points if they're not. So we just wait. And they'll get on when they get on. That's the problem with that. <clears throat> maybe it's what they wanted to avoid, maybe. I don't think so, though. It matters what planet they're on, though, does it? That's kind of interesting. Yeah, you can see her efficiency right now is 3.668. Now, here's an interesting part. Let's take a look at this. So I think what we need to look at, actually, is the efficiency. Let's take a look at this. At peak 